if you're unfamiliar with play days, it's just me looking for stuff that either uh, improves or fits into my 112 scale collection. Third party, custom, uh, just stuff made for other lines that fits into <laughs> my specific display needs because we don't get enough Marvel stuff and we don't get enough Star Wars stuff or Transformers. You know how it is. Always need more. For people that don't care for the model kits or don't watch the model kit reviews, this is the Bandai Star Wars R4i9 model kit. It's a cool little addition to the Astromex on my shelf. I, it's a different one. It's not one we're ever going to get in the Black Series or any import companies. But if you're into different R2 Two units are different Astromex on the shelf. You can also make this into a random R2 unit, or maybe this one has a designation. I just don't know it. The kit comes with the R2 dome because it's mostly reused from the original R2D2 model kit. So same sprues, same parts. You just need to get two kits if you want R4-I9 and then that random R2 unit because it shares the whole body, of course, obviously, you know, and then this eye right here. Like I said, if you saw the review, you're into the model kits, you already know about this, but if if you're not into the model kits, go buy a model kit. They're fun and we need more sales so they can continue making the model kit line. Next up is this. You guys know I'm a six inch man through and through. 112th scale all the way. But as I was browsing the stores, and this has been a little while back, I was browsing the stores and this caught my eye. That just looks a little bit large for the three and three quarter inch scale, doesn't it? So my thought is, if you didn't get the SH Figure Wards Darth Maul Bloodspeeder that comes with one of these droids, or if you're like me who did, and then promptly lost this thing because I, that set did not come with a stand for this for whatever reason. But the cool thing here is this one does. Ooh, and the stand is even ball jointed at the bottom so you can get some range around. Although it does put the droid pretty close to the ground. So plus for a stand, but it is a little bit short, but it is three and three quarter inch scale. So what am I talking about? And like I said, I lost mine. Well, it's somewhere in my toy domain. It didn't fall out of my house into somebody else's yard or something. But going by the original promotional arts for the SH figure, Arts, this looks comparable in size. So if you see this set on clearance and you want one of these to go with your SH Figure Arts Mall or your Black Series Mall, I, I feel like this works. And then there's this guy. I think this is the Power of the Force 2 uh, Mega Action Series Destroyer Droid. I want to say there was an Obi-Wan and maybe a Darth Maul in that line too, but I remember back in the day, I think it was around 2000, they didn't really look that great. And I was knee deep in three and three quarter inch. You can only be knee deep in three and three quarter inch because it's so small, get it? <laughs> Whereas with six inch scale, you're up to your waist and then if you're into hot toys, you're in over your head. Oh man, I should do this for a living. Last August or September, I did Salt Lake City Comic Con, I think it was. And coming back through Albuquerque, New Mexico, there is a store called Lobo Comics. And I like stopping in there because he always has some cool stuff. And this was sitting in one of his loose displays along with this. Now, I didn't know there were two versions. One has kind of battle damage or some wear on it. This one is clean. You can also see it right here. Some silver work right there, not over here. So some tiny differences plus <laughs> You gotta have two, right? I mean, that's just how it works. He, he made me a hell of a deal, I had to pick him up. Because it totally works in six inch scale. Yes, it may be off a little bit, but this, these are going on the shelf. There's no question about that. This is the Hasbro Black Series clone, and this is the SH Figure Arts Battle Droid. Some of the articulation is loose, a little bit floppy, but at this point, this is a, what, 19 year old figure, I think, around there. I need to do some straightening on the plastic, and I do think these, convert down to wheelie mode, but I'm not gonna do that because some of it feels a little bit fragile, a little bit aged. This rubber piece keeps wanting to come out of the body. But even there, like that, you can have a destroyed droidica in your display. It's just a cool piece overall. Maybe a little bit expensive on eBay at this point, last time I looked, but mm, get one if you can. It's so choice. Next up, I got this Jabba Throne from Layered Creations on Facebook. In fact, I get a lot of stuff from Layered Creations that I haven't shown yet because I, it requires some work. This is 3D printed. As you can see, the layers, it's got a little bit. I need to get in here, do some sanding, do some painting. But after I do that, depending on how much work I actually put into it, it's gonna make a fantastic piece on the shelf. I also grabbed this from him. Need some sanding, need some paint work, but oh, once finished. Oh, oh, oh. Jabba on the throne, it looks scale, it looks great, while not taking up any, well, not much more real estate space on the shelf than Jabba by himself. Got maybe half an inch on this side, got maybe an inch, inch and a half on this side, plus you get a place for Slave Leia, C-3PO, Boba Fett, whoever else you wanna stick around the throne. Black Series, we need a bib Fortuna. 
quickly. Also from Layered Creations, again, look him up on Facebook. From Empire Strikes Back, this was on the Star Destroyer bounty hunter scene. This is the little alcove. This is the down below part. There's the back wall. Here's the computers. You can see all those little tiny keys that's been 3D printed onto here. And again, you can see the lines where it's been 3D printed. I need to hit this with sandpaper. I need to put some elbow grease into this overall and the one before and the couple of things I'm about to talk about to make it look finished. There's a slot in the platform. You can fit this down in there. And then with your six inch figures behind it, it just, it works. But on top of that, and you're gonna see some <laughs> space outside of my review space, Besides that, it also has a platform that you can apply up here. And that's for Bosk to stand up there hanging over, looking down onto it. It's a scene in the movie, so it's all nicely replicated here in 3D printed form. Fourth wall broken. And then again from Layered Creations, I'm gonna have links to all these guys down in the description, so check it out down there. But he also 3D printed up a gonk droid. Again, you can see the lines, but this is a starting point. You're gonna have to put some work into it. You need some paint, you need some sandpaper. There's a ball joint at the ankle, ball joint up there at the leg. So it has a little personality to it if you want it to be on your shelf. And then there is this big bastard. I, again, Layered Creations. I think this is an older one that he printed up. It may have been his own or his display piece he sold later. I caught it on Facebook. You've probably seen this in a couple of pictures of mine from the toy room or just, you know, new figures. It may be a little bit small, but again, it's made that way for shelf space. Hasbro does the same thing. A lot of other companies do it too. Lando standing up here, get a couple of more figures in here. It just looks great. Plus it's narrow enough to where when I put it on the shelf, it acts like another tier. I can put characters under the skiff. I can put characters on the skiff. It actually gives me more real estate. The plank is removable if you don't want that sticking out on your shelf. There's ball joints back here on the fins. And then the handles up top also move back and forth. And then even at the bottom, instead of just making sand, he actually put the, is that the Jabba logo? That's the Jabba's tattoo, right? So it's a nice little extra detail. I've painted a base coat and then I'm gonna go sanding. And when the base coat's gone, I know that it's flat. And then I'll hit it with some actual colors, some weathering, make it look beautiful. And then there is some mail. I know what this is. I've known Dan for a long time. Uh, we did some trading. He did a custom for me. Since seeing this online, I've been enamored with this look. Yes, we got Death Troopers. They're all in black, but seeing it in white, it, it gives you that old school Stormtrooper feel. Maybe it's not canon. Maybe it's not in your source book or anything but it's a kick-ass looking trooper, and that's what I like. Now, if you wanna see more of Dan's customs, uh, he posts under Yokai Customs on Instagram. Go check it out. He's got some more awesome stuff up there. This one's from Corey at Sandcrawler Customs. He was getting rid of some older stuff on Facebook end of November, 1st of December, and since it's been that long ago, I can't even remember what I bought. So this is actually a surprise as I'm opening it up. Got some bubble wrap, got some bubble wrap. This looks like a smaller, I think I remember what this is. Oh, 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 oh man, look at that. Now he included this apron, which I will end up putting on him probably, but it also looks damn sweet without it. There it is with it on, oh man. That is awesome. I needed an Ugnaught for my shelf and now I have one. But what do we got in here? Let's see what this is. Oh, 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 oh no. It being a custom, yeah, it's a little bit fragile, but there is some movement to the parts here. Just like the Ugnaught, I needed a Reese. Hell, I need every character in Star Wars on my shelf. And this just expedites that. I now have this one. And then, oh, I forgot, yep. There's that one. Oh man, I'm so, so happy right now. It's like a Christmas present that I waited until middle of, well, almost the end of January to open. Again, check out Corey at Sandcrawler Customs on Facebook. It's just more of this and there's nothing wrong at all with more of this. And then finally over at Two Sons Casting or Two Sons Customs, uh, they're working on their website right now. And, oh man, they have so many head casts and so much stuff. In fact, I have a lot of their stuff that I just have sitting. I, I haven't had time to paint up, which <laughs> most of the stuff you see in this video, it'll probably be a while before you see it finished, at least from me. And I know what this is because we just talked about this again the other day. Oh, there's something else down in here too. Oh, and these guys, they know, like a lot of people know, that I am a shirt junkie. So there you go. Two Sons Six Inch Customs. This is actually a 3D printed piece, and <laughs> I know it's kind of hard to tell. You've probably got a guess at what this is, though. 
some assembly required looks like. And that turns into this. Okay, it's not supposed to look quite like this. It's supposed to look like this. Here's the finished model all put together, Scout Trooper on it, looking all sweet. And I, I, I admit the solo designs aren't the most dramatic. They do have pinholes right here where you can pin the whole thing together once it is assembled. And then just some of the details on here. Again, it's 3D printed. I'm gonna have to do some sanding, but once I do some sanding, this should work perfect on my solo shelf. It has a foot pedal piece that goes up under there like that. The handlebars were a separate piece that they're not glued together yet. They're two separate pieces then plug into the side of here, but that'll work too. There's a big blaster that mounts onto the side of it, gonna need glued. And then some paint, an Imperial logo, and it'll look fantastic. Again, depending on how much work I put into it. The kit doesn't include the pins to go in these pinholes to hold it all together, but it's probably something common. I'll get with them, see what it's supposed to go in there. Okay, people, welcome back to another uh, Marvel Play Day. First up, a huge, huge thanks to forum member Magnus. Uh, he's been on the, the Foosh forums for a long, long time. And I guess he watched my Captain Marvel review where I said I didn't have another Genesis Veil to compare to the new one we've got because I never went back and got that variant. Or at the time I missed out or hunting and it never popped up in Backwoods, Arkansas. Either way, this popped up in my PO box and I, I'm super, super grateful because while it's toy biz, it's a little bit outdated. It's just a nice piece to have because I just love Starfield stuff like this. I mean, I, it's a nice overall figure, I think. Here's another head that I featured in another review before, but this is Play Day. I'm playing with stuff. And this is a custom Logan head sculpt from Mike Lorenzo Art. And we met at Denver Comic Con last year and we hit it off. We're talking about action figures. He had this on his table for sale and I said, if this thing is still up for sale the last day of the con, I am picking it up. And I'll be damned if it didn't get to 15 minutes to the end of the show and the thing sold. So out of the goodness of his heart, he went ahead and sent me a head, which I promptly put on, what is this? A Mafex Scarecrow body. So it's not perfect. It needs to be darker colors, different look, different parts here and there. But for the time being, uh, this totally works. And it completely works as a bookend for the recently acquired seamless body third party overseas Wolfman or well, young Logan. Sizes work about the same. It just goes from young man to old man. I, I like these together. I know a lot of people don't like this figure. I, I dig it. Now you guys know me. I will never have enough Deadpools on the shelf. I'll take any and all variations. I'll put them in the Marvel girl dress, What whatever, naked. I don't care. Deadpool will go on the shelf. So when I saw this trainee jersey on eBay from GP slot or GPS lot. I don't know exactly how to pronounce the name. I had to grab it. It's a nifty little thing that actually looks like scale jersey material with the printed on X right here. And even on the back, you get trainee. It looks a little bit dirty, like he's been through some rough and tumble. And while this would work much better on a movie Deadpool figure, we don't have a Deadpool movie figure. What's up with that? Hopefully with Disney acquiring the license, we'll see more merchandise from, well, first, <laughs> more movies to sell more merchandise and hopefully we'll get it through the usual Hasbro SH figure arts. I just need a movie Deadpool for the shelf too, on top of all the comic ones I've got. I've also been looking to up my diorama game just to help out with picture taking at spruce up reviews and pictures and displays and whatever else. Layered Creations on Facebook. He also has a website. He did my skiff. Uh, he's done uh, several other things. I think he did my Jabba throne. But a month or so back, he hit me up, said he was doing a brick background, just a simple doorway, sidewalk. It even has a drainage right here at the bottom. It's just a cool little thing that I can throw behind figures. But on top of this, notice the shape. It also has hang holes on the back. So I can hang this on the wall. It can be used as a display piece. I have the figures stand in front of it. They're in an alleyway. I, it's just a cool little thing. Multifunctional, I guess you could say. But also to go along with that, I picked this up from a buddy on Instagram. It's Titan. He was selling it. I don't know if he made it or purchased it from somebody else, but it's in my hands now. And I, I love this damn thing. It's made out of foam board, so it's really, really light, but all the detail etched in is just Oh, fantastic. The barrels are nicely weathered, has these warning caution things on the side. Same thing for the power box over here, I had no smoking. Shipping and receiving sign, this light even pops on. I think I need to change the battery or something because it's not that bright, it likes to kick out. It's, it's been used. But on top of that, you can also pull this out, 
This is magnetized to the back, so you can break that down. This fence comes up and out, so I can store this flat. It's not taking up room all the time, it, and it's modular a little bit. If I wanted to change out a piece, cool, I can do that too. But when it is magnetized together, it's on there. It's great. I'm loving this thing. I recently reviewed the Moffex Spider-Man, and this thing just came in handy. It spruced up my pictures. It did exactly what I wanted it to do. And it's big, so I had to go for the wide camera shot, so there's the edge of my review space over there. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Okay, this is actually from last year at some point, so it may be a little bit harder to get now. I'm just getting around to opening it, though. I bought it thinking, man, Into the Spider-Verse is craziness, and Spider-Buggy is bad back into style and I remember it as a kid and I, I, I just had to have it. But it's a nifty little thing. I dig the spider logos here in the tires. The tires, oops. We'll get to that. The tires are nice and solid. The chrome back here, it's not chrome, but it is shiny. The webbing is sculpted into the red part right here, so it just adds a little bit of do -da 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 to the buggy. Got Spidey on the front, has this cool <laughs> hook accessory comes out. You can hook whatever, drag Scorpion down the street or whatever. And it took me about 10 minutes to figure out that the button retracts the cable right there. It's got storage space in case you want to store some spidey heads, hands, and of course there's the sounds on the buttons as already seen. There's a car sounds with the headlights and then there's spidey sounds. You know what it is I love about being Spider-Man? Everything. Everything. It's web swinging time. My spider sense is tingling. That's cool and all, but I'm a six inch collector. And I thought at first, until I saw other people messing around with it, that this was too small, this wouldn't work. But you know what, in the realm of Into the Spider-Verse, all the crazy stuff that's popped up, especially like Peter Porker, Spider-Ham, I think this works. It takes a little bending, it takes a little shoving, but even the tallest Spider-Man, like the Marvel Legends, uh, this is his, his pizza spotty body. Yeah, he's supposed to be behind the windshield, but it's a spider buggy. You gotta suspend your expectations a little bit. But I feel like that works. I mean, for a superhero buggy, you know, if Spider-Man suddenly gets stuck on the beach or something, he can't just swing. There's nothing to swing from, so he's gotta traverse somehow across the sand. Here's another cool thing that showed up in the P.O. box, and this is from Chrissy Mack. If you go on Instagram, you can look her up on Rebel 10 Customs, but it's just a cool trench coat for your Marvel Legends Walgreens exclusive thing figure. Look at that, it's even got this metal buckle down here, and this the straps, they're wired, so you can pose those around, you can get them out of the way, you can bring them around, you can latch it, you can do whatever you want. Thing is such an oddball body size that when I first saw it, I thought, I'm never gonna get that, it went right on. <laughs> I don't even know why I thought otherwise. But also in the package was this hat, and it's not actually cloth, it's some kind of paperwork. I don't know how she did this, but getting it on, it matches the fabric really well. I need to get in there, do a little bending, some little forming. I bring the brim down a little bit over his eyes, give him just a little bit more disguise. But overall, this thing, <laughs> this thing, get it back. It's amazing. Now she also sent two Jedi robes. I'm gonna try that during the next Star Wars play day, but hit her up on Instagram if you're interested in a thing jacket. She also has pictures of it on one of the NECA turtles. For my money, oh yeah, goes on the thing perfectly. Nearly forgot since they're so small, she also sent along a couple of cigars to go along with the thing because as much as I think of thing as, you know, out there kicking ass, taking names, just as much I also picture him at the poker table, you know? It's just something that sticks in my head and that works along those lines. Also on Instagram, Facebook, Sculptor Shelf, he recently opened up a website selling casts of his sculpts and I just had to grab one of these Wolverines. I haven't painted it yet and uh, you can do, the cigar does come out so you can paint it separate. So it's just resting in there, it's not actually stuck, but I'm excited to get another Wolverine head on the shelf. Just like Deadpool, I'll take as many Wolverine looks as I can get. Because speaking of that, I also got a Deadpool head off of them. Again, I haven't had time to paint this, so maybe next Marvel Play Day I'll have these painted up and it'll give a better look at what these actually look like on the figures. But one of his sculpts that I have had a chance to paint is his Cletus Cassidy head. I saw this, just had to have it, and it's the first thing I painted up. I'm rusty, I know, I'm getting old, I'm getting blind, but I, I'm pretty happy with this. It just brings out the crazy in Cletus and it really helps the Carnage figure just pop, you know what I mean? And this way I can have this on my Carnage and I can use the Cletus head that came with the Marvel Legends figure, keep it on that gel cell look that I've been using for since I got that figure actually. And before anybody asks, yes, those pupils in the eye, just the dots in the eyes, those are sculpted in. So I just took a Gundam marker, boop, boop, 
and punch those in. That was not me actually getting them lined up. That's in the sculpt. Now the Marvel Legends Star-Lord head, we got several of these figures during Guardians of the Galaxy 2, I believe. And this one, it's not really that bad, but when you get down to it, it's not super Chris Pratt, which is why when Casting Cave offered up their shrunk down Hot Toys Star-Lord head with custom paint job on it, I had to jump on it. Just look at this damn thing. That is Chris Pratt in 112 scale. Plus their paint jobs are just beautiful. I love the contrast of dark to light here. They do a great job of not making it look muddy. It's very detailed, it's very defined. Hell, they even put the metal thing behind the ear that he punches for his full helmet. It's just a great piece. Now because of that and the facial hair, this is probably more of a Guardians of the Galaxy 1 Star-Lord. I don't care. I'm putting it on my Guardians of the Galaxy 2 body because that's where I want it. And it makes me super happy and that's what matters. But another guy that just can't catch a break in 112th scale is the Infinity War version of Captain America. For some reason, the Marvel Legends was just, this is the Marvel Legends right here. It's close, but it just doesn't nail it. And the figure arts is even worse, which we'll look at in here in a second. Yep, I got a fix for that too. So, bop, once again, thanks to Casting Cave. They did an outstanding job. I don't know if this is shrunk down cast from a Hot Toys or somewhere else, but again, same fantastic paint job. I, again, just look at the contrast in the hair right there. Same with the beard coming all the way down and the likeness is just a lot better. Unfortunately for the Marvel Legends, there's some uh, inaccuracies with the rest of the body. Why doesn't he have his glove on this side too? At least that's the biggest thing that sticks out at me. But once I fix the shield because this thing came off, I, I need to glue it up and then try to fix it to a fisted hand. But once I do that, I can put this on this side and kind of hide the inaccuracy. So this will work on my Marvel Legends shelf. But for the most part, my MCU figures are SH Figure Arts or imports. And when you look at the SH Figure Arts Infinity War Captain America, um, oh, what's going on here? It really looks like a dude with a fake beard kind of pasted on, and it's not even even. Look how far down it is over here. It's higher on this side, but the body here is a lot more accurate. There are gloves on both sides, uh, just the overall wear, plus this fits into my MCU display. So I had to go to one sixth kit and pick this up. It just looks a lot more, well, okay, hold on a second. It's not perfect. I guess Chris Evans has one of those heads, like kind of a Harrison Ford, Mark Hamill where it seems like in plastic they never really nail it but this is a lot lot closer than the stock head. The skin tone almost has a translucence to it that just makes it so realistic and you can see the gleam the glint off the eyes. Oh man that's just oh delicious. Yeah I said delicious I, I don't know why but I'm leaving it. The kit also came with a replacement neck piece here so you wouldn't have that contrast from painted factory plastic to whatever the hell magical thing they did here at 1 6th kit. And they also sent along replacement forearms for that same skin tone. You can definitely see a difference here. I just haven't found the courage yet to go ripping at the arms. And really when it comes down to it, the skins here are far enough apart that uh, it doesn't really bother me as much. Plus someday I'll find an auction for some custom shields to put on both arms here. Again, covering up the skin. They did include a spear but for whatever reason, they didn't include the shields with the SH Figure Arts, which is fine. This is cool, if not a little bit fragile. I've been kind of scared to get too crazy with this. Now I want one sixth kit to do a Bucky head because that thing, ooh, that needs a replacement. Here's a kind of more classic looking replacement head for the Riders Wolverine, or well, any Wolverine really. I, I can't even find my original Riders Wolverine head, but man, woo, that thing, the eyes are really far apart. So when forum moderator, I bent my man thing, he also writes for the front page, he also it sells on eBay. He's also on Instagram. You can hit him up all kinds of places. When he put up a more classic looking Logan, kind of an 80s Logan, I had to get it. And this is the first place I put it. Yes, he's holding a Mountain Dew. I haven't put a beer can in there yet. Sure, it's not pretty, but Wolverine's not pretty either. And I was also able to score a plain cast. I'll paint this up. I'm going to make it, oh, I'm going to make it bloody. We are getting Reavers in the Marvel Legends line. I want to continue the Reavers and I want to display when uh, Wolverine ran into the Reavers him kind of hanging on the X. I feel like with his head down, that just nails the hair from that era. Finally, here is a classic beast, kind of that Avengers look for him that I also scored from I Bent My Man thing. He did a great job here. He did the paint job on the head. 
I added the body. You can see he went in classic style and punched some black in to show some shadows, some detailing work. I attempted to do that on this jackal body that I painted blue. I don't know how well it works, but for the most part, it works as a classic beast. He was a little bit smaller there. Him hunched down, it works. It kind of gives the jackal body a little bit more bulk because honestly, it is a little bit thin. But you put him next to Wonder Man during that era and it just completely works. This will stay on my Avengers shelf, the Hasbro version, the X-Men version that's coming, that'll go on my X-Men shelf. I, I have some beasts. Okay, people, welcome back to another Star Wars Play Day. First up, I finally put together the Bandai Model Kit R2Q5, and I've had this model for a little bit, but I'll admit it, a little bit of astromech burnout. Don't get me wrong, I love the little guys, and I love them in different colors. It just adds so much to the shelf. But I had just built R4i9. It's just a little bit of overload. It's just the original R2 unit in black with orange decals. Now, I will say the new style of decals, they thinned them down a little bit, and they quit including the water slides. And the thin ones work fairly well. In fact, it's way less work, but you can still tell that they look like decals. Now, there's some parts like here and here and here that are gray in the pictures, but there's no decal for those. You have to paint those yourself. Pay no attention to the shit paint that I put on these. Uh, this was just real quick. There's a lot more work required here to make it look great, and that's completely possible, but I'm an action figure collector. I'm okay with seam lines because that's what we get in our $20 toys. Hell, that's what we get in some of our $70 toys. But you gotta admit, it looks great with the rest of the Astromech model kits from Bandai. And even better than that, if you customize the kids. This one, this one, this one, and this one is from a buddy of mine on Instagram, Greedo737. I love these things. I will take more and more astromechs, but building them myself, ooh, lazy ass. Another model kit that I've had for quite a while is the Darth Vader, a kind of Return of the Jedi version with the unmasked head and the cut off hand. Now this uses their tri-axial finish, their photo reel, their face printing tech, and it's not bad. They punched in the eye detail. You can see some of this, and then it comes around here and actually adds some color to that big scar, but it really looks pale. Now I just threw some paint into here, but the actual picture in the instruction manual is professionally done. It looks way better. So with some work, you can make that look awesome. Same with the cut off hand. I just threw some silver paint in there just to pop out the detail so I can show it on camera. Another difference here from the original model kit, it has the chest box with the sculpted detail on it, and I just quickly threw stickers on it. I'm probably going to peel these off and paint it like I did the first model kit, but it also comes with an option for a flat. That way, if you don't want to paint or the stickers don't come out really well because they don't really go around curves and I didn't do the water slides, I apologize. This is a nice option, but it's not going to hold up if you're a stickler for detail and you get up <laughs> close to it and wait. That, that doesn't even have buttons. All the actual body is the same as the original model kit. And yes, I've cheated here. I've put the cloth cape from the Black Series Darth Vader on here. It just works much better than that original candy shell, which I do still have down here. And when it flips out, you can see a big gap. It just works as a like a panel, like siding on a house. This Vader has a rubber cape. It looks a little bit more toy-like, but it does get out of the way if you want a little bit of action pose. It's not gonna, well, I guess you could fold it, but it does have some stiffness to it. It's the same for the lower robes coming off the belt, rubbery material. You can flip it out, get it out of the way, but if you get too crazy with it, this sometimes flips out and covers up this belt box right here. Once you get it into position, it looks it looks kind of nice. It's a different sheen from the body, so it stands out. It doesn't get lost in the sea of black, but the damn thing is a dust magnet. It's only been a couple days and it's just stuck to it. If you want just a regular Darth Vader, this cap does come off the hand. Oops, that's gone forever. Oh, there it is. You can pull the head off and then it does come with the optional masked head and then various hands for the right. And honestly, if there was another color to break it up a little bit, it gets lost in itself. I still think this is the best Darth Vader helmet sculpt in six inch scale. I've seen people take this head, put it on the Mafex, put it on the SH Figure Arts, put it on, oh, how many Vaders do we have by now? Oh yeah, the Black Series. It's just a great Vader. Now I'll have to do an Ultimate Vader showdown at some point because I think with this, I finally have all the Vaders from all the companies. Here's something I've been messing with on and off for a month or two. A lot of people were suggesting these Molotow liquid chrome pins. Just a paint pen 
This one's the finer tip one, I think. And then I also have this size that's a little bit bigger, gets better coverage. So I decided, what the hell, I have an extra Black Series C-3PO, see what happens. And even though there was a learning curve to it, I do not keep on painting or don't keep on marking as it's trying to dry. You wanna go fast and get a lot of coverage, but as soon as that sucker starts drying, get away from it, because you'll just be leaving smudges. You can kind of see right here, it's not as shiny as up here. I got better as I kept using it, but because it's a pen and not a paint, it's hard to get down into tiny little grooves like right there. But it is a lot more chromey, shiny, than a lot of the other paints I have used and way, way easier than some of the airbrush paints I've picked up. They also have a gold that I want to try out. Uh, I just haven't <laughs> pulled the trigger on that yet. My buddy, Mike Lorenzo, I met him in Denver Comic Con last year. Instagram, Mike Lorenzo Art. He sent this to me a couple, well, <laughs> it's been sometime last year now, but this is an Uncle Milton Excavations Star Wars Darth Maul head. It's just a bone color when you dig it out of the kinetic sand in the crate. Mike painted it up because the tattoo lines are sculpted into the skull here. Now I know what some of you are gonna say. Some of you are gonna say, oh, what a fun little thing. Some others are gonna say the tattoo wouldn't be on the skull. Yeah, probably not, but <laughs> yeah, it's a fun little thing. Get over it. During the Marvel Play Day, I showed off a trench coat and hat for Thing. That was from Rebel 10 Customs. In that same package, I also got these two Jedi robes. They're made out of a stretchier material than we're used to. She's also put a wire down the front so you can pose them in different windswept poses or however. The hoods without the water trick like to lay down a little better than a lot of other cloth robes I've seen. Because the wire runs up, stays up right here, so when you put the hood down, it does that Jedi just hoop down to the hood. Now this one I did wet down a little bit. I didn't do the full on water trick, which is just douse the whole thing in water, get the pose you want, and then wait for it to dry, and it usually stays there. But even wetting it down a little bit, I've got that nice, drop down to the hood. It's staying on top of his head. It just looks great. This figure is about to go slaughter some younglings. Nice stitch work all the way down. This isn't going to unravel. It's not going to come apart. Uh, yeah, Anakin may just stay in this robe. Now look at this mean looking bastard. J Custom Figures on Instagram hit me up and he said, hey, I enjoyed the show. I dig doing customs. I'd like to send you something. And he showed me this Darth Vader and I was like, hell yeah, I would like to have that Darth Vader. And what it is is a Black Series Darth Vader that has been heavily, heavily modified into a battle damage Darth Vader. I mean, look at some of the sculpt work right here to where it's been slashed. You can see skin underneath, he's bleeding. It's same thing right here. These nice wires coming out of the chest box, like it's been kind of and it's hanging out. The paintwork on some of these cuts where it looks like the lightsaber just struck him here, here, right across the eye. You can even see, I don't know if you can see that, the eye inside the slash. Because the helmet does come off, he did a nice paint job on Vader's head. I think this is a Terminator arm and hand. But look how he sculpted the suit like it's been pulled back. There's more slashes down here at the legs, the paint scuffs and such to the shin armor. He even battle damaged the cape and then ran a wire down the edge of it so you can bring it around anywhere you want to put it. I picture this Vader up on a hill with just all kinds of dead troopers or stuff around him. He's been through one hell of a battle, maybe a Jedi or two, but he stands triumphant, even though he's gonna have to get some work done. Now we had talked about the Vader, but this was also in that same package and I was, oh, Look at that, because I had looked at Jay's Instagram page and he had done a lot of troopers too. So this was a surprise and I love me some troopers. He even customized the box a little bit. He said, pay no attention, I was just playing. But getting it open, oh man, look, he even customized all the extra hands down here to match the color scheme of the figure. The unmasked head, amazing, the paint, the battle damage, the wear, the tear, just, oh man, <laughs> this is one badass clone. And it's on the back. I, most of my figures, I don't even customize the back because nobody is ever gonna see it. He went all out. There's a wash back here. There's a little bit of damage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but he didn't stop there because look at this. He sent all kinds of accessories for it. He did a helmet with a visor with the visor up. He did a helmet with the visor down. That looks just amazing. He did a helmet with no visor. It just, fits into the overall mm, 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 mm. He did an unmasked head with some damage to it, a slice, black eye, and then uh, I don't think he's gonna make it through this. But on top of that, there is a backpack and it took me a minute 
there's kind of a click to it. That's because he embedded a magnet in the back. It just snaps to the back. It, he's got a backpack. Or is that upside down? That's probably the right way. Yeah, there's a flap to open up so you can store other stuff in there. Boom. And that's not all. There is also a jetpack that does the same thing. Magnet, it stays on the back. Not bad at all. So yeah, J Custom Figures on Instagram. Look him up. Check out some troopers. Now I know this doesn't seem like much, but oh. But in my last order with Casting Cave, I was sent this, and this makes me super excited to get a Dooku. Or just anyone else that wants to hold a tiny, tiny little hologram of the Death Star. It's cast in holographic material. Look, you can see through it. I'm excited about it. I, well, I'm excited about most Casting Cave stuff. Such as this old man Luke from The Last Jedi head. Now, if you remember, this is the original Hasbro head. Just look at that incredible difference here. And like I said, with the casting cave, Star-Lord and Captain America that I showed during the Marvel play day, I just love the contrast he gets in the hair. The dark wash, the light dry brush, it just brings out so much detail. Plus the way he paints eyes, his skin tone, <laughs> you can see the big difference between the plastic and the actual paint. But it gave me a reason to put this Luke on the shelf. And now that I have this one, I don't even care if a figure arts comes along. This just looks fantastic. And now I need a crate Luke. Come on, Bandai. Just look a little bit longer. Just look at that. Amazing. Damn amazing. Okay, people, welcome back to another Star Wars Play Day. First up, here is a custom wedge head sent to me by Chris Miller. Now, I recognize the name right off the bat. He comments a lot on the videos, and I truly, truly appreciate that. He also blames me for getting him into the 112th collecting craze. I believe me, I feel your pain. And then he's also gotten into customs, as you can tell from the wedge head here. Now, I don't know if he shrunk a cast or he sculpted this or where this came from, but the likeness is pretty good. Pretty nice detailed work to the eyes and popping it on to the X-Wing pilot Luke body. It's not that bad at all. Now it comes out a little bit short because Luke is a little bit short. So I'll probably need to customize this a little bit. Uh, get a Bosk body or something. Uh, work some orange in. Get him a little bit taller. And then of course customize him his own individual helmet. I probably won't stuff it on there, but he can hold it. He can, uh, you know, big plans. We need more pilots. We need more guys like this. Wedge and Biggs and Porkins. Yes, I want Porkins. Shut up. He says he's making these heads available for anyone who wants them so check him out on his facebook and instagram at cm custom and then on ebay at c miller 0034 next up as soon as i reviewed the hasbro marvel legends i said marvel legends the hasbro black series general grievous i knew i would need to replace that cape it just kind of lays there and I don't know if this is the right color. Again, I haven't checked. I probably should have, but I, I wanted it to be a little bit darker and it just doesn't lay right. Now they did put the pockets in there for the lightsabers. That's pretty nifty. But lastly, he's missing the symbol on the back. So that night after the review, I got on eBay and went to GPS lot or GP slot, but I knew he'd come through. And while this is a light cape, it's double layered. It's got some heft to it, so it'll lay naturally when you put it on and you see it, don't you? <laughs> you bring it around. This one has the symbol on the back. I don't know how he did this. I'm always amazed by people who can work with cloth. Me, I'm just like, oh, it's magic. And right here, he's put a clasp and it has just a threaded hoop. You come here, you unlatch it, you open it up and you can put it on where, however you want. Also in the back, it's got a little piece of wire inside these stretches right here. I'm already afraid that this won't push under the collar of the figure, but I can form fit it around the back and it'll kind of hold. So General Grievous, off with ye. And let's see what this does. Ooh, and that's very, very, very tight. I really don't want to stretch it all the way around the collar, but it laying like this, and laying like it does over the body, it helps to conceal him a little bit better than the other cape does. But because of the material used here, it lays over his shoulders. It doesn't puff out. And then of course you have the symbol on the back as he's running away. Fortunately, there are no lightsaber pockets in this, but just look how that lays. It's because of the weight on the edge around here. It, the middle, it just falls with the weight of the stitching. Not that it's heavy, it still stands up fine. Okay, after messing with this for a while, you can lift up this armor plate in the back and kind of stuff the cape down in behind that. And that kind of lets it slide up under the collar. There's no gap under the collar here. Perfect world, I would pop open or pop this up if it came apart. I'm not even sure if that's a separate piece and then just kind of stuff the cape in there. But if I do latch it, it pulls itself up over. It's just too tight. And it just pop. Let's try to get it under there, right there, and right 
here. Eh, not bad. It's not any worse than the stock cape, but it's definitely meant to go on the model kit. It's still kind of a stretch, but the model kit has more gap underneath this collar right here, so it looks a whole lot better. Because of how far I've stretched it though, it wants to bunch up and kind of stick up right here, but it still lays beautifully over the body. And it would work better with single arms, but <laughs> so, uh, where is that box with the single arms? And because of the light weight of the cape, the model kit has no problem standing with the cape on there. Of course, the model kit in general has, and get it in general, General Grievous, but it has an easier time standing than the Black Series figure. And then finally, this box comes from J Custom Figures on Instagram. Now, if you remember from the last play date, he sent me a battle damaged Vader that was amazing. And then he also sent along a custom clone with all kinds of accessories and extras. It was amazing too. So when I saw him selling some stuff on Instagram, I jumped on it and I know what I ordered and I know what he talked me into ordering along with it for a damn fine price but then he also said he would throw a couple things in and I can't remember what that was and I don't know if there's any surprises in here so let's take a look at what is in this box whoa <laughs> he, he kept them all in the boxes or put them back in the boxes along with a toothpick that has some paint stir on it or some glue or something black series and figure arts this looks like a, one of those I, I think it's a knockoff Kota Bikia Royal Guard. I already have a couple of these, but ooh, I always take more. In fact, there's two of them, so I'll have two to go along with the two I already have. You can never have enough Royal Guards flanking the Emperor. And then there's two Royal Guard boxes that, oh, look at that. Got a battle damage Vader. Now I can have a couple, is it two of them? Yep, a couple of battle damage roll guards. They both have different damages to the helmet and to the bodies. There's even chips. Oh, I gotta get these open. And what better way to protect a custom than to put it back in the original package? That's brilliant. And look at the dings and gouges, missing a little bit of, the, well, kind of a lot of the shoulder armor right there. Gouge out right here. The way he's put black in there to make it look like singe marks or something. Same thing on the crotch guard, a little piece. Yeah, <laughs> good thing that was there. Shin armor looking nice and worn. He's even come along and torn up the cape or well robe in this case and then nothing really on the back. oh wait no look he's even damaged up the butt flap and up in here too if i was making this i wouldn't have done that because the cape hanging down yeah a little extra effort there and then for the other one you can see this slash coming across the visor right here and the same dings and gouges and it just looks like blaster fire or even lightsaber marks is the back done over here too oh you sly son of a <laughs> look at that man i would not want to be a part of the rebel garrison that these three just ran through very crimson empire i love these things I, as much as i like having the royal guards just standing there looking stoic just guarding the emperor i also like to see him kick a little ass and this is the royal guard and Vader kicking some ass. Of course, they took their hits too, but I'm sure they doled out more than they got. Now, this is the one that started the avalanche of this box. This is the one I saw on Instagram and I said, hey, I'm going to buy that from you. And he said, hey, okay. But I'll also give you a hell of a deal on some Horn Company guys to go along with Captain Locke. Now, I didn't know anything about Captain Locke, the name, or Horn Company. I haven't watched through Clone Wars yet, damn it. I just knew I wanted a green captain and getting some green troopers to go with them. Gravy on the biscuit. And just like the other clone I received, he's even customized the hands to match the colors on the body. And with that, oh, I love the damage on these. I just love the way he punched in the greens and the Horn Company logo. It just works. Now the base for this is a figure arts clone trooper. I don't have a lot of figure arts clones, but customized like this, I'll take all of them. I'll get as many as I can. And the Horn Company trooper is just more of the same basic trooper. It's got the green on it. It's got the logo on the chest. I just like the wear all over. It looks like, you know, the greens come off a little bit on the hands. And to have two of them the same, at least when it comes to the logo and where the green is located and everything, but different battle marks on each one. That, <laughs> that makes me happy. That's even cooler. <laughs> okay, people, welcome back to another play day. First up, I threatened I was gonna do this and I eventually did. <laughs> I actually got some paints out. I was surprised. The SH Figure Arts Count Dooku, I, there, I had a few problems with this figure, but the biggie 
was just the monotone light brown of the overall costume. Sure, some people said it was Revenge of the Sith. I felt like it was too light for that. Some people said it was the Clone Wars version. I can kind of see that actually, but I have no connection to Clone Wars, at least yet. I still need to go through and watch that. Shut up. Most of the comic pictures you find online, most of the pictures of Count Dooku you find, it's from Attack of the Clones. And in that, he had a darker tunic, he had some darker pants, and my solution to that was just to paint the upper tunic black. Got it closer to my mental image of Count Dooku, and in the end, it's going on my shelf, so that's what matters, really. <laughs> I could go a little bit darker with the pants, but I'm happy with the black upper torso. It darkens it down enough for me. And then I put some water on the cape just to kind of give it a, a little bit of shape instead of being a flat kite on his back, and I, I kind of like that too. I'm still in the market for a third-party cape, though. Overall, I'm much, much happier with this, but I'll be damned if I, I didn't finish this and then Hasbro's, eh, there's some hints going around that there may be a Count Dooku in the Black Series line. So when that comes along, we'll have to compare it. This custom movie Logan Lara was sent to me by Mogan01 underscore customs on Instagram. And here she is with my custom Logan from that same movie, the head I looked at in a previous play day from Mike Lorenzo Art, and then just a Mafex Scarecrow body. But the use of a Walking Dead figure over here is kind of brilliant. Yes. She may be just slightly underscaled, but it totally works for that movie version of X-23. Was she called X-23 in the movie? I don't know. With Disney getting the Fox rights, we may see figures of this in the future. Maybe not. I don't know. Either way. But on my shelf, I now have a Lara and I have a Logan. I'm good. Just a general play day, mixing all lines together, also gives me a chance to look at this. Now, I received this a while back from AW Customs on Instagram. It's an anchor. It's on a rope. But man... I love me some Popeye. I can have a prop until I find a boat, maybe a dock, maybe some water scene. Someday I will have an elaborate display for the Mezco 112th Collective Popeye, and on that day I'll be able to hang an anchor on his wall. I'm pretty sure this is cast material, and I don't know if it's painted on top. You can see the wood across. I, what? I'm not quite sure what's going on here. The speckled material, either way, super, super nice. While at Star Wars Celebration last month, I ran into Peak Obi-Wan Customs on Instagram, and he was handing these out, I, I, a convention exclusive, if you will. Now he calls these three and three quarter inch, but they're loath cats. They can be small, they can be big. Uh, I feel like this will fit in my six inch display. The Hasbro Black Series Ezra is coming soon along with Chopper. They've given us most of the Rebels crew. Loath cats just supplement that display. It's 100% unique sculpt. Nice little paint job on it with the little spots and the eyes. <laughs> little loath cat, what else can I say about it? And then the Underworld Cat, or Tuca, I, I think it's called. Even better. I, I love the neon design here where it's down in the caves and such. It just stands out. Here's yet another casting cave cast and painted head. And it's just, oh, so Steve Rogers. Now, I love me some photo reel, but there's also something to be said about tender loving care, blood, sweat, and tears going into a painted head cast. Now, this is Marvel Legends scale. It's a little bit larger than your SH figure arts and even the older Captain America bodies because this Infinity War body, a little bit larger than what we've seen in the past. So I'm hoping Hasbro put puts out a Avengers Endgame Captain America, and if that head isn't up to par, I have a replacement. But if it is, I'll have to find some place to put this because it's too good not to use. Also from Casting Cave, I grabbed, I think this is the Marvel Select Gambit head shrunk down to six inch scale. It's a little bit larger than the actual Marvel Legends head, but I like uh, the overall look of it better. The hair is a little bit less caught in a tornado look. It's a little bit more dynamic. The face is a little bit more realistic. And then I have a cloth jacket coming. So I don't know if I'm gonna switch out these arms or try to put the cloth jacket over it, get this head painted up, see what I can do about just tweaking the gambit uh, more towards my personal preferences. <laughs> I mean, that's still not supernatural. Well, it is kind of supernatural hair. How does that stand up? But it's not extremely natural in the hair department. How about that? Now here's something a little oddball, something not Marvel related. A lot of people bought this because they had fond memories of Ghosts and Goblins, and I remember the game, but I, I don't really care. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I got nothing against it, but to me, this looked more like an Inferno demon. I was heavy, heavy, heavy into X-Men and Excalibur and all the other X titles going on when Inferno was happening. So when I saw this, it automatically made me think of that. Just demons pouring out from limbo into the real world. 
I, I think <laughs> for the two minutes I've messed with this, I think that'll work perfectly for that. But this makes me want an Aster and a Sam. And I was going to put it with Magic, but apparently, even though I've, I know I've seen her at Walgreens, I never picked it up. What the hell is wrong with me? Pretty nice articulation to the wings. The head can look all the way up and down and side and side. Pretty basic at the shoulder. Comes up to there comes around and same with the elbow it comes up to well not quite 90 you can turn that around and go any way you want with the wrist interesting torso a ball at the mid torso and at the waist so you can get some crunch you can get some back some tilt some tilt drop down hinge for the hip so you can come up and back and out double knee comes quite a ways up then the ankle is the same as the wrist if you get that sideways can you turn it well no there you go wings are solid plastic so they're a little bit heavy gonna cause some back weight to him oh, oh his leg gave out but not too big a problem standing and if you want him flying there is a stand if you put this in here don't try to turn it it's got flat edges on the peg you're supposed to pull it out and move it into different positions because i just broke mine and damn and, and just to show you how heavy it is it takes a mezco stand down whenever you try to extend it out oh forgot to mention the jaw it is articulated too and you can kind of shift it to the side to give them kind of a I'm a demon what's going on or you can center it up you can go to the other side wherever you want to go and then for scale yes he's a little bit short but you know what if you go back and read those inferno issues they come in all shapes and sizes so as of this moment this is a limbo demon on my shelf and apparently i need to go to walgreens and try to hunt down a magic now next up here are two strangely almost 1 12th scale items that came with three and three quarter inch figures these were sent along to me by chris Sherrill. i'm sorry if i butchered your name but i truly appreciate you sending these the mouse droid came with a couple of figures from the three and three quarter inch line it came with a death star droid and an r4m nine and then this death star hologram came with the three and three quarter inch r2 q5 all figures we need in the six inch line it's just a hollow little thing it's a shell but it's nicely detailed for what it is and that's the same for the death star hologram well death star 2 hologram it's transparent you can see through it it looks like candy i must not lick it to give you an idea of scale here is the six inch hasbro star wars black series stormtrooper and i know we have a mouse droid coming with one of those disney sets but if you want to army build mouse droids, what are you going to do? This is much cheaper, much easier. Go back and buy a three, three quarter inch figure. You get a mouse droid with it. And yes, today I'm even digging into Transformers. Non-F Productions, N-O-N-N-E-F. I don't know if it's non-F, but <laughs> that's what I'm going to call it. He does some third party stuff for the new Transformers Siege line. And he sent along a Hound upgrade kit. With Hound, you get this cannon. It's very classic toy-like. You pull that out. It just pins into that hole right there. It has a couple of pieces that extends the shoulder rocket out and then there's the rocket that goes in that makes it very cartoon like that plugs in up here it gets it away from his head so it's not quite so <laughs> just right up against his face and you can bring it around you can bring it forward you can bring it down you can bring it up you can bring it wherever you want to put it on top of that it also comes with this blaster it looks very nice when you put it in his hand just more simplistic again more classic looking and but on top of that and i knew this was like this on Soundwave. i didn't realize it was on hound you can also pull the hands out it's really really tough to do but you kind of work it out pops out and then the kit also comes with alternate hands they just plug in they don't slide in but you know what it works it looks like it's supposed to be there and he comes with left and right splayed out hands and he comes with left and right pointing fingers so all that together just adds a little bit more of a dynamic look to the figure overall i love the splayed out hand it's just <laughs> it adds a little bit more realism hell yeah and then i just cannot get enough of gps lot on ebay he always comes up with something that i need and quite simply this is a bath robe to evoke that look from the end of the first Deadpool movie when he comes out in the hallway along with the boxers and everything I, <laughs> I had to have it there's also ties to bring it around and tie the robe shut but it's probably better to get rid of this belt because that sticks out really really far and when you try to close the robe it doesn't really want to work around eh, it's not bad but it, it could be better you can see the bulkiness of the belt under it but as is Deadpool coming out getting the newspaper in the morning getting ready for work <laughs> it, it sounds really weird to put Deadpool in that kind of setting, but it works. To get ready for the next item, I've popped my Casting Cave bearded custom head back on this body. As I've said before, the Marvel Legends Infinity War Captain America, the arms aren't really correct. If anything, this arm should look like this arm. So I went on a quest to find something that'll cover those arms up. And in that quest, I found R2K Troopers on Instagram and I ordered this. It came in this nice, nice little box. Hell, I'm going to use this for scale stuff, pictures, something. But inside, uh, yeah, 
Wakandan shields. Awesome sculpt to them, nice paint, very crisp on where the silver needed to go. And then on the back, it's actually elastic bands to put it on the figure. Easy enough to put the hand through and then pop that into his grip hand. Oh man, and that is just, ooh, gravy on the biscuit icing on the cake. It just finishes off this figure. But is it sad that we're still going to third party producers to get the Wakandan shields for our Infinity War Captain Americas? Eventually Hasbro will probably have a three pack and then Cap will come with these shields and the correct arms, an apology head. But at the moment, this is our only course of action. Now, like I said, R2K troopers on Instagram, I was already making an order for the shields. I decided to throw in for one of these Archangel's wing in backpack things. And no, I still haven't opened my fan channel Archangel yet, shush. But it comes with these big elaborate wings and I love these things, I really, really do. How I have it displayed on my shelves at the moment, it'll probably stay like that forever. But for those Jim Lee teams, I'm gonna come in and do this. Plugs right into the back. And oh man, I have been waiting for one of these forever. Crisp sculpt. The paint seems to match this. Well, okay, it's a little bit brighter, but you know what? Who cares? This looks fantastic. It's just slightly angled back to give it a dynamic look. And yeah, that makes me happy. <laughs> this makes me, well, I don't know. I love this metallic pink they used on this figure. I like the look of the fan channel one. I think I prefer this one, at least until I open that. And then I'll be like, oh, the fan channel's so great. Gus, did you want some of this Chinese food? Nope. I'm on a liquid diet, thank you very much. Not everything is custom, not everything is 3D printed, not everything is third party. Some of it's older, officially released stuff. Bluefin was kind enough to send along the SH Figure Arts Avengers Infinity War Falcon. I've been getting along fairly well with the Marvel Legends Falcon, but once I opened this, I was like, oh, look at the alternate head and the guns and the water bottle, what's that? I know, it's a stand type piece, shush. This looks like it could easily take the place of the Legends on my shelf, so that's what we're gonna find out. Oh, and getting him out, <laughs> it's pretty damn sweet. I didn't think I'd like it as much as I actually do. You can tell right out of the package the sculpt is more seamless. It's not quite as detailed as the Marvel Legends for whatever reason, but it just looks overall more uniform. They both have that metallic red, but it is cleaner on the SH Figure Arts. I guess I could pull the wings off him, get those out of the way. Looking at the overall size, just a little bit shorter than the Marvel Legends, so it'll fit in just fine with your six inch display, which I kind of figured, but you never know. Figure Arts sometimes runs a little bit short. There's something oddball with the waist though. It has four range and really the whole torso itself is amazingly articulated but the waist has some side shift it's kind of crazy well forward and back too when i first got it out i thought wait a second why does that look so weird being flush over here and gapped over there you just have to find the center point and then it looks good. Another thing I like about the figure arts, it has a standard backpack without the wings. You, there's no attachments. It's an enclosed wing structure, whatever that means. Just pop that off. It's one peg. Put on this other backpack and it has two big old ball joints. So the other big difference from the Marvel Legends version is the wings are articulated here. You can put them anywhere you want. Also, it came with these ball jointed handles right here. You can rotate those around and put those in his other hands, his grippy hands. But one of them was a pain in the ass to get in there though. It's really, really tight. You can pop the head off at the neck and then just pop the other head on. You have the goggle look. And then the big thing for me, the hands come off. He comes with the fists. He comes with the splayed out hands, but my Falcon is going with the trigger finger hands because it also comes with his pistols. Yep. That right there seals the deal. Marvel Legends. Bye bye. Oops, there's a new Falcon in town. Man, the arms are crazy articulated. Just for a proper side-by-side, -side, here he is with the SH Figure Arts Civil War Captain America and the Marvel Legends Endgame Captain America. This works. This is my new Falcon. Can't help it. Next up, you may remember uh, during a mail haul a couple months ago. <laughs> Has it been that long? Hasbro sent along some promotional items for Spider-Man Far From Home, and this was one of them, and I thought, oh, will that fit a six-inch figure? That's where we're about to find out. Oh, and I thought this thing on the back retracted into the body, but it just wraps around this whatever the hook is down here or, or weight really has all kinds of artillery shooting out the front though oh man did i miss some missiles in the package i did how do those fire i only play with adult toys not kids toys oh it's in the turbines oh what the hell that shoots hard somebody's gonna put their eye out Let's see, the canopy opens up. There's also a hinge on bottom right here. Button on the side right there that drops out. I guess an escape chute? Either way, moment of truth, the, oh. Well, that kind of sucks. Pizza Spidey is too big. Far From Home Spidey is too big too. Well, hold on a second. Let's, let's, let's do some crunching here. If you bend his knees a little bit and get him around and then duck him down a little bit, he, he fits okay. <laughs> 
I don't know, that may be too small, but it looks cool next to the Spider-Mobile from the Disney store. Next up, Chrissy from Rebel 10 Customs. She sent along a, some new trench coats, some new robes, some new knickknacks to play with. This time around, she sent a new coat for Gambit. This is made out of a suede material. And before we get too far into that, I did switch out the arms on Gambit here with the arms from this Spider-Man. I kept his shoulders on there. I didn't want to get into that much work, but these arms popped right onto the peg. Once I get a jacket on there, Nobody's gonna know, who cares? This jacket works really well and Chrissy is a master at wire inside cloth. You almost don't even notice it. You go to pose the jacket and it stays where it goes, but it's so light, <laughs> I nearly said fluffy. It's not heavy like some of the other wired capes and robes and jackets we get. It's, it's very easy to put where you want it to go. But not stopping there, let's pop the hands off Gambit, slip him out of his jacket. There's a better look at the Spider-Man arms on Gambit. Sure, they're a little bit small, but like I said, jacket thickens it up. It actually works in its favor. She also sent along a pleather top jacket. Get the collar down a little bit. And I, I think I like the suede. It just fits a little bit better at this scale, but I'm not gonna lie. This gives me some retro feels from the toy biz days. But the craftsmanship, you cannot deny that this thing is amazingly sewn together. The actual size, it just works all the way around. Here's a Jedi robe she sent along. She said it was for Mace Windu, but I had <laughs> the Black Series Obi-Wan sitting there, so I wanted to see what it looked like on him. You can see there's a little bit extra length, but man, those prequel robes were huge. And she replicated that really well with these big baggy sleeves on this one. I already wet down the hood so it'd lay more naturally, but it gets down over his head. It's big. It's, again, like episode one. I need to wet down the sleeves, though, get those hanging just right on his arms. But since I have the SH Figure Arts episode one, Obi-Wan already in the display, here's his alternate look, and I'll probably leave this on here. And that's not all. She also sent a lab coat for the Marvel Legends Beast. Look at the button work right there on the front. Again, a pocket, the seams, oh, just everything nicely done here. Now, Beast doesn't really lend himself well to wearing a coat or a jacket of some kind because they gave him no neck at all. So his shoulders are already coming up to here. He looks a little bit swallowed by the lab coat, but at the same time, I can see him just toiling away, trying to cure the latest problem in the mutant kind. It'll also help when he does some research Search because Chrissy also sent along a book to go with it. I don't know what this is. It's hollow, but it feels plasticky. Since Beast came with a book holding hand anyway, you slip it into there and he's researching his latest formula. Damn, that's cool. Next up here are some assorted webs that a buddy of mine that runs the convention circuit, Bobby, he caught up with me at one of the shows. Well, I think it was, was it Celebration or around there? So I've been holding on to these for a couple months. These are McFarlane-esque spider webs made out of wire. They're flexible, they're bendy. You can put them anywhere you want and they stay there. It has a hoop on the end, like some of the import figures that you can come around and then clip between the hand and the wrist. Hell, not even import figures. Let's try it on this. Perfect. Stays, holds its own weight up. <laughs> I'm kind of liking these. Now this seems like it's fairly easy to do, but the more I look at it, the more I mess with these, the less I want to do it myself. So I really appreciate him making these for me. Same thing on the spread out webs. There's a hoop at the end for the hand. And this, I don't know what kind of witchcraft he used right here, but it's cool. It, it, it entraps things. And then not stopping there, he also gave me symbiote versions for Venom or, you know, black costume Spider-Man, whatever you want to use it for. This one's super long, very tendril-like. And then you see me tossing them around. They're also very durable. This survived the trip from Celebration through Salt Lake, down through Albuquerque, back and around loading, unloading toys. These were a little bit smashed from my backpack, but it was easy enough just to spread it back out, get it back into shape. Hell, to even fake it, it's so flexible and durable that I can bring it around the hand to where it kind of looks like he is gripping it. That's not bad. That works. Look at that. Yeah, it's a little bit fake, but hey, camera angle. Thwip! Okay, this was a pure indulgence item. I, I was coming off the excitement of celebration, getting the carded episode one Star Wars Black Series figures, and I got home, saw this on eBay, grabbed it. This is made by Nate Productions on Instagram. He sells stuff on eBay. And what this is, is a custom ceremonial Leia on a custom card with a custom flashback. It's in the style of the three and three quarter inch that was coming out, what, turn of the century? Very nicely done all around. I just love the presentation of this. And look at this. He even made the flashback photo pullable where it changes faces. That is amazing. Nice fabric work to the custom itself. It comes with two metals and then re-sculpted hair on Leia's head. Now I could open this up and have ceremonial Leia on the shelf since 90% of my collection is loose, but 
I just can't make myself open this. So this will go on the wall with my retro carded six inch figures and the Celebration Episode 1 figures and hopefully the San Diego Empire Strikes Back vintage carded Boba Fett and it'll just be one of those wacky things. I love this. And speaking of that San Diego Boba Fett, I finally got off my ass and got with Vaz underscore SW dot pics on Instagram and grabbed me one of these custom vintage style Boba Fetts. I've seen a lot of people with his work. I've always been jealous as hell, but what finally jump started my need for this was Hasbro showing their vintage carded Fett. Even if I get one, I doubt I'm gonna open it. So I needed one for the shelf too. And that's where Vaz came in. So we're getting this thing out. And just look at this thing. He even went back and sculpted the rangefinder to the helmet, just like the vintage figure. And yeah, it's more detailed detailed than the vintage figure in sculpt, but coming back with these colors, I, the yellow gauntlet, the red, mm, mm, mm. this is like childhood. Put the rocket pack on there with its purple colors and the red rocket sticking out of the top. Slip the pistol into the holster, but I'm not gonna put his rifle in his hand because this being a custom, I don't wanna get too crazy with it. I just want this looking badass on my shelf. And that is exactly what it's gonna do. Huh, this makes me kinda wanna what other figures can be done in the vintage style? Boba Fett's the most obvious, but... Hmm. Here's a little care package from the Corellian Caravan on Instagram. First up, here's a little Ziploc bag with a tiny little takeout bag. Recycle, reduce, reuse. Oh, look at that. It's an actual bag. Along with that, here's another bag of goodies. We have tiny little scaled chopsticks. Several, several takeout boxes. Nice print on them. And then the fold job on these. I wouldn't want to do this by hand. So again, I appreciate you sending me this. Thank you. Enjoy. He sent along four of those so I can feed the whole crew. But then there is this tiny pack of cigarettes that actually open and, yep, there's cigarettes inside. Holy moly, I am old and shaky, but look at that. Now he says these are burnable, but I am not setting fire in my little review space here. But they are paper, so yeah, they'll burn. <laughs> and remember the days when Gambit smoked? Oh man, the 90s. That is crazy. Slide effects on Facebook sent me a whole heaping helping of effects for action figures. Oh, more than I thought. Looks like some blood puddles, looks like some blood splatter effects. Here's some symbiote drippings. Uh, these are the radar effects for Daredevil and uh, who else? I'm not quite sure what that is. You can barely see the 3D print marks on it, but it, it's fairly smooth. Oh, and there's still stuff coming out of the bag. There's a, what is that effect? Like, that looks cool. And then there's one in green. And then that other shape that I can't identify in pink. This one says two pack Cyclops. Let's see what that does. And it doesn't actually fit into the vibe or just kind of clips to the sides there. And this one says Jim Lee Cyclops. The Jim Lee will not fit on the two-pack Cyclops. I just assumed that they were the same sculpt. But nope, that clips right on, stays on fairly well. What did these two fit? So knowing that, these other two either fit one or the other, not both. Kind of hard to center up, especially with my shaky ass. He's getting ready to blast the hell out of something. Ouch, and those are sharp. Then the other one fits or well seems to fit the two-pack Cyclops. Kind of hard to get centered over the slot, especially if you're OCD, but... And does this fit over here somehow? Yep, it clips on and there you go. Spidey sense. There's no point of attachment for the radar sense, but damn, that looks good. I guess you get a little blue tack or something, stick it to the back of the head. There's puddles of goo for venom. And then the blood effects, I guarantee, work just like the radar effect. You have to kind of get them blue tacked on or stuck to the figure itself. <laughs> but you know I'm all about the mutant action. I really dig how the light kind of shines through the 3D printed material. Non-F Productions has me buying more Transformers stuff. You can email them at sales at nonf.com or on Twitter at nonfprod, or you can just go to nonf.com. But this is an upgrade kit for the Hasbro Transformers Siege Sideswipe. And yes, I just opened this damn thing. I haven't even transformed it yet. I was, the, <laughs> I just got this and I was like, oh, time to open. Sideswipe did come with a weapon that either goes in the hand or you can take the rocket off and use it in the other hand or altogether it has this flat peg that goes in right here. And yeah, that's okay, but it has no side to side. It has no up and down. It's not gonna get out of the way of his face. I guess you could turn that around, but it's right there up on his head the whole time. This takes him back to more G1 era type weaponry. It was G1 inspired blaster that goes in the hand and while it's right there side by side, 
look at how well it matches the plastic of the leg. It's almost the same color, same shade, same everything. Then we take this off and we plug the rocket launcher into there, plug the rocket into that, and that too is more G1 inspired. But if you look right there, it also has a hinge that you can get the rocket up and away from his head. I may come in here and paint the actual launcher part black because I, it was it that color back in the day? This right here is much more side swipe-ish in my mind because I'm a G1 kind of guy. And having this figure out of the package, holy moly, look at those ankle tilts. He's going to go great on the seed shelf. Now, if you've been paying attention to eBay or customs or the Foosh forums, you already know about this beast head. This was made by I Bent My Man Thing. He's a moderator on the forums. He's a writer for the Foosh front page. And then on Instagram, he goes by IBMMT underscore. But just look at this. When this Marvel Legends beast came out, a lot of people didn't care for the open mouth head or the whited out eyes. Benty took it upon himself to recast the top of the head and then re-sculpt the mouth. And it humanizes Beast a little bit. Sure, this is totally correct, especially to the cover of X-Men number one, but when you, I think of Beast, he was always reading or Oh My Stars and Garters or just kind of more calm. So this totally works for me. I love the look of this head. I don't care for the open mouth head, but I do love this. This is on the shelf, but this will be on another shelf. And then here we go again with Corey from Casting Cave. Almost every day in the morning, I get up and check the Casting Cave painted head section. Oh man, there's been so many heads. Luke's and Obi-Wan's and Captain America's and Star-Lord's, but I needed another old Obi-Wan. Now there's nothing wrong with the SH Figure Arts Obi-Wan head. In fact, this is my main display Obi-Wan, but I put him in a cloth robe because I didn't care for the plastic robe. And you can't have him robeless because his arms are sculpted with the brown robes on. Come to the Black Series figure, take its robe off, put a casting cave head on it, and now I have both versions of Obi-Wan without robe, and I have him with robe. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. At this point, I used to think, oh, I only need one of each character on the shelf. No, I'll take versions of each character on the shelf now. Damn Star Wars. Well, back in my day, Play Day meant something else. Get out of here, old man. Starting out, let me apologize to Go Figure Toy Reviews because he actually sent this to me before the last Play Day, whenever the hell that was. It was in a stack, but because I have so many unbuilt Star Wars model kits, like extras or the droids I haven't... Uh, it got lost in the shuffle. But now I'm opening it up. I don't know what a Nova Trooper is, but we'll see what's going on. See, I hope you're well. I know you love the Stormtroopers. Hoping you don't have a Nova Trooper in your ranks already. No, I do not. Also, they included a few bars of tablet, a Scottish candy. It's pretty much pure sugar, so hopefully you have a sweet tooth. You can find me on YouTube at Go Figure Toy Reviews and on Instagram under the same name. Let's see what's happening. Oh, look at that. That's nifty. I love the Bandai Stormtrooper model kit. It's just shaped perfectly. The black doesn't look painted you crazy some bit oh no it is painted there's a just a little bit of scratching right there which is fine i like a little battle damage to my stormtroopers have the gold parts have the imperial decal put on there i like how the gold just plays with the black it's not just half black half gold it's it's like an accent of gold. Wait, didn't the pauldron come with the sand trooper? I've got all kinds of extra bits and bobs here. Right there, let's put this here. Not bad at all, I kinda like it without the pauldron though. But he included the extra decals, the stand, he even put gold on the extra hands. That's insane. Another trooper for the shelf, hot dog. The sprue, the instructions, yep, there's regular stormtrooper. And then here's the Scottish tablet. You know I gotta try the candy. Whoa, that looks... Hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much just a cent just straight up sugar, but it's damn good. I'm gonna put this away before I eat the rest of it. Here's something I picked up at Walmart the other day. It's the less articulated six inch line for Spider-Man Far From Home. Grabbed it for this magic effect to see if it'll go with the six inch Marvel Legends Mysterio from the movie. I haven't gotten a lot of these, so I don't exactly know what to expect here. Interesting color scheme to the figure. <laughs> They've been killing it with the domes, though. I mean, I know it's just kind of a pearlescent, glittery globe. It's not quite six inch. I guess you could use this as an effect if you wanted to. Which one's the real Mysterio? Oh, and the effect works like a shield. It's got a little handle here at the bottom. But unfortunately, the Marvel Legends Mysterio doesn't have a grippy hand. But is this close enough to... It has potential. You need to come up with a gripping hand of some kind to hold on to that handle. It also has this blast that plugs into the middle of it. It needs to be more like this somehow. Hmm. <laughs> potential. 
potential. Next up from Can of Beams, I got this uh, telepathic effect. I, I got specifically for Professor X. And then I got a set of his Wolverine claws that are cut out of what looks like, is this stainless steel? It's definitely laser cut. Now, some don't know, I spent 20 years in a metal fabrication shop running a 50 ton break. It had a big industrial laser. It had a smaller laser. We had welders, we had paint department. We had just everything to work metal. So I have an appreciation for it. So when I find something metal like this, oh, I, I like it, I like it. I'm gonna have to find some way to attach this to Charles, but man, that is so much better than the effect that it came with. Some blue tags, some poster putty, something, just to keep that on the back right there. I mean, it's not as intrusive as the big Cerebro helmet with the <laughs> wad of cloud coming off of it. This complements it, it doesn't drown it out. And then with the Wolverine claws, we all know the woe of getting a Wolverine out of the package and it being just bleep bleep flop around. These are separate pieces jabbed into peg holes and it almost feels like the claws never fit just right. With these metal claws and how thick they are, when you jab them into the peg holes meant for a smaller plastic piece, they stay in place. They're not moving around as much. You can do a little bit of manipulation and bring them out if you care for this look, kinda. But overall, they are staying in place. Plus, they're reflective, they're shiny, they are metal. And I didn't even heat anything up. I just usually just pull on the claws, they come right out two, three. And then there's been all kinds of tutorials and such. Me, I just grab them shove them into the peg hole, done. They get a little bit tighter as you go because it's, the bigger pieces are pushing the plastic out. But you just gotta work it. Get them all in, straighten them up a little bit, get them where you want them, and boom. Now I'm ready for a fight. Like I said, Can of Beams, he's on Instagram, he's on Facebook, he's, I believe he has his own website now where he sells stuff. I'm gonna wait for these to come back into stock and uh, I need to order some more of these. Quite a few actually. What have we got here? Here's my gift to you. This is a six arm Spider-Man I made. I used the retro pizza Spidey. Most of the arms have bicep swivel. It was my first attempt. And you know what? I don't even care. If this was your first attempt at it, I am honored to have it in my collection. I've seen this done several times and I, I usually comment about how the shoulders aren't sunk into the torso like the official six arm Spider-Man, but I'm taking all that back. Look at the size and just the overall dynamic look of it. I dig the colors better. The webs are actually painted in. Hmm. Plus I have plans for these bare arms for the next play day. So this this works out in my favor. How did you know, dude? Also, here are some Daily Bugle papers I found on eBay. It looks awesome with boxer shorts, Deadpool in the Ferris Bueller robe. I do have that Deadpool in the Ferris Bueller robe, and it does look cool. Tom Aiello, I'm sorry if I butchered that. I really, truly am. Retired U.S. Navy Master Chief. Thank you for your service, dude, and thank you for man. What do we got? It's a bunch of. Oh wait, there's some different ones back here. There's Hulk takes hostages. Okay, there's two different cons, but check this out. It's an actual newspaper with opening pages and each page, oh, okay, they're folded into each other, but it's still very nifty. If you open it up, you have them reading the paper, you get two different pages facing out. And he sent me a whole stack of them. Man, too kind, too kind. I like the Pizza Spidey in the first place, but to have this, it's crazy looking, you know what I mean? It, it sticks out at you as, what the hell's going on with six Arm Spider-Man? Just a little something I showed during the X-Force Legends review. I, I painted up some legs to give Cannonball, you know, his lower half. This is essentially just Paladin. He had seams running down the legs right here. He had the puffy boots. I had to cut off the knife sheath and it's not the most beautiful work in the world, but standing on the shelf, I'll never see it. I need to do another couple of coats of white right here, blend it in to the actual white of the figure and then figure out a connection point, which shouldn't be too hard, magnets, something. But it's cool to have Sam standing on the shelf, even though I actually have them blasting on the shelf, but Also, I came in and shadowed up the neutral face for the Marvel Legends Nightcrawler. I like the effect they did on the screaming angry head, but I wanted something to have on the shelf where he's just kind of neutral, but kind of blended back into the shadows. Out of the box, there was no shadow on this head. I painted the black from up to here and then inside the cheeks, darkened up the ears a little bit on the inside. And then I came in with a black acrylic pastel and blended it all together. It doesn't hold up under very, very close scrutiny, but on the shelf, it, it's, yeah, it's a cool effect. If I do say so myself, I'm not really great at 
toot my own horn. But it's one of the few paint jobs I've done this year, and <laughs> when I get something done, I, I consider that a victory. I also darkened up the tail a little bit with that black acrylic pastel just to make the skin here and then the tail match up. I have a buddy on Instagram, Dash of Salt. I met him a couple of years ago at, it has been a couple, two, three, at Denver Comic Con and we've stayed in touch. See each other when I'm at Denver Comic Con. I got flooded out this year, so that was kind of a bummer, but he sent along this. Cap's Broken Shield, which I can understand why they didn't give us this in the Marvel Legends Captain America Walmart exclusive. They even had Mjolnir hidden behind the shield. They didn't want to spoil it in case it came out before the movie. So Garrett decided to rectify that, and I like the look of this. It's still got the, some thickness to it. It still has the arm straps, but it works or what it needs to work for. He recommends I dirty it up a little bit, get it to match the movie a little bit more. But if we're talking about that, the figure that we got, it's not even dirty like it was. It beat all to hell at this point. Yeah, and that just finishes it off. This one's going somewhere else. I do not need this anymore. My Captain America has a new shield. P.S. Star Wars stickers, go nuts. Uh, oh man, you shouldn't have. These are going all over the place. I also have another buddy, Marvin, on Instagram. He does a little bit of customizing here and there, and he decided to send me a little care package. And <laughs> even the shipping box, I thought, oh, what? How did Gus get on the outside? And then I turned it around and look at this slick shit. You know I'm gonna have to keep this box now. I'm gonna have to cut it up and put both sides on the wall somewhere. But he also sent me a little pizza box to go along with my NECA Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And it actually works. Look at that, I can toss some pizza in there and it's good to go. Another fun fact, since I gave you the metal shop story, before that, my first adult job after I got out of the house was delivering pizza for Domino, so I folded many of these. And it works great with the turtles themselves. He also sent a couple of card effects for my Gambit. There's just the splayed out cards, and then there's one that's energized. I am always down for more accessories for Gambit. And the color even matches his chest, that's cool. There's also these. I think these are printed out, but man, <laughs> Guess where these are going? Yeah, those are awesome. This one's like she's throwing the fireworks and these are just manifesting in her hand. That is gonna look amazing on the shelf. He made an ether. I remember talking about this a couple of months ago, I guess, with the Collector and Grandmaster 2-pack. They included the orb again, which was specific to that movie, but I said something like they should have included the ether. That way we could start getting all those in action figures, well, 112 scale form. Beautiful. And then finally, if schedule holds up, up. Last week I did the review of the Korg and Grandmaster 2 pack and I kind of threw this in there because it's too awesome not to. Yup, he sculpted and painted an amazing little meek from the end of Ragnarok. And because of his articulation, <laughs> This is where he will live now. This is how Korg and Meek will be displayed on my shelf from now to eternity. You're not dead. Chrissy over at Rebel 10 Customs has sent along another awesome little custom piece. You may recognize the name and such because I think she's been in pretty much every play day. And that's the reason I finally got a wrap was because of this. Well, and then Marvin's pizza box. I haven't dug into the full details, but this is the newer version from GameStop, I guess, with more teeth showing or something. I don't know. I just know it's a wrap so I can try on this gear. Got another amazing trench coat. I've had one for Gambit. I've had one for Beast. She just does good work. I even have one for Thing. Ah, you see where we're going here? Oh, look at that. And it's nice. You can still see the shell, but in the movie you could still see all that. It, it's, it wasn't exactly hiding hiding. Uh -uh. Have a hat? I think this is 3D printed if I'm not mistaken. The back of the bandana is removable. You take that off and you put the hat on and it fits down tight over the bandana. Look at that. It, <laughs> that's how you do it. In that same bag was a camera and <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, it's been a little while since I've seen the 1990 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie so I don't know exactly where this was in the movie. But it's a cool little thing you can put around his neck. Put the hat back on, boom. He's looking at you kid. And that's not all. You have his backpack. Now Chrissy's already hit me up and said that she forgot the flaps on the side pockets. She has since rectified that. If you're going to the Instagram, you just direct message her and you can purchase this stuff. Put this on. Oh, and look at that, that looks perfect. That's how you hide a shell if you're a turtle trying to be undercover in New York City. The nylon straps and the buckles here on top of the very beautiful sewing work. I love it. And then there's the baseball bat with the tape wrapped around it. Jose Canseco bat? She's also said in the time after she sent this to me, she will not be doing tape. It's more painted on. But even that you can store across here. <laughs> 
man. Yep, I'm gonna have to get another raft, I guess, because I'm gonna leave one like this. And then there is this box that I haven't even opened yet from Empire Toy Shop. I met him at Star Wars Celebration this year. We hung out, we talked a little bit, and he said, you know what? I'm gonna send you some stuff, see what you think. And he told me a couple of things that are in here, but I haven't actually taken them out, held them in my hands, seen what they are. Oh, is this the, no, this is, wait, I know this. Seems like I was looking at these uh, a couple of months ago. Uh, well, no, it's rubbery. What is going on here? Huh, that's interesting. There's a, whoa, full range of movement in the elbows. <laughs> what else we got? Oh, there's another body. Looks like the same thing, just a darker skin tone. Oh, what, whoa. Oh no, what, dude. Dude, two of them? Now I know exactly what these are. These are the TB League uh, seamless blanks. I didn't know they came in these nice little cases. I haven't messed with a seamless body except for the Wolfman, <laughs> the knockoff Logan Wolverine figure. They feel so weird, like cold skin. Let's get the head out, see what's going on here. Very premium feeling though with the, with the foam insert and the hard case. So squishy, but so awesome. Hmm. I thought it would be just a bendy skeleton underneath, like just rod, but it's actually joints below this skin. Because you can feel the actual pieces moving. I don't know how many ball joints are in there, but you get a hell of a lot of range. Oh look, my favorite, so much tilt. Does it actually come with a little pair of underwear? You're kidding me. Uh, yep, that's what it is. I know I'm gonna screw this up because I have enough trouble putting my own underwear on. Yeah, that's gotta be backwards, of course. <laughs> <laughs> you ever get out of the shower and you're still wet, but you're in a hurry, so you go ahead and try to put your clothes on? That's what this is like. I still kind of feel like that's wrong in some way, but this is just as straight. It does not get in the way of the articulation at all here. So at least he's not freaking out the neighbors now with his non-existent bits. And then we got to try out the other one, right? Oh, this looks like a bigger muscular body. Yep, same dude, just further on <laughs> in the steroid use. Or his very, very intense workout sessions. Very, very interesting. I'm gonna have to go out and buy some, well, I don't know. I don't want to buy clothes. I don't want to cover up the nice detail of it and why it's seamless in the first place. Oh, and it even comes with trigger fingers. Let's do this again. The seam that runs down the middle goes up the butt crack. This is not how I thought I'd be spending my play day. Okay, it almost feels like the same underwear for both dudes. This was a very much more tight fit. But getting them out and messing with them and trying to get that underwear up without tearing something up, without being very nice about it, these are way more durable than I thought they would be. Of course, I'd like to see this in five or six years, but for the time being, uh, yeah, I may have to do some customizing here. Look at this, look, huh. I need a Spidey suit for this one, and I may need a Captain America suit for this one. But again, I'd hate to cover up the seamlessness of it. That's the whole gimmick here. And I love these cases, this is brilliant. But finally, I think the last thing in this box Oh, it's another box. Wait, 12 World TW Toys 112th. Oh, I, I think I've seen this. Boy, they packed the hell out of it. What is going on here? Oh, I guess because it's oh, ceramic. What is this made of? Oh, there's several layers to this styrofoam. Ah, uh, yeah, there's another piece. And we got one more on the other end. Yep, another wall piece. Man, that is very, very nice. The base of it, it has stones and pipe and broken wood. Underneath is felt though, so it's not gonna scratch any surface that you put it on. But it doesn't look like it attaches anywhere. It kind of just sits on the base. Oh, looking at the box, looks like it goes like this. There we go. So it's kind of modular. You set it up on the shelf. It's a little bit heavy because it's made out of polystone or I don't know what this is. And then you put it together however you want to. You can leave the center wall out. You can put the other wall to the side behind it, however you want to display it. And then it's just a backdrop for your 112th scale figures. Huh. <laughs> That's very interesting. It's not meant for an overall diorama, it's just meant to spruce up your shelf a little bit. A symbol. I see some possibilities here. A little bit of styrofoam stuck there in the sharp parts. Need to clean it up a little bit, but man, yeah, nice detail to it. And hell, they even detailed the back side too with plaster on top of brick, burn marks of some kind, bullet holes. This is interesting. I'd like to see more from this company. Yep, I killed that rancor. I did not find it at Jabba's Palace just hanging out under 
you, uh, you know. First up, a little custom work that I did myself on the McFarlane Toys My Hero Academia All Might and Midoriya. If you watch the reviews for the McFarlane line that I did a while back, the All Might head was a little bit small and the Deku head was a little bit large. And I'd seen several people do it before, but I took the Ban Presto Age of Heroes All Might and the Age of Heroes Deku took the heads off, did some dremeling, and fit them to the McFarlane body. It's not quite perfect. I think the All Might head skews a little further in the other direction. Now it seems a little bit large. But Midoriya, I don't know. I kind of like how this looks. Semi-angry, a little bit bored, but it brings the whole overall piece into better proportion. I also ripped the mask and back part off that statue too, put it on here. It's not perfect. The Ban Presto All Might statue is quite a bit bigger. But this and this would look damn close to scale. Then my favorite Midoriya is now the Figma since I just got it and it is amazing. And you take that, put it here, and that seems pretty good scale. With the amazing Yamaguchi line coming along and more options when it comes to the students and overall figures and All Might and Midoriya and all of them, there's something for everyone out there. I don't know about this, but this works for me. Unless you want the different costume, then there's that one. Next up, I was in Target yesterday and <laughs> just looking for things to buy, I guess. And I came across this Hasbro Star Wars Rise of Skywalker tread speeder. I am 99% sure that this is actually, oh well, it says it right there. Galaxy of Adventures scale, which is somewhere between the three and three quarter inch and the six inch. But I'm gonna see if this is fudgeable into six inch scale. Oh, not looking too good. And I know the Jet Trooper's supposed to be on the back. Oh, what is that? Why is it split? Like I said, I know the Jet Trooper is supposed to be on back, but it's the one I had handy, so we'll see how this looks. I'm having a crisis here. I, in some pictures, and especially comparing to this one, it looks pretty close. Uh, there's no way in hell any of the Black Series figures are going to crunch down as much as that Trooper. Oh, it's definitely small, don't get me wrong, but... Mm, Maybe it's my want to have this in scale is affecting my judgment here. If there were maybe handlebars that came out further and up, that would change the look for me, I think. But having it in the background, well, that looking at the camera at least makes it look small. Beside, definitely fudgeable. And if you go this route, it's definitely going to need a paint job too. How about this? Yeah, that's better. It's all about perspective. Next up, Corey over at Sandcrawler Customs. This is from last year. I was on the road and I saw a picture of him fiddling with this and I said, oh, I'm gonna need one of those. He was kind enough to send me this 3D print that he was working on of the Rancor. Look at this big bastard. Like the majority of 3D prints, it's got some sanding that needs to be done, some filling, but look at the detail on that thing. After San Diego last year and they had the full scale, six inch scale at least, Rancor in their display case, I want one. I need one. But for the moment, uh, this will go on the wall somewhere like a trophy. Uh, I don't know where but it, it's cool. And then he says, enjoy a free Moss Eisley door. Looks like the frame and, oh yeah, there's a piece right there. I've got to get into some diorama work. I gotta, I gotta get some backgrounds. I need room, I need room where I can put diorama stuff. Oh, too much playing to do. I like his business card though, sandcrawlercustoms.com. Yep, killed me a rancor. With it being a play day, it's usually mostly customs and people crafting things, which I absolutely love. But there's also some oddball stuff that I didn't want to do a full review on. And this is, oops, it's upside down. This is the bullet head criminal. I don't even remember when I put the pre-order in for this. It's been a while though. And this is essentially a soft goods Dark Knight Joker. with well, the range of motion in the elbow is kind of amazing. I bet it'd go even further if it wasn't for the thickness of the jacket here. They fake the inner coat right here and this is just a piece of material sewn into the purple jacket. Oh, that's all stuck together. Well, no, it's, I don't know, it's down somehow. Sculpted shoes, uh-oh. Oh, that's unfortunate. It's just a swivel at the foot. That doesn't work for Robo. The joint for the neck is down at the bottom at the body. So you get some forward and back. Uh, a little bit of tilt. Pants are getting in the way here. I bet it would come up even further if it wasn't for that. Nice ab crunch. It kind of looks like he's getting swallowed by his clothes though. There's a thickness that comes 
all the way up, just adding too much bulk. Looking at it in person, it's kind of soft, but I like the detail of it. Well, actually, the softness works in its favor for the makeup, especially right here where the black is streaked up. I don't know, it's passable. It may be different when I get it to edits and I'm looking at it in the HD big screen and I'm thinking, oh shit, I missed all that. It also comes with some playing cards, some alternate hands to hold the weapons, this rocket launcher that, oh no, that can't be good. Oh well, that just comes right out. That feels fragile. I don't know. I don't have one like this. So that's a perk. That's a plus. Have the pistol that where he's known for. Has the shotgun. Has the machine gun, which, oh, this does swivel back, but oh, I wouldn't want to get too crazy with that. Oh, is that the, well, yeah, the little knife. Size-wise, it stands at exactly six inches tall, and it's a little bit shorter than the Mafex version two. This is the Mafex version three or something like that. This is the exact same size as the SH Figure Arts version, which I can't find at the moment, but if you have that, then here's your scale. Yeah, okay, there's a full shirt. The jacket is really, really bulky. Let's pull the hand off, see what happens. Super, super tiny wrist pegs. Shirt still tries to ride up, again, swallowing his neck, but it's a little bit more manageable and you can work it down just a little bit. I think I like it better like this. I don't have this Joker. I think there's options to make this Joker with the Mafex, but I haven't gotten the extra parts to make that. So this, hmm. Yeah, okay. Here's something sit along to me by my buddy Daredevil19. If you haven't checked out his YouTube channel, go over there. No, right now. Go over there right now, look at it, then come back. But what this is, is a wired Mandalorian cape. And if you have the Mandalorian, you know they put a plastic cape on them. It's not terrible. It's not the worst thing in the world, but it is a little bit unmanageable. So what we're gonna do here is, oh, that, <gasps> I always forget the new Black Series neck joints where it's articulated at the bottom and the top. Boy, they make those a pain in the ass, so I'm gonna have to go get some heat on that. And I never realized that the helmet is actually over another type head under there. It started getting soft around the bottom edge, and that's when I realized, I doubt there's a face in there. Pop that back on. Oh, you pop back. You get him. You get him. Are you kidding me? I did it. Looks kind of naked without the cape, actually. Let's put this over. He has the tatters across the bottom here. There are wires running down the side and it's kind of a ooh, leathery feel to it. The bunching right here, it's not the same as what we got with this, the strap coming around, but I don't know, it gives it that gunslinger type feel. If you've watched The Mandalorian, you know that <laughs> the whole show is almost spaghetti Western. I kind of like that. It's the poncho thing. And if I wanted to, I could bring it to the side and have it hanging down over, down and around, straight. Oh, now that, <clears throat> that sets it off. This cape, it has a sheen to it. It, it reflected some light. This, it kind of absorbs it and brings out the details of the helmet, the armor pieces, plus it's poseable. I mean, I'm getting to the point where I kind of want all capes to be fabric or this material or whatever, where I can get it up out of the way or pose it or do whatever I want. That is pretty sweet. Okay, there's wires running here too. I didn't notice these two seams running down the middle of it. So there's some extra posability while keeping the outside like so. Yeah, go check out Daredevil 19's channel. And I don't know if he has these for sale. He just said, hey, you wanna look at something? I said, yeah, of course. Slide Effects was kind enough to send along some new versions of their Cyclops Blast. Actually two versions and then Jubilee Effects. There's not an actual kind of handhold in it. You just come along, put it on her fingers and it stays where well, where you get it to stay. But I love how vibrant the colors here are and the changes in color. Let's see what this does. It's a cool little thing. It's just an add-on for the shelf. It, it adds some color and it's a nice little representation of her mutant power. And then for Cyclops, if this works the same as the last ones he sent along, should just clip right there. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can kind of see the print marks in it, but it's not a huge deal. And then because it's translucent and reflective, the light shines, it bounces off, it comes at all directions. So it looks like a sweet little blast. Let's try the longer one. It's a little, oh, well, oh, well. But because of the end of the blast, it's meant to kind of, let's see, let me get somebody else. It's kind of meant to be hitting something. And in that instance, this end actually holds up the weight because this is a little bit longer, a little bit heavier, but that still works. Or if you get it balanced, it can shoot up, have it at a sentinel, whatever you want to do. Well, actually it's holding on now. The smaller one, it is lighter. 
it stays on much better. That's just how the real world works, people. If you look at any customs on eBay, you know Loose Collector. He puts up so many fantastic things, but when he put this up, I had to have it. My brother and I watched Spider-Man and his amazing friends during its original run. We would do the Spider-Man at the first, in the intro, we'd do the whole Iceman. So when I saw this, I, I had to have it. Oh no, damn it. There's a broken part right there. Oh, and the leg's broken right there. It's a little fragile, so let's get it out of here without breaking it anymore. Okay, let's see what I can do with a little bit of glue. And it's essentially a flat <laughs> video, man. It comes with a base that you plug it into. It's just flat. It's got the slots in it. Mine didn't survive the post office. I'm going to have to do a little bit of work right here, bring the color around or sand it down a little bit more, seal it. I can fix that. But here it is next to the Marvel Legends Raft Spider-Man and... <laughs> <laughs> that works. Why do we not have Spider-Man and his amazing friends figures yet? We have Iceman. We don't have that Iceman yet. And then of course, Firestar. We need a Firestar. But now I have a video man. This makes me want a flat man though. I need this. I need the Great Lakes Avengers. Chrissy over at Rebel 10 Customs, she has sent another care package and she's essentially been in almost every play day I've ever done, which is crazy. She sent along this soft goods shirt. Uh, she says it's for Wolverine. It has kind of a military feel to it. And there's actually wire running in the collar. Nice little button right there on the sleeve. And then besides that, she sent a flannel shirt too. Essentially the same shirt, but this one I've already stuffed on the Wolverine figure. And <laughs> if you want Wolverine traveling about, going around the country, trying to stay a little bit undercover, then having a flannel shirt on it is just awesome. She also sent me along another bat with the wrap around it. She says this one's painted. This one, I guess, wasn't. You can see kind of a rawness to it. This one's a little bit more complete. So now I have two Jose Canseco bats. Cause I also looked at her raft kit that she sent. Oh man, this was sometime last year. And then she also sent this, a definite upgrade to the Marvel Legends 80th anniversary Thor. The Thor figure itself kicks ass, but I mean, <laughs> the weight of the cape just kind of drags it around. It's some weight on the back. It's not softest material in the world. Cloth is definitely softer. Not to even mention, hey look, Thor standing. Hey look. Stand up, Thor. All I did was rip this cape out of the body, came in with a Dremel, Dremeled that out, and then I glued the ends of the cape down in there. So it still has that effect of rising up out of his chest armor piece or whatever, flying up because she also put wires here, but you can get that effect of it swooping up for that classic feel. It even has the hang down part to, you know, not get in the way of the hair. Comes off looking really regal. Not to even mention getting up and out of the way. You can pose it, you can put it where you want, swoop it out, and it's way lighter. So Thor is much more stable standing on the shelf. Can't ask for better than that. Frank Stein on Facebook, he hit me up and he had some extra goodies and he asked, if I wanted to look at some stuff. No, thank you. I don't want to play with more toys. I always want to play with more toys. So he sent along a couple of effect pieces that are actually lasered out. You can see the etch work on this side, the lines going towards the middle. Very clean cut. He sent two of those effects. They are not the same. This one's bigger than this one. Oh, this is cool. This is the plaque for outside the X-Men school. It's some kind of particle board. Now I need a wall or a door or something. I need to use this. Here's a little vinyl stormtrooper, but it's actually Mickey Mouse in the gear. Well, it's Mickey Mouse, Jedi robe, stormtrooper helmet. And then there is this stand arm. Okay. There's two of them. And then there is this. Yeah. You see it? It's a Foosh logo. There it is. Foosh logo base. Put it together. Uh-oh. Am I missing a screw for the other one? It's a tall base and it doesn't seem to have another screw right here. But guess who has all kinds of bases just laying around? I'll have to do some hunting for another screw, but it's a two tier base and it has this clamp on the end. I, in fact, I'm kind of unfamiliar with this type base, but it's a Foosh logo. I gotta use it, right? I recently ordered some stuff from Can of Beams. If you know nothing about Can of Beams, you've still probably seen these claws at some point. Instagram, Facebook, somewhere. You may have not known it, but you saw them. He has an older version that are straight, comes down, there's a claw at the end. They're metal, so they stay in position, plus they fit into the slots that are already in the plastic for the Marvel Legends Wolverines, and they stay they're gonna be in the position you put them in. Some people don't like the thickness. 
I'm not trying to slice open safe doors or other mutants or through Juggernaut's armor or something. It's a toy. It works. But recently he came up with another version of the claws that have kind of a curve to them. Just a different style. It's a subtle curve, but at the end is more of a kind of point. So we're going to take the Love Triangle 3-pack Wolverine body. And yeah, that's the Mafex head and hood. To see all the controversy over that, go check out that review. But you pull on the claws, they pop right out. Because they are a little bit thicker than the stock claws that are plastic, <laughs> they don't quite go in there easy. But get some pliers and do some fitting and do some pushing and they eventually fit. It seems to spread out a little bit, but I am completely good with that. It ends up looking better overall. Here's the plastic claws. Here's the metal claws. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> upgrade. And bringing Vacation Logan back in, <laughs> I changed his claws out too. He's got the kind of curve to it. Yeah, that looks good. And then also from Can of Beams, I got some effect pieces for my Havoc. These are kind of brilliant, actually. There is no plastic between the rings right there or right there until you get to the middle. And then there is a clear plastic part with a hole in it. So you pop the hands off your Havoc figure pull off put those on there and that looks fantastic and now we need a classic havoc don't get me wrong i like this design but man i'm a classic x-men kind of guy i didn't even realize they were different effects until i put them on can of beams knock these out of the park it's always a good day whenever i get some custom heads in from Casting Cave. I was ordering one, so I figured I might as well order more, right? The biggie I wanted was a replacement head for the Marvel Legends Gambit. The Marvel Legends one is just too, I don't know, French fries in the wind. But that pops off easy enough. That should just pop right on. A little bit loose, I can fix that, but oh man. Yeah, that just sets it off. Next up is a, I think this is, yeah. A Mythos Obi-Wan Kenobi. It has that Alec Guinness look to it, but a little bit younger. There's some brown in there. The hair is a little bit more wavy. And now that I've ordered this, we'll probably get figures of the Obi-Wan Disney Plus show that they're putting out with Ewan McGregor. That is essentially this timeline, but whatever. That'll definitely work for my purposes when I get around to customizing. What is this? A New Hope Luke head for the SH Figure Arts figure. The SH Figure Arts has a pretty good likeness, but the gold hair kind of throws it off. Let's pop this off. I'm not quite sure what this head is cast from. It's a little bit more narrow. I like it, but I'm not sure if I like it more than the original head. And then for giggles, I got another head for the SH Figure Arts Jedi Knight Luke. I don't know, Luke's likeness is so hard to nail in plastic form. I like this too. And this isn't perfect either, but I don't know. I kind of like this as Jabba's palace looking Luke. And I love the hair detailing they do. It just brings out the sculpt perfectly. I don't know, for this one, I kind of like the custom one better. And then finally, here is a dirt bike sent in by Josh and Hunter Sansing. And <laughs> I can always use more vehicles. I'm trying to fit smaller Star Wars vehicles into my universe. This will work too. If you put your blood, sweat, and tears into anything, I appreciate that because you went out of your way. You wanted to make something and then you sent it to me. Eternally grateful. Some cool decals stuck onto it here and there. The mud work, it looks like he's been through it. And believe me, I live backwoods, Arkansas. This is what stuff looks like <laughs> whenever you drive it around after it's rained or, well, most of last year was wet. It does roll and he's attached this piece down here to where if I want to put a figure on it, it is not going to just tip over. But more than that, he sent this along. Yeah, that's a signed by Jim Lee copy of X-Men number one. And then Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird signed these, well, this turtle comic and then this turtle trading card. When I'm at shows, I get starstruck. I can't help it. So to get something like this, yeah, this is amazing. And I appreciate it. I, I really, really do. Because that's two of my favorite properties right there. That's crazy. So Josh Hunter from right here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You and I are gonna get along just fine. That's not alcohol, is it? Let's start off with a custom power inhibitor belt for Iceman. This was made by Super Tom Customs and uh, this has always been one of my custom dreams. During that time, Bobby had a problem with controlling his powers so he had to wear a belt that kind of dampened him down a little bit. And man, Tom just knocked this thing out of the park. He did the sculpting here, Casting Cave did the, well, casting of course, and it works like an actual belt. It has two pegs back here. It came in the package flattened out 
and it's a rubbery material. I've tried to replicate this thing for years, especially back in my custom days, and I never really did. And now that we have a kind of worthy Iceman to put it on, I am super happy to have this. It's just a good look to go along with the X-Factor Cyclops. Well, we got in the same wave with Iceman. Tom's also offering an alternate Iceman head, which I may have to give a shot at some point. This is okay, but there's just something about it that's not quite Bobby. That's so pretty. Which leads us right into Can of Beams, and I, I got a couple of effects from them. It wasn't planned, but I started looking through my stuff and I thought, oh wait, I've got a couple of things for Iceman. Plus he's been playing them with this thing where it attaches and it kind of looks like it's floating around because of the clearness in here. So what we should be able to do is pull the hand off, thread that through the hole in the middle, plug it back in. And if you keep it out of the shiny light, which in a regular display room, it's not gonna be this crazy lighting all the way around it, it looks like it's floating around his hand. That is a nifty effect. Let's try the other one, just because, because <laughs> I wanna. It doesn't seem fragile or anything, but it being a clear material, I, I don't wanna risk it. Just a cool effect. <laughs> Dad jokes. This next one I've actually stolen from Veebs. He did it first. Back in the Jim Lee days or the animated series days, Professor X kind of went with a more casual Friday look. But when we got this version with the hover chair, it came with this suited body, which is perfectly fine. It completely works. But after I saw this, I was like, oh, I gotta do it. So what you do is take a claw and his arms are pegless. So what I wanna do is get in there and slice the peg. It's actually easier to take it out and do it through there. Just like that. Remove the peg out the middle. There you go. Then you just yeah, plug that back into the sleeve and you're left with that. Then you take one of the more hated figures in the past couple of years. Here you can see the pegs. So bull and pop, push the pin out and you're left with this. You take that, put it on what's left of Claw's arm, put the peg back through and you have rolled up sleeves, bare arms. Reason you can't use Claw's arms is because he has this sculpted detail here where it's a fake arm, it splits apart, it has a gun, and then his other arm has tattoo, watch, etc. So it's just easier. <laughs> it sounds complicated, but it is easier just to swap them out. Oh, you also have to take off the vest part, which I think that just pegs right here. But I'm not taking that off because I'm gonna swap the other two arms from Spidey here get the J. Jonah head and there's Jonah or at least a placeholder until we get an official J. Jonah Jameson. That left me with the suit body with no head so I got another Professor X head from I Bit My Man Thing. He does a fantastic job of head sculpts repaints. I swapped out the open hand and the fist I left this really thinking hard hand over here, left the fist here. So in my Jim Lee display, I have the hover chair with a casual Professor X. And then the suited version, I will find a wheelchair here and he'll go with my giant size X-Men or an older version of the team. All of that just to get Chuck in a white shirt. But it's worth it, I think. You can always find cool stuff on eBay. And I was just browsing around one day and came across GPS Lot, which I have that page saved because always has something I need, or well, not need, you know what I mean, need, but not need. So I thought I've ended up with several Bespin Hans and his indoor look is essentially just a jacket over that. So I got a fairly nice soft goods jacket. It's a little bit tight, hard to get in the exact position, but once you do, it kind of completes the look. And before anybody asks, the pointy finger is from the San Diego Comic-Con version. It could be a little bit bigger, wrap around a little bit more, but this will work because I ordered this before the leak lists got out that we may be getting an official version of this from Black Series. So until then, this will be a placeholder and then whatever. But also from GPS Lot, I got this costume for the in-game Hulk. I think this is from when they were trying to do time travel before Stark showed up. He sees this as a win, but I just wanted something to spruce up my Hasbro Build-A-Figure Hulk. He should probably have glasses here, I think, or a different head. And I think this suit is actually made for the SH Figure Arts version because it was tight as hell to get this thing on here. I actually had to pull the arms off the figure, thread the arms into the sleeves, and then force this down the body 
plug in the arms after I put the shirt on. I kind of like the tightness. It, he's Hulk. There's not a lot of Hulk size clothes out there, I'm guessing. So he has to force himself into whatever he can. A lot of people don't care for this head because of the forehead, but I don't know. There's something about it. It's kind of the comic adaptation of the movie look for Hulk. Okay, I realize the last couple of Star Wars movies is a hot button topic and everybody wants to throw their two cents in, but me, I just dig on translucent plastic. And I just like Star Wars overall. I don't like all of it, but I take what I do like and I run with that <laughs> and, and disregard the rest. But this was part of the movie and having any kind of plastic representation of anything from the movies is right up my alley. Plus, like I said, translucent figures. Not the greatest background to use with a translucent blue, but you get the idea. And old J-Jaw Customs always knocks these out of the park. I have several of his force ghosts. I have several of his characters in Carbonite. In fact, on his Instagram page right now, he has a Mandalorian bounty in Carbonite that I'm itching to get because <laughs> here in a minute, we're looking at more Mandalorian stuff, so it all fits together. They're just a solid piece, but it works on the shelf. You have it over here, you put your ray over here, and Everything is okay. Sticking with Star Wars, I received a package from James over at Two Sons Customs and Casting. And at first I thought, well, here, it came in this box, which is the Carbonized Mandalorian. And at first I thought, oh, somebody sent me another Carbonized Mandalorian. But the closer I looked, the more silver I saw. And this is actually their Beskar Mandalorian kit. Putting it beside the regular Mandalorian, this is actually my first version because the helmet's messed up somehow. It's pushed up. It's weird. You can see the silver right off the bat. Some parts are repainted, but it also has a replacement chest piece and then shoulder pads. And sure, it's not chromey silver like the show, but I'm picturing the Mandalorian getting more use out of this armor. It gets dirtier as it progresses. He's going to get it all scuffed and dirty. But another cool thing about this is it's actually magnets holding the shoulder pads on. So even though they look like they get in the way, you would be able to move them around just a little bit, get some more articulation out of it. But that also plays into some of the extras he sent along. Remember this? Is it the mud horn that he got on his shoulder pad? And oh, yep, there it is right there. With the magnets, you just pop this one off and you pop this one on, you have his clan. That's amazing. Look at the emblem just kind of peeking under the cape. That works. Also in the bag were a couple of custom lightsabers. I have an orange blade and a nice silver hilt, a blue blade on another custom hilt, and then the one I was looking for too. Here's a yellow blade and what kind of looks like Ray Saber from the end of the movie. Hmm, that may have broke in transit or something. It doesn't want to stay in there, but that's why they made super glue. Okay, so that works. James also sent along this, <laughs> and this is obviously a custom sculpted and cast it out, baby. Oh, don't say Baby Yoda. It's the child. Look at that. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Yeah! <laughs> I'm so happy right now. Which rolls very unintentionally into a custom cloth cape for Mandalorian. It seems like every play day has items featured from Rebel 10 Customs. Chrissy spoils the hell out of me. And I can't help looking at it because it is just quality product. Have the ragged edge across the bottom has wire running down the sides right here. And you know what? I think my new Beskar Mandalorian is the one to get this cape. In fact, the colors <laughs> are damn close. Because it's cloth, I can get it back and around because I really, really want to show off this shoulder pad right here. So this kind of hangs back like a hood a little bit, but it adds some bulk up top too. She also sent along a soft goods cape for the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Superman. Most of the figures in that line have plastic capes and just plastic capes in general cause balance problems. So getting a softer, lighter cloth cape on here that is wired down the side and across the bottom so you can bunch it up nicely, it just Ooh, makes standing so much easier. Plus, look at that. She's got the little yellow Superman S on the back. I just glued the front here and here so it's not actually tucking down into his costume like it should. But damn it, it's got a little hang right there. It looks beautiful. It adds to the figure. It adds more emphasis to the shininess of the S right here because of the dullness of the cloth. You can just take it and do whatever you want. 
hell, I kind of want to get replacement capes for all my DC figures now. And last but not least, she also sent along a cloth version of Storm's cape. She knows I prefer the black costume, so that's the one she sent, but on her Instagram page, there's also a white version if you want to replace that one. It's wired here, it's wired all the way around the bottom, here, here, and she actually replicated how the original cape, which is this floppy kind of paper substance that didn't look natural hanging there. She replicated how it attached to the torso. You just remove these two pegs, which come off with the shoulder pads. You plug back through, you put the loops around her arms and look, you can put this anywhere you want, flipping out, double up on itself. It's just a better option all the way around. I also ended up swapping the heads out. The original white costume storm had a nicer gray wash to the hair, and I feel like that works better with the darker costume. I just feel it makes for a more elegant looking figure all the way around. Okay, I didn't want to break this out yet because Nada Studios just went all out for the packaging of this. It's a custom Spider Gwen head, and this tin is just, I don't know. It's worth half the price of admission. It even has it labeled on the side of it. Yeah. But this head absolutely nails the Into the Spider-Verse look for Gwen. It's actually a separate neck piece with an adapter socket on top. So if you want to use it somewhere else, you can, but this is actually meant for the amazing Yamaguchi Spider-Gwen. This pops off at the neck. Hate pushing as hard as I have to to get this on here. And I'm gonna push some more and I'm not gonna break it. I am not gonna break it, not gonna break it. There we go, pop. And then that goes on the top and man, it just does something for this figure. Bringing this in, I don't know. It just sets off the whole thing. And yeah, people have their problems with the amazing Yamaguchi figures, the Revel Tech joints. I like this figure a lot more than I did 10 minutes ago. But if you happen to have the Marvel Legends Cuckoos that are currently at Walgreens or not at Walgreens, depending on your Walgreens. I actually saw this on Preternia.com's Instagram where you can take this and you need to put something up in the socket, but you can have schoolgirl go in too. A lot of options here. Look at the hair fade on top of that. Like her hair's been dyed, but the natural roots are showing. And just the fantastic look of the head itself. The shaved part looks like a well, shaved part. And the paintwork just, oh, it's so nice. It's not realistic. It's that comic book cartoon look, but it's just so good. Yep, this is definitely staying right here, I think. <laughs> and then finally, once again, browsing eBay gets me in trouble because I'll just be scrolling and I'll see something and I'm like, oh, I need that. Even though I don't have a lot of attachment to it, I've always liked this design. This came from Old Architect Customs on eBay and it's Mr. Bones. I know this is from between Return of the Jedi and The Force Awakens. Snap, when he was younger, repurposed a battle droid to be his like enforcer or kind of bodyguard type thing. But I've seen drawings, I've seen concept art and this matches what I've seen. There's bones stuck on in places, the shoulders, the shoulders, the top of the head, there's even some damage out of here. And then it's got the flip back hand and the spike even. And then the reds and the blacks for the paint job. Oh, it's got some cutouts right here too. That's cool. But the paint job is subtle. It's not noticeable when you pass by it and then you go, oh wait, there's red and black going on here. It's also another battle droid for the shelf or something to go over with the Force Awakens stuff. That always needs filling out. One red leg, one black leg with red accents. It's just a cool concept all the way around. Again, nice custom, nice addition to the shelf. You can't ask for any more than that. It's the wall. What's he gonna do, karate kick? His big thing is to just to get it out of the way because a lot of people ask me this, the Mafex Marvel Wolverine. People have their problems with them. The blue stripes are a bit distracting visually, but they never really bothered me much. There's some paint slop here and there, but I love the proportions and I love the yellow. I love the metallic blues. And then the articulation, just overall, it's a kick-ass Wolverine figure. But there is the problem of the arm being able to pop off probably easier than it should. And that's because of all the engineering that they put into this part right here. There's actually several layers to all this. The elbow that goes through a bicep sleeve and plugs in. If you take everything off and plug it in like this, there's a distinct pop and then an unmistakable second pop. <laughs> Too fast. Pop pop. And with that, it is tighter than it is with everything on it. It doesn't want to come off as easy. It still comes out, but it is more secure. You know where this is going. This all gets in the way of that peg plugging into that plug inside the shoulder. With everything on it, it's just one pop, so it's looser to pull off. So my simple but not surefire fix for this 
is to shave down the bottom of the shoulder a bit. What you're trying to do is get that peg further into the shoulder. So with it shaved down, you get two pops. The Mafex Venom has this exact same setup and it's not easy to pop out. So besides the system working against itself, Peg also has a bit of a tolerance problem, but that will get you a tighter fit. Like any customizing, whenever you're not sure how much to take off, take a little, plug it in, see if it works. Shave a little more, plug it in, see if it works. Over and over and over. And with as much as I actually took off the shoulder there, I was afraid it was gonna show from under the bicep, but no, it's hidden all the way around. And yes, I've had this how many months? I don't even remember when this came out, but I never did the right shoulder knowing that I would want to eventually shoot this. Now I can do the right shoulder. See how that works. Now here's a simple store-bought mystery machine. We knew that figures were coming for the new Scoob movie, but we weren't sure exactly how big the figures were. And I didn't even know a mystery machine was a thing until I was at Walmart and it was just sitting there on the shelf. It definitely looked bigger in person than the one that came with Fred. I've seen that for years. I never picked it up. But this in the package, and I held a <laughs> Marvel Legends up at Walmart, and I thought, ooh, that's gonna be close. And I'll be damned, it, and I'll be damned if this doesn't actually fit Marvel Legends figures. I wish the door opened. It'd make it a little bit easier to get the characters in. And the leg room is a little bit tight. Hey, Spider-Man, you get over there. But once you get them in there, ah, yeah, it looks fantastic. Of course, it's cartoon. It has these surfboards up on top, some weird soft electronics, but the shape itself and then the colors, the decals, the design, it is so unmistakably Scooby-Doo. It's insane. The tires roll. The back does open and when I first got it out of the, oh hey Punisher. When I first got it out of the box, the doors didn't want to close, but as time, I guess it's settled or something, the doors are a lot easier to snap shut. And here you can see Punisher just standing beside it. It's cartoony, yes. <laughs> it's not gonna make for the most perfect Punisher van if you wanna repaint it, but it's a ding-dang mystery machine <laughs> that you can fit Marvel Legends figures into. That is awesome. And for 20 bucks, you're getting quite a bit of plastic on top of electronics. So yeah, a hell of a deal. Oh, I got me an E-Web for my Star Wars shelf. I've always wanted one of these. I used to love these things back in the day, but I thought, oh, I could try to fudge the three and three quarter inch stuff in, but it won't fit. I'm gonna have to wait till somebody 3D prints one. Along comes Layered Creations. I've gotten several things from him before, including my skiff that's up on the shelf. But when the Mandalorian came along and used one of these things, I, well, it was a couple times, wasn't it? I knew I had to have one. The legs are on a swivel, so you can set them any Anywhere, get them out of the way, bring them down. The gun is up and down and side to side. Rubber hose running out to the box right here. And best of all, it's scaled for six inch. I mean, this is fairly large and imposing and will take a lot of room on my shelf, but I'll be damned, I had to have it. I may have gotten caught up in all the Empire Strikes Back anniversary hype. Either way, it's more toys for my toys. <laughs> it's always a good thing. When the Marvel Legends Spider-Ham came out with uh, the port grind head, I wasn't sure who Port Grind was. I always knew of Spider-Ham, but I hadn't read anything dedicated directly to the character. So I was intrigued. I put the Port Grind head right onto the regular Venom, and it was okay. I mean, Spider-Ham's a little pig. I thought of Port Grind as a bigger pig, but the human body kind of, I don't know, it never worked for me. So when I started seeing pictures of people taking the Port Grind head and putting it on the Disney Store toy box Venom, I knew I had to do it. The proportions are way more cartoony, which I think fit the overall aesthetic of Spider-Ham. Top heavy, muscular, little spindly legs, have three toes, three fingers, which, well, three fingers and a thumb. But to me, that always denotes, you know, cartoon. The figure originally came with a standard Venom head and then a head that was opening up to show Brock's face. And what I essentially did was grind that down, port grind, uh, until it formed a socket kinda that I could glue the port grind head into. You can still see the hole underneath where it plugged onto the Marvel Legends figure, but this is never coming off. This is now my port grind. Don't know why I did that. I just hit it with a coat of glossy black paint. That matches close enough for me. This is on the shelf. This is good. It's got this awesome attachment thing down the arm that actually helps it stand up. It, it balances it. So I can take my spider ham and he looks good with the new port grind. And for Spider-Ham, I haven't finished this yet. It's the Marvel Legends head on a Nindoroid body. This needs some black lines to match the body. Knees! Like I always say with the McFarlane My Hero Academia figures, the bodies are great. They're fun action figures, but there's something missing when it comes to the head. The likeness always seems a little bit off. Uraraka here, I think the cheeks are painted a little low and... 
I don't know. She just has kind of a dead look. Would you like to play? So what I've been doing, and several others, I didn't come up with this idea in the first place, but I hunt down the Ban Presto statues for these characters. And it's only a certain series that matches the scale with the McFarlane figures, but once you find it, oh, it's just so much better. Oh, comparing the two, it's just... <laughs> you can see the difference, right? The new head has some life to it. It's less detailed to the sculpt, but... I, I feel like that matches again to the actual reference. And her hair's a little bit more, whew, it's using her power. Her hair's kind of flowing a bit. Being a statue and not meant to fit actual articulation, you have to get in there with a Dremel or something, drill it out, bore it out, work it until you, it actually fits down on there. Once you do, you <laughs> look completely happy with this now. And while Amazon told me these wouldn't show up in time, I also got one for Kirishima. I wish his eyes wasn't looking off to the side, but at the same time, action pose it looks good and this has arrived so recently that i haven't had time to work the articulation here and then for todoroki here's the band presto here's the mcfarlane i never really had a huge problem with the mcfarlane head but i don't know i feel like this one is much more accurate but i haven't popped it on because i haven't worked the inside of the neck you can see that the hole's there you're supposed to put this on but yeah, it's not fit for articulation. That's for a future play day. We'll show that later. Chrissy over at Rebel 10 Customs, she, she spools the hell out of me. I think she's been in every play day, or at least the majority of play days. And this time around, she sends along, uh, I did, <laughs> look at this, it's a miniature backpack. The stitch work, the implementation of an actual zipper around the top. You can open it up and put stuff in. I mean, look, you can even adjust the straps. And what that is for is for your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man to hide his clothes or his camera or whatever he needs as he's web slinging through the city. With some weight to it, it just hangs naturally. The straps come around. He's got straps hanging down. And this isn't me blowing smoke or, you know, kissing ass or anything. This backpack is damn impressive. If I didn't know any better, it'd be like, hey, did you get some pin particles and shrink this down? Same goes for this jean jacket that I think is supposed to be on Logan, but I wanted to try it on Captain America because he just seems like a jean jacket kind of guy. Perfect world, I would have the unmasked head on here and stuff, but work with me. I've only messed with this for a minute, but I've already got the collar laying down pretty naturally. It needs a little bit of work, but I can fudge that in. But the stitch work and the actual look overall this completely works for Rogers. Hide of fashion. And then she also sent along a wired cape for Darth Vader. And we always need a wired cape for Darth Vader. <laughs> if it's not a rubber cape, it's a hard plastic cape, or I, mean, I don't know. It's usually something wrong with Vader capes. So we're gonna take the Return of the Jedi model kit apart, get the cape off there, thread that onto the hole, pop the helmet back on, and easy peasy, much better. Flexible, you can get it wherever you want. You can hear, you can fling it out. Oh, the wire runs down the front too. That's awesome. It's much more dynamic overall. So if you have a Darth Vader figure, well, okay, now I need an inside kit to get rid of these. But like I was saying, if you have a Darth Vader and you're not happy with how flat it looks, get yourself to Instagram on the Rebel 10 Customs and see if she'll make you a Darth Vader cape. Josh over at Toy Migo sent me a care package a couple of weeks ago. I was on their podcast. In fact, I'm going to be on their podcast tonight. But if you haven't checked it out, head over to their YouTube channel or their Instagram. Go from there. They're awesome to hang out with. I've met them at shows, hung out at San Diego Comic Con. Yeah. But I opened this up and I was like, oh, you son of a bitch. This may be my first Funko Pop that actually goes into the toy room. Peely, look at that. Huh? Eh? That is awesome. I'll take Peely in any form or fashion, and this works perfectly. Banana da da. I actually played Fortnite a couple of weeks ago. One match, me and Thunder won <laughs> by essentially staying out of everybody's way. But I did play as Peely, and I realized, oh, that big noggin sticking up over the top kind of gets in the way from you aiming at stuff. I want to see everything, <laughs> and that doesn't work behind a banana head. But we also have a t-shirt because everybody knows Robo likes t-shirts. Mm -mm -mm. And then the podcast is called They're Not Dolls. So I have, oh, is that an enamel pin? Y'all guys getting fancy. Plus it says enamel pin right there. I'm a dumbass. Oh, a sparkly enamel pin. Ooh, a bigger sparkly enamel pin. Not so sparkly, same design. Some decals. Okay, my G.I. Joe fever 
is getting higher and higher. I, I, I'm spending too much money on eBay. I'm making some customs. It's crazy how far down the rabbit hole I've went with this. There's a lot of people using the Jazzwares Fortnite Havoc as Firefly, and it totally works. You have kind of the basic design of Firefly. Definitely the right colors. I love this gray camo. A little bit cartoony in places, but hey, it'll work for now. What, these don't look like realistic bombs to you? But the thing that bugged me the most was the Havoc face plate. The eyes are a bit cartoony. I mean, you can definitely tell. Oh, yep, that's Fortnite. So what I did on one of them was grind out the skin parts, take the head of the unmasked crossbones from the MCU 2-pack with Captain America, and dremel down the head until I just had that part right there. So it's got that scarred look around the eyes. It's kind of sad, but kind of angry. It added just a slight bit of realism to it. I mean, you can still see the, f the fur around here is not realistic at all. But making him just a little bit meaner looking, it fits in with my G.I. Joes until, uh, what, well, you know Hasbro's going to do a Firefly at some point. He also needs a better gun. To further emphasize how crazy I've gotten with G.I. Joe lately, here's a custom of Outback. And I haven't full-on customized in a while. It probably shows, but but I'm easing back in. My love for these new figures, it's just, oh, I, I got to have more. The head's off eBay from Camaro Dude 1967. I'd seen it before, but that was before the G.I. Joe hype. The torso and shoulders are from Shatterstar. All I did was file off the star on the chest. The arms come from Shang-Chi. They're just plugged right on there. You can see a slight gap, but hey, we're talking about $20 toys. I'm not trying to outdo them in any way. I'm just trying to add to the roster until they you know, make their own, and then I have to throw the customs out. The belt is also from Shatterstar, I think, and then the pants are Killmonger that I painted green where it was brown on the original figure. It's a little bit stripped down. He could use some holsters. He could use a backpack, but my thought process is Outback survivalist. He doesn't need a bunch of stuff. He may need a pack, you know, to put stuff in. I may give him a knife and call him done, but as is, he does stack up nicely with the new classified series. But the reason I'm not upholding him and moving him around, I haven't actually built a new torso joint for him yet, or, you know, put him together or glued the belt on. I still need to do some work. Oh, and then the harnesses came from Forge. I forgot about that. And no, I didn't paint survival there. I got some water slide decals off eBay. 87 spuds. I, I saw he had GI Joe water slides and these are mostly made for the three and three quarter inch figures but it was big enough to fit on the chest i mean it probably could have spanned a little further but then it would have been under the straps and i know that's part of the design sometimes but i didn't want it but i have cobra logos if we get to gung-ho and he doesn't have his chest tattoo i've got that taken care of I have some arashi kagis all kinds of logos oh i even have decepticon with the cobra logo around it you can tell it's a little bit shiny in places right there my dull coat's old i went to spray it and it it didn't want to do anything, so I'm waiting for hobby stores to open back up and I'll hit that. Because it's also the same for the Cobra logo I put on the Articulated Icons White Ninja. Looks good and everything until you hit the light right there. And this was the first water slide I did and I didn't trim around it close enough. You can still see the shiny square. Oh, and here's some goodies from John Walker Customs. I've been eyeballing some of this stuff for a while. I finally pulled the trigger because you know what? We're all stuck at home and I needed stuff to play with. First up, this heavy gun for a clone trooper. I, my God, I love this thing. It has silver dry brushing to show a little bit of wear, especially down here around the muzzles. This is separate pieces somehow, I'm, I believe. I thought this thing was 3D printed, but I don't know. There's some details that I don't think you can get with a 3D printer. I think that's a spring inside the barrel. Right there. The ring in there on the end, on the inside. That's crazy. I have the handle back here with the trigger and then the grip on top. This thing... Ooh, I need a heavy trooper. I got a dark saber. Well, I got one ignited and then one just to hold. Again, I had seen Rebels and I'd seen a little bit of Clone Wars. I knew what the dark saber was, but man, after Mandalorian, I thought, well, I'm going to need one of those for the display. There we go. And at first I thought the grip was really big, but no, it fits right in with Sabine. But you know I'm waiting for a Gideon, right? Yeah. Here's a pauldron set up for a clone trooper. I haven't gone in there and taken apart one of my clone troopers yet, but the detail on this, I'm going <laughs> to... This is definitely going to get used. Here's a scaled up version of the old vintage Boba Fett blaster. It just looked too good, and I needed it because I'm a sucker for both the San Diego and then my custom Kenner Boba Fett that I got a while back. The grip is a little big, but it's gonna work. Get in there. Yeah, okay. That totally makes it right there. Vintage Boba Fett looking awesome. Like I've said several times, Mandalorian hype train. I had to get 
the Baby Yoda in the floating crib from them. I knew we were getting a Black Series version that, you know, standing, a little bit of articulation. We're getting the SH Figure Arts version that is standing. It comes with the crib, but he doesn't lay down in it. But I wanted one that was actually laying down in there. It's just to have options, and it's not a bad thing. It didn't come with a stand, but there's a hole in the bottom already there. I'm using a, a Rebel Tech stand. That fits right on there. I mean, yeah, floaty floaty. But the biggest reason for my order was Salacious on a pillow. We've had Jabba forever, and I have a custom throne that I never painted. It needs some work, but my biggie was not having a Salacious to go with that scene. So when I saw this offered on the website, painted and all, I thought, you know what, to hell with it. I'm just gonna order it, and this will completely work. When it comes to Salacious, I don't need articulation. I would like it, you know? I like all figures with articulation, but as is, if he's just sitting there in front of Jabba, I'm happy. So on Instagram, go look at John Walker Custom, and check out the Razor's Crest six inch scale he's working on. That thing's insane. A couple weeks ago, I got the Gamer vs. Abomination wave. And while I liked the Abomination body, the head was okay, but it wasn't really abomination-y enough for me. Abomination-y. So I popped my Raft Abomination head on there and it was gappy and stuff, wrong color. I liked the look enough to think, oh, it could work. So I got on eBay, looked for a head cast and I came up with this. This is from eBay user Lis Lome or Lis Lom or I, I don't know. And it's a good cast. It just needs some paint to match up with the abomination. But in the package, I got this and I didn't order this, but on the little baggie, it said extra. And I thought, oh, look at that. That is awesome. We'll come back to Abomination in a minute. But that prompted me to order more weapons. Again, G.I. Joe, <laughs> I need more guns. What caught my eye was the details are so nice and crisp and it's a solid piece. It's not flimsy at all. I got this gun. You can just throw some silver on it or something and spruce it up a bit. I got this one. I got a couple of these because that's just awesome. You know, they look great. And then another thing that caught my eye was this Uzi, of course. The handle is noticeably short here, but once you actually get it in hand, it's not noticeable. Nobody but you is going to know that his grip goes down that far. In most poses, you're not even going to be able to tell. And just as a size comparison, here's the one that comes with the deluxe edition. Here's the one that I got off eBay. A little bit larger, but definitely usable, especially if you have snake eyes and you don't have an Uzi. And then with that order, I got an extra of whatever this big honking gun is. It's noticeably larger and <laughs> beefy and just badass looking. I noticed a little bit of flash right here, but that is easy enough to clean off. But coming back around to that build a figure gamer versus abomination, here's the head that was included. He's got a little bit of ear fin, but I think that's my most recognizable body thing <laughs> when it comes to abomination. I want those big fin wings on the side of his head. Plus, he looks angry, but at the same time, he looks bored angry. Oh, here I'm gonna be. And like I mentioned, I tried the Marvel Legends raft head, but it wasn't until somebody posted a picture of the Marvel Select head popped on there that I thought, oh, yup. That's my new abomination. It just looks so good. I mean, the colors don't match exactly, but they're close enough that it's not really noticeable unless you're just really looking for it. I had to put a little filler into the hole in the head to get the neck ball to be a little bit tighter so to hold position. And if you look just right, you can see some gap, but from most poses, you're not gonna see it. I think it makes him look badass. This is now my comic book version of Abomination. Sure, he has ripped pants and we're used to seeing him in just shorty shorts in the comics, but mm, 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 mm. this is big, this is articulated, it's bulky, it, it's my new Abomination. And I won't really miss the head on the select one because most of the time he was just standing there like that. Not very dynamic. This thing right here, this is way more dynamic with a face that only a mother could love. At this point, everybody who does this kind of thing knows GPS lot on eBay. And I never had a problem with the look of the Shang-Chi that Marvel Legends gave us. But when I saw this on eBay, I thought, oh, well, gotta get it. It's still Shang-Chi underneath. So his pants are hanging down to right here. And I'm eventually gonna get these to come up and around. They're a little bit tight right now. I need to do some fiddling. But even like this, all the articulation is retained. It's just a cloth suit over the bare body. And this is more reminiscent of how I remember Shang-Chi. Belt is an elastic band and a complete pain in the ass to tie. And it's probably not correct for how you're supposed to tie these kind of belts. But for now, ooh, yeah. <laughs> I should probably replace the headband with cloth too, but 
I like how it twists and twirls out. Shang Chi's about to kick your ass. And then finally, a couple of packages from Loose Collector. If you've been in the customizing game for any amount of time, you know Loose Collector has been around for years and kills it when it comes to customizing. He had a Megan from Excalibur a couple of weeks ago. That thing was beautiful. This time around, I grabbed some downed Archangel wings. With the original figure, it came with the big flying out, but sometimes you just want Warren standing on the shelf, hanging out with everybody else. Very nice sculpt, and I love the silver look to this. Should plug right into the back. Oh, yeah. I mean, that just sets it off. That is beautiful. It doesn't stick away from the body. It doesn't look like a separate piece. It looks like it was originally meant for this character, for this body, for this figure. Yeah, I love Archangel, and I have several, and I've shown another set of downed wings like this in a previous play day. But now I have another one for another Archangel for another shelf. But I also grabbed this because, oh, what a crazy concept. If you're not familiar with The Wall, he's an old Spider-Man villain. He didn't make it too far, okay? He didn't reach popularity heights like Green Goblin or Hobgoblin or Sandman. The Wall isn't going to have any movies made about him. But it was such a wacky thing that when this popped up in Loose Collector's eBay store, I thought, I, I have to have it. The sculpt work is amazing. You can see the cracks and just seams in the bricks. The legs, baggy pants look, kind of a boot with semi laces on the front. The head, nice and angry, which I'd be angry too if I was just a wall. But most of all, the paintwork, the colors of everything, the shading is fantastic. And unlike me, he actually does the back of customs. Unfortunately, there is no articulation. It's a cast piece. He just takes it, it paints it, sells it. But I don't even care. It's the wall. What's he going to do? Karate kick? His big thing is to just... Much like Loose Collector's Video Man, it's just one of those things that <laughs> it catches people's eye when it's standing on the shelf behind characters. They're like, oh, Spider-Man, Prowler, here's some other characters, Mary Jane. Who the hell's that? And who the hell's that? Those are awesome. What are you doing? Nothing. Guess what day it is? Uh, uh, Wednesday the 8th. <laughs> no, it's Play Day. Play day. Yeah. Is that exciting? Uh, yeah. What are we playing? <laughs> <laughs> We're playing with toys. First up, a simple little head swap. I am a huge Matt Hardy fan from all the way back in the 90s. So when Mattel put out Awoken Matt Hardy, I had to grab it. But the original head looked like this. And I was going to be content and just live with it. But somebody hit me up and said, hey, the basics have a much better head. So if you swap, you get the elite body better head. I don't know what I'm doing here. This is kind of, yeah. And this is all of the, yes. But Mattel being Mattel, you have to heat them up and pop them off. And this will do me until uh, Jazzwares gets their AEW version out. Lots of people working on their GI Joes, trying to make them more classic. And I found this shirt on eBay. And for the life of me, I cannot remember the name. Hopefully by the time this video goes up, I'll have it right here. But it was just this tan color. And then I came in with a green Sharpie and drew in the camouflage pattern. You can see where I tested different colors against it. It's a little bit small. It likes to ride up, show some belly. So sometime I'll have to get in there and like attach it or secure it somehow right there. But it just gives Block a more classic look. Now I'm hunting down some kind of straps to go up over his shoulder, some kind of belt. Maybe if I get a thick belt, it'll hide the belly showing. And in a future play day, I'll come back and paint the armor up. I've seen people doing this and it looks fantastic knocking out that gold. But I also like how Roadblock comes, so I had to get another keep the vest on him for a version 2 Roadblock, but I wanted to change the head up a bit. And this is the Mezco 112 Collective Green Lantern John Stewart. Skin tones are slightly off, but in regular light, out on the shelf, it's not as apparent. And yes, the eyes are a deep piercing green, but it ties it into the vest, I think. I may need to drop it just a tad bit more. Yeah, this works for me. And it differentiates the two roadblocks. Not to stop at just the shirt, I had to go in and get Roadblock a more classic looking gun. This is the Rambo series 50 caliber machine gun surefire ground support. And make sure it says that because there's two versions of the 50 cal. This one comes with the base and the handles and that's the important part. The other version of this doesn't have these handles on the back. This is from 1986, but I was able to find this on eBay fairly easy. But I've also seen a lot of other people doing this and it may be harder to get as time goes on. Still need to do some kind of modifying to hold. Well, I don't know. Maybe I can get his hand up around that barrel. Well, I'll be damned. It does go around the barrel. 
definitely gives it that old school flavor. But I do have the little Armory 50 cal that I haven't built yet. That's for a future play day. <laughs> There's so much stuff to look at. The hunt is still on for a good stand-in timber to go with your snake eyes, and this is my latest acquisition. This is the Papo Polar Wolf, and I picked it up fairly cheap on Amazon. It's less work than a lot of the other wolves I've seen. Most of them are like a, a grayish color. You have to throw some paint on it, or the eyes look a bit silly. This, the shading is not bad, and it looks like a polar wolf. Fairly unintimidating in the pose. Definitely not ferocious, but just standing there, I don't know. It it's, has that same calm demeanor that I think of Snake Eyes having. Not the biggest wolf you can get. I feel like it should be slightly bigger. But again, I'm not going for rip your face off timber. I'm going for quiet companion timber. Of course, this may be more realistic to how a wolf would look next to a dude. I, I want slightly bigger, but this will work for now. I didn't go in on the Mezco Captain Marvel, but I did have quite a few Marvel Legends Captain Marvels. So I got on eBay grabbed one of the Mezco heads and it popped right onto the Marvel Legends body. And I did that because it looks better than what Marvel Legends gave us. Sure, not the most exciting head sculpt, but way more accurate, more realistic. I love the curls to the hair. It doesn't sit down as low as I'd like it to. It needs to go down just slightly more so the hair is resting on the shoulders. But she's a soldier, no nonsense, get it done. I, I'm okay with this. But that reminded me of this. I may have shown this swap in my review of the Mezco 112 Collective Netflix Daredevil, but again, the Mezco heads pop right onto the Marvel Legends neck balls. And I feel like this has a little more personality to it than the original head on this body. It matches right up and it looks fantastic. It definitely spruces the figure up if you're looking for some kind of alternate head for your Daredevil. I can't speak to the accuracy to the show, but at the same time, in my head, this is Netflix Daredevil. I did a full review on the Plunderlings Fwush the other day, and in that same package was the Plunderlings Fawn. Now this didn't actually fund during the Kickstarter, but they went ahead and made it anyway because it's such an awesome design. It's just a fun damn figure. I mean, this is one of the factory test shots. It's obviously not painted yet, but just messing around with this, I need more plunderlings. They are so fun to just mess around with. The fawn has hooves, unlike the rest of the plunderlings that have big old feet. It makes it slightly more hard to stand up, but at the same time, it's flat, it's round, it's not a huge deal. You mess around with it for a second and you're good to go. On top of that, the head has a lot of differences too, like the earrings in the ear, the horns coming up. It just adds something different to the plunderling design. And there ain't nothing wrong with that because, oh my, I could mess with this all day. So much personality, so mischievous. They're gonna be all over my shelves. Like I said, these didn't get funded during the Kickstarter, but they are making them, but they should have them up for sale once they get the full run made and, you know, to the warehouses ready to ship. I'm always on the hunt for easy, durable dioramas, something I can just throw into the booth, take pictures, throw it back out. And a lot of times that's hard to do without getting too elaborate with it. But these 12 world structures, where it's just a piece of a building or some kind of flooring or something, they're right up my alley. This is the TW1921 and I picked this up on Empire Toy Shop. And basically it's just a piece of polystone or, or shit, I don't know materials. It's hollow, so it's not polystone. I don't know what this is made of. When I first pick it up, I think, oh, that's gonna be heavy and it's not bad at all, but the detail, Oh man, you think every little rock is a separate piece down here. And then the stonework coming up to a facade that's just battle torn and then you can see the rocks underneath. Slight stairway over here for, you know, whatever you wanna do. And then you turn it around, there's still more of that detail. It's, it's just reversed, but you have a smaller type inside room if you wanna use that side. And even the roof is a platform flat spot where you can stand figures up on top. Yeah, you'll have to put something behind it or take your shot to where it doesn't show quite everything. I just wanted something that I can throw in here, take some quick pictures, get it out. And this gives me all kinds of angles. You just turn it and it's something different. Of course, these stairs don't go anywhere, so <laughs> maybe not this side, but this side and this side and even on top. Love the texture. You guys know me. I am always in the mood to spruce up some Star Wars figures, so I keep a running search on eBay for custom heads. And with Rogue One figures, I'm to the point where I think Hasbro's not gonna come back and redo these guys. So I am slowly but surely making my way through that cast. This is a painted head cast from Camaro Dude 1967 on eBay. It's actually the Hasbro sculpt, which with this paint job, the factory paint job, and ooh, not good. But you throw on some nice skin tones, some shading, some paint, yeah it spruces it up a lot. This makes me completely happy. I'm not gonna stand at the next, well, 
Comic Cons are ever a thing again. Standing there going, hey, can you redo all the Rogue One guys? Now I can focus all my attention on going, hey, can you make us a Bodhi Rook? please but now i need to get the chariot you guys know daredevil 19 he does reviews here on youtube and he also makes a lot of custom capes so i had to grab a batman cape because while mezco does a great job with their capes and how they drape and how they fold I like something with a bit more character. So I hit up Daredevil and he had this amazingly awesome wired cape. I mean, that's just me messing around here without even looking. I'm looking at the camera. I'm not even looking at the figure and nailed it. On the two outside edges, it's nice heavy wire. On the two inside uh, pleats, is there two? No, there's four in the middle. He uses a lighter wire that doesn't get in the way because if you use the heavy wire on the whole thing, it'd be harder to manipulate around. The heavier one on the outside does its job of holding the weight, and then you can bring in and do subtle little things with the inside ones. I just wanted something to spruce up this Batman because I love this look with the gray and the black, and now I have an awesome looking cape for it. Don't get me wrong, I like a big fluffy sticking out cape, maybe coming over the shoulders, but sometimes I want it to lay flat on the back, not break the silhouette, and then drape out at the bottom. But I had originally hit up Daredevil to get a new cape for my SH Figuarts Mandalorian. This is the original cape, just flat and lifeless and can't do anything with it. Looks like a Lego cape hanging off the back of a $70 action figure. And I had already gotten one of these before for one of my Black Series Mandalorians, and it's the same thing, just nice heavy wire. You can put it where you want to. It looks like a cape, it flows down, it's just fantastic looking. Now on the SH figure arts, you have to pry up the chest armor a bit, take the old cape off, and what I did here was keep it pried out, put the new cape on, and then squeezed it shut. Well, I say shut, it just pinches it between and it keeps the cape on. So the Batman cape, the Mandalorian cape, hit up uh, DD19 Customs on Instagram. But you'll notice something else different here new head. John Walker Customs came out with a new size Mandalorian head. Here's the original helmet on the figure and you can see the size difference. Some people say that Mando's helmet is more skin tight than Boba Fett's and Jango's and it's supposed to be smaller and I'm okay with that. Enjoy your toys. <laughs> but for me, it didn't look right. And even with the new proportional looking helmet, it's still smaller than the Mafex Boba Fett helmet. Whereas the bodies are the same size, except for the shitty way they did the gun mount on the back and the holster on the hip. This fixes most of the things I do not like about the SH Figure Arts Mandalorian. I mean, look at that. <laughs> That's crazy. This, oh yeah. But if you do decide to order a new head from John Walker Customs, make sure to order the small DJ helmet. The small DJ helmet is more suited for the SH Figure Arts figure. But also from John Walker Customs, here is the Star Wars 1313 Boba Fett. I didn't know I needed this until I saw it. Star Wars 1313 was a game that was in development, I guess, and then didn't come out. And this was Boba Fett's design in the game. He made this out of the Star Wars model kit and you can see <laughs> that he added some different things to it. First up, holy moly, the chrome look to the helmet. It's so deep and rich and that carries down to the knee pads too. It's a new belt with a sash underneath down at the legs. It's wrapped in this material and it's not just loose material. Somehow it's glued on there as a texture. He's got a cloth cape instead of the plastic one and then that gun strapped to his back which is you know you could never have enough weapons. But then just the paint job on top of that with the weathering and the colors. Oh man the helmet's almost pristine, but then there's wear to the chest armor and the gauntlets and the shoulder pads. I love the look of this thing, and I hadn't ever paid attention to 1313 Boba Fett before. This is amazing looking. And he sent extra hands and stuff, but even the pose. This is how I pulled it out of the box. It was like, oh, and this is how it'll stay. Goes on the shelf and just looks like a badass. <laughs> Get in frame. Here's one of those things where I went to the post office not expecting to see anything in the P.O. box, and this was in there. This is from Junior Mogul Toys. It's essentially a little baby Yoda, I mean the child. They sculpted in wax and then cast out in plastic. And the paint job on top of it, the green is so translucent looking like it's skin. I love the detail sculpt work. There's some weathering to it, the brown on the robes. It's just a neat little thing, and I mean little. I actually lost this a couple times while planning this. It's been a while since the last play day. I get a stack of stuff and then I think, oh, mm -hmm. 
Way to go. And it is smaller than the Hasbro Black series Baby Yoda. Still looks good next to Mando, so no complaints here. It looks fantastic. Now I'm a huge fan of Casting Cave and I hit that side up every other day to see what new stuff pops up. I especially love the pre-painted stuff because <laughs> I've become a lazy bastard in my old age. And when I saw this pop up, I thought, oh, I need a more classic Hawkeye head for my Marvel Legends Hawkeye. I like how the sheen of the purple matches the, well, this is not supposed to be a robot arm, but <laughs> they reuse this arm for Bucky. It's more supposed to be an arm guard for the bow. That, along with some of the other details on here, it's not a perfectly West Coast Avengers type Hawkeye. This is the classic flavor I've been looking for in a Clint Barton. I mean, during those West Coast Avengers days, he was such a cocky guy, always at odds with Captain America and I, I feel like this brings it across. Speaking of cocky though, while I was on Casting Cave, I noticed he had a new smirky Han Solo head. This is the SH Figure Arts body and man, it looks so good. I love the head that I have had from Casting Cave for a while, but this is just, I don't know, it's just a different look. I, and I changed it up a bit. I'm gonna display this one with the pilot gloves. This one's more out in the woods, Han. In fact, that kind of looks like Battlefront 2, doesn't it, PlayStation? Hmm. Either way, you can never have too many Hans, or at least Han options, right? I mean, yeah. And then finally, I grabbed this from R2K Troopers on Instagram. I've gotten a couple of things from him before and I've always been happy, but this, Holy shit, this thing. It's getting insane what you can do with a 3D printer. He sells this as a kit. It comes in several different pieces and it doesn't come with the floaty piece on bottom. That's actually from the Hasbro Black Series Land Speeder. And when he first mentioned that, I thought, but I need my Land Speeder floating. But then I got this in the mail and I was like, screw that Land Speeder. This needs to float and go in the display. These side pieces are actually attached to the rod going through to hold the gun in place. So they rotate independently of the cannon. It's slightly loose, but at the same time, I'm gonna have somebody on the back here as this floats along. He did the paint job on this for me and it's so subtle, but so beautiful. There's some browns, there's some, maybe some rust, some dirt right here where it's caked a bit more heavy because, but the gray overspray just does so much to bring out the details. I mean, look at the holes and the barrels. The barrels are all individual tubes, not one big chunk of plastic or resin or whatever this does. You can go side to side with it. And then of course, up and down. <laughs> and look at that. There's the Star Wars Black Series Mando on the back. It's a bit awkward to get him to hang and I'm afraid to get too crazy with these printed handles sticking off the back. I'm sure if I put the SH Figure Arts where it has more pose to it, I can get him a bit more up, but man, yeah, he's gonna terrorize the shelf with this thing. 911, what's your emergency? Uh, yeah, do you know what a uh, day it is? Sir, this line is for emergencies only. It's play day. What do you mean, play day? It's play day, you know? First up, just a couple of G.I. Joe classified series figures, but <laughs> because they're essentially the same figures we've already looked at with some new parts here and there, they go in a play day. Although there is some new parts like the money and the sunglasses, oddly enough, they both come with some kind of glasses. And then this crazy cape for Destro. Of course, this was a design from later in the original G.I. Joe series where they just threw some animal print and some different colors on them. And this isn't bad. Why is the belt riding so high? There we go. But it's also not necessary. If you don't like this redesign, you don't need it for the line because there's a standard Destro who is very classic inspired. So hey, choices. Options, not a bad thing. Same case with the readout. I like this screen looking thing, Red Cobra logo. People can't decide if this is money or C4. I said it was money in the first one. People said it was explosives, but then this time around we get money. So who knows? And I like the look of that. I mean, yeah, it's a bit stylized. The flames are cartoony, but uh, this line, <laughs> that's what it's about. And then the sunglasses, very 90s. It sits on the nose, it sits on the ears like a real pair of sunglasses, but they're not attached. They don't snap on or anything. They just kind of sit, so be careful with that. And then how does the cape fit on? Does the collar help it stay? Yeah, it's kind of a wedge on there. It goes under a little bit, but that's not coming off too easy. But I love the crazy design, the paws coming up and over with the fur on the back. If you're a early 80s purist, you're gonna hate this thing, but I don't know, there's a wackiness to it. But for Roadblock, same body, same sculpt, just toned down a whole lot from that first Roadblock figure. The shirt's just painted on with the star in here, but the biggest change, of course, 
you add a magnificent beard to anything, you're gonna get an awesome action figure. And that's what we have here. I mean, it changes the look so drastically from the first roadblock. So much so that I think some people use the Cobra Island roadblock as heavy duty. It does make the head seem a little bit bigger, almost better proportioned to this body. But I've also seen people taking the vest and head from this roadblock, putting it over here because of the toned down colors. That it's just black at the boots instead of this gold armor. So yeah, definitely like this. Oh, and you get this add-on arm piece too. I didn't see that. Same could be said for the gun. It's still that sci-fi railgun look, but it's big and heavy. There's sunglasses here too. Looks like they're supposed to stay on there because there is actually holes and a ridge sculpted into the head for it. Just slide those on. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That looks great. I may need another one of these for, you know, no glasses, glasses, do some part swapping, whatever. Keeping with G.I. Joe for a bit longer, and there's a few things after this too, but I just put my Baroness review up earlier this week, and I had seen some people doing this head swap. I thought I'd throw it in here too. You have the Baroness head, you have the Marvel Legends Agent Carter, the head pops off there, and the Baroness head actually fits. If you push too far, it pops down, makes it look like she doesn't have a neck, so you want to have it just floating a bit. And even though this figure is shorter than the Baroness figure, it makes a pretty good stand-in for Major Hooper from the Mass Device arc. And in another case of, did they do that on purpose? The Reaver head that comes with the Marvel Legends Skullbuster, if you take Gung Ho and pop that head off, I said pop off, there you go. You have to push hard, but once you get it on there, uh, that's a pretty easy X-Men villain just waiting. May have to do some paint or throw on another vest or something just to change the look up a bit, but that's a good body for that head. I'm also still using the uh, McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Grim Knight grenade launcher with Gung Ho. It just works. It fits. Another thing I've seen a lot of people doing online is taking the McFarlane Toys, uh, what's it called? Raw 10 Battle Snake and... I don't know, using it as a cobra weapon. It's rubbery and moves around, but for the most part, it just kind of stands there, which is not a bad thing. You have Destro coming up with this robotic snake to sell to Cobra Commander because he knows that Cobra Commander will buy anything snake themed. Yeah, it's not part of canon or anything, but it works. It's the same organization that sent little furry things to G.I. Joe and G.I. Joe was dumb enough to go, oh, hey, look, little furry things. And Cobra Commander even signed the card. So this is not outside the realm of possibilities when it comes to Cobra. And then I've seen people putting paint jobs on this that make it even more crazy looking. It's play day. You can do whatever you want. Jazzwares showed off these Fortnite Legendary Series loadout packs back at Toy Fair, but then they've only popped up in Europe. I think it's only Europe and now Canada because these were sent to me by Gord Phillips. He goes by Papa Gord here on YouTube and he actually found these on clearance and said, hey, <laughs> would you like these? I'm like, yeah, I, I kind of like Fortnite action figures and weapons. I can't remember if Jazzwares has said if these are even coming to the US. I'm not sure, but I had to get my hands on them. I mean, <laughs> anything to bulk up my action figures. Here's another possible weapon for Roadblock. Oh, and that turns. There's a cartoony look to them, of course. It's Fortnite, but I don't know, background characters, this may work. Or hell, just giving my Fortnite figures newer weapons. Is that actually where, oh, it's spring-loaded. You're not gonna put any eyes out with that, but I think that's the point. And now I have a machine gun, motherfucker. What else we got? This actually moves on the flintlock. Oh, you pull the actual trigger. Got an actual nylon cord on it. I was gonna say, oh, unexpected spring action, but you can actually see the spring through the translucent blue plastic right there. Boop. And then for the wacky double barrel shotgun, that actually breaks down so you can load it, I guess. So thank you, Gord. These will definitely be used at some point. The Star Wars Black Series Mandalorian, the child or baby Yoda or whatever you wanna call it, has been seeing better distribution over the past couple of months. And when I first saw it, I thought, oh, I already have it, don't need it. But then people started talking and I realized there's actually a running change here. They added more paint apps to the figure, like around the collar. It's not a huge deal. It's just enough to throw some contrast in there to make you think, oh, well, I got a bot, I guess. Such a cute little package too. You can see the collar and the cuffs down on the sleeves just have a bit of lighter color to them. Slightly more accurate and it makes it feel a bit more natural. <laughs> Also at retail right now is Star Wars Mission Fleet, and they're kind of small, stylized figures, and sometimes you can get these sets that come with the speeder, 
and here's the pram baby yoda mandalorian and i'm not into these figures but look at the size of baby yoda there huh look at that the height is about the same but the proportions are slightly larger plus it's in a more dynamic pose holding that gear shift knob oh there's head movement here it's a ball joint down at the bottom of a peg even better it comes with this floating crib there's a moving piece right here but it only comes to there and just gives them a little shade it doesn't close up clear stand pops in the bottom that actually works what's the black series one look like that'll work in a pinch very short clear stand though if you want it to be higher for you know black series use the peg on that well, it doesn't really fit but if you do manage to get it on a stand it, that's just very loose on there the scale hey, it does work with black series <laughs> That's about right size. And with that, we get to a custom cape from Rebel 10 Customs. If you've ever watched a play day, 99% of the time, Christy has sent something in for me to look at and she, she spoils me. When I reviewed the new Beskar Armor Mandalorian, I said I had to get a cloth cape and boom, here it is. Now I'm not sure if he wears the jetpack under the cape in the new season, but the color here and the length, that everything seems to fit with some of the pictures I've seen from Disney. And it may stick out a bit because it's going over the jetpack, but because of the wire in the edge here that she's put, that is very, very poseable. I'm able to go up and over, make it lay down and kind of snug to the jetpack. And I even have this side kind of twisting itself around the thruster down here. Just a dynamic look and it helps hide the jetpack. Maybe it's a secret thing where he throws the cape back and suddenly... <laughs> Either way, this is 150 times better than the hard plastic shell cape that came with this figure. This is so much better. She also sent me a Moon Knight cape that's heavy and it drapes and it's, well, it's moon looking, you know? Very nice heavy wire here. You can put this anywhere you want. I may go back to the figure and cut the collar piece off and put it down over this to get that Moon Knight look where it's bunched up around his neck but otherwise this fits right in and then she also sent along a new spawn cape at this point i have a couple of these one with the battle axe one with the sword so i did not mind at all getting an actual poseable cape to put on spawn to get on the shelf there's a nice tattered look to it i'm not sure about the shininess but the more i leave it on here the more i like it i love a good nicely done wired cape i'm finding wires i didn't know were there there seems to be another one running right here it doesn't hold the weight of it up or anything that's what the outside ones are for but it makes it a bit more dynamic it doesn't just lay there she even has skulls embedded right there with the chain running across rebel 10 customs on instagram if you want some cloth capes for your action figures i have never been disappointed i've also featured a few things from layered creations and when i saw he had a cobra commander snake throne I had to jump on it. This is actually in several different pieces and I need to go in and sand some of the lines down. I've kind of done it here on the outside, but get in here, knock some of that down just to make it feel a bit more natural. But after just one coat of gold, I, <laughs> I love how Cobra Commander is so snake crazy. And now I need some kind of thrown room for Cobra Commander because you know it's going to be snakes here, snakes here, and snakes here, snakes all over the place. Snakes! Okay, here's kind of an oddball because I don't know who made this. I don't know where it came from. I just found an eBay auction one day that had this and a bunch of other stuff for a damn good price, so I had to grab it. And I didn't quite know what to expect, but once I got it in hand, this thing, oh man, okay, I do have this right here. I need to get inside of it, put some glue down or get that seated like it's supposed to. It's kind of floating inside, but the rest of them are solid. I mean, there's even a vent in the middle. I don't know if that's accurate or not, but it's a kick-ass detail because this is actually hollow. I have no clue how this was made. There's this soft rubbery blanket over the edge right here, and then the pillows are all separate pieces that I can put anywhere. They're almost foam. <laughs> if I didn't know any better, it'd be like, oh, those are real tiny pillows. But the deal also included the uh, San Diego Comic-Con version of Jabba along with the uh, hookah thing over here and even salacious crumb that can sit perfectly on one of these pillows. I've had a couple of thrones that were 3D printed and I never got around to painting because I'm lazy ass. and <laughs> I seem to never have time for that anymore. But now I have a centerpiece for my Return of the Jedi shelf. And speaking of other paint jobs that I haven't finished yet, here is a head sculpt that I got off eBay from Watto's Scrapyard. Now this is actually supposed to be the Alpha Trawler from the first episode of The Mandalorian, but as soon as I saw the head unpainted, I thought, well, 
I'm going to have to do that, right? I've done all the basics here, the gray in the beard, the eyes, the eyebrows, but I need to come back in, do some detail work, do some shading, uh, just to kind of make it a bit more realistic. It looks plasticky right now. And I'm getting old and blonde. My ability to paint things this small is getting worse and worse every day. But up on a shelf in a group of other Jedi or in a Tatooine scene, something, uh, this will work. I can pick it out and go, hey, there's a Robo One Kenobi. Here's something I didn't expect to find in the PL box. It just showed up. I opened this and man, I love some good laser engraving. This is Z3D Forge on, well, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. And this is actually cut into this piece of cardboard. But even after reading that, I had no idea what to expect. But look at the presentation on this thing. There's a couple of stands here for Marvel Legends X-Men type figures. And then I just some rock, some concrete, and then I'm going to say that's some kind of Star Wars. In the note, he says each of these pegs are slightly different. So if it's a problem fitting an action figure on, you just try a different one. But this is amazing. Not just the presentation. I will probably keep this box forever. But the stands themselves, too, they're nicely designed and they don't take up a lot of real estate on a shelf. You put the figure on them and it's not much wider than the figure itself. A little tight, wants to pop off just slightly. Let's try the other one. Oh yeah, okay, <laughs> that works. <laughs> I love these things. I'm gonna have to find a special place for these, but like I said, Z3D Forge on all the socials. Zach Lewis on Facebook hit me up one day asking if I would like to look at his painted 3D prints and I was, yeah always. So he sent along a care package of a ton of stuff. Here's a nano gauntlet with the fingers splayed out. This one's also dirtier and grungier. Maybe this one is after it was used because there's also one snapping. And just to compare, here is the one that came with the Build-A-Figure Hulk. So it's slightly smaller, but I don't know, there's something to the look of this. Because there's also hands without the bottom part. So maybe this is meant to go with the Marvel Legends part where you snap this onto the hand and use the top part from the actual Hasbro one. There's also one in a fist and just look at the paintwork. This is crazy with the gold and the colors to the infinity gems. It's just awesome. There's one showing uh, displeasure and there's also another one of those with a, the darker color scheme. <laughs> maybe it worked, maybe it didn't. He even sent one that he calls the holographic nano gauntlet. It's just cast or printed in transparent blue plastic. He sent along Thanos' sword. It's in two parts. I don't think we saw it like this in the movie, but seeing it like this, it's almost I'd almost take them as more of a threat if he was dual wielding some big ass swords. But these also fit together nice snug and that's not coming apart that will go with one of my thanos figures here's a little meek that he printed and painted i can't get over this thing it looks beautiful he did tony's chest box from infinity war in game was it infinity War? it was one or the other but that's cast in blue and then he painted the silver on the front nice and tiny <laughs> it's in scale with marvel legends same goes for the uh what is this beskar cubes from the mandalorian i mean it even has the imperial logo up here with the wavy lines this is the way he sent along a couple of dark sabers one with the white energy look to it one just black i believe this sword is from doom just look at the detail on this both the print and the paint i guess it's all translucent red material and then he painted on top of it it's just crazy how this writing or whatever this is kind of fades into the end of it and then finally look at this a tiny 1 12th scale youtube plaque for a hundred thousand subscribers <laughs> You're gonna make me cry. Back to G.I. Joe, Adam Bradley Freeman sent me a uh, 3D printed Cobra Commander head that is much more classic inspired. You can find more on his Shapeway store. Uh, yeah, it's the light blue and it might match or at least be closer to the, the Regal Cobra Commander that's coming from Hasbro Pulse, but it definitely has that 80s vibe and it looks like a head under the helmet, the one mask and then the helmet on top of that. I think he's doing a gung-ho cover at the moment too that's up on eBay. But while I have a headless Cobra Commander in my hands, Shane Rana also sent over a care package and it had a Cobra Commander head in it too. I've seen this sculpt in pictures before, but actually having it in hand, I, yes, again, the colors don't quite match Cobra Commanders, but with a paint job, I, I like how crazy dynamic that is hanging down. But Shane did a fantastic job of painting in, well, it's actually raised edges for the Cobra logo here. But again, it's nicely painted, the eyes punched in. Uh, yeah, I may have to 
do some blue matching because he also sent a lighter blue version that again may match that regal cobra commander from hasbro pulse but he didn't stop there he also sent along a head from casting cave that he himself painted up and I like how that matches the factory skin tone of the Black Series figure here. Obi-Wan has that worn out look to him. And then there's also this Darth Maul head that has kind of a sneer to it. I'm not sure where this head actually came from, but it is a cast. It is one Shane painted and mm, I like the darker red here. I was okay with the archive edition of the Black Series figure where it's photo reeled in the eyes, but mm, this may go in the tub and Darth Maul's gonna have a smile on his face. I think it was last play day that I showed this Baze Malbus head sculpt I got off eBay from Camaro Dude 1967 and it just does so much for this figure. And since this made me so much happier, you know what I had to do, right? I had to do it. Here's his repainted Chirrut. Again, it's such a fantastic job. The problem here though, unlike Baze where it covers up the neck for the most part, you can see Chirrut's neck just poking out with that terrible, terrible Black Series skin tone that they used on this figure. So I'll have to come in, kind of match that up eventually. Same thing goes for Jen. A paint job does so much to the stock Black Series head sculpt but again, the skin tones, well, that doesn't really matter down there, but the neck really stands out now. Director Krennic looking so much better. I mean, the shade work, the detail paint. I've always been okay with these bodies. It's always been the heads for the Rogue One crew. His neck isn't as noticeable, but if I'm already doing two other figures, I might as well do this one too. Or make it four figures because I had to get Cassian. Might as well finish out the crew. These figures were to the back of a display up on the shelf, up in the shadow. But with new heads, with new paint jobs, I'm gonna have to find a new shelf for Rogue One, <laughs> a little bit more prominent. And then we'll finish off today with some casting cave head casts and paint jobs because man, Corey does some good work. When it comes to the Hasbro Build-A-Figure Apocalypse, I never cared for the clenched teeth look. I always think of Apocalypse as cool, calm, and collected, so when I saw this pop up on Casting Cave, I had to grab this head. I'm pretty sure this is a shrunk down Toy Biz Build-A-Figure Apocalypse, but I don't even mind. I, look at that. That looks amazing. Look how the eyes kind of pop out with the light. And now I'd need to finish building this apocalypse. These legs came with Psylocke and Multiple Man, which were both figures that I opened a long time ago. So I've seen those legs floating around in my bins in the room somewhere. But now that I'm actually looking for them, <laughs> you know I can't find them. But they are somewhere in there. When I go to look for something else here in a couple weeks, I'll run across those legs and I'll finish off my apocalypse. I also snagged a young Jackie Chan head and put it on this articulated icon's body. Yes, it's buff, it's muscled, but I'm okay with that. Jackie can run around my Marvel Legends shelf or anywhere he wants to go, really. I also grabbed an unmasked Matt Murdock for my Netflix Daredevil. And I think we got one of these. I think it was the San Diego set, but you can't hardly beat a hand painted head, you know? And finally, I wanted to make my saber tooth a bit meaner. So I grabbed this head cast. I think this is the Marvel Select head, but comparing it to the Marvel Legends one that came on here, there's nothing wrong with this. I like how the hair flows and he has his mouth open showing some fangs, but there's something about this that's more animalistic, I think. Plus again, with that hand painted shading and the wash work, the details, yeah, 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 I really like this. That's it, boys. Lifelong dream done. First off, there is whatever the hell these things are. These were sent to me by my buddy Dan, Yokai Customs on Instagram, and I guess I've become the food toy guy. This is Captain Corndog and Baron Von Broccoli, and they're just little rubber Oh, they're bendy. They actually do pose. Oh my God. Am I going to have to use these at some point? Why does he have a leg? And then the stick is the other leg. He's got a boot. That's just weird. What about the broccoli? Yeah, he's bendy arm too. And bendy leg. Little known fact about Robo, he loves his broccoli. So <laughs> this is actually kind of cool. And I haven't seen these top packages since what? Hastings went out of business and that's been several years ago. I don't have a local comic shop or specialty store. So yeah, you stinky side dish. Beneath that fried batter, you're nothing but a flimsy tube of meat. Aren't we all? He also sent this along. This is the three and three quarter inch Wampa head. It means it's smaller than Pete's head. And in his note, he says, I found a Wampa head from the 3.75 inch line. I thought you may be able to use for something funny. And then I went to his Instagram and I found this custom and it uses the 3.75 inch Wampa body. Just found it, huh? Again, go check out his Instagram for some awesome Star Wars customs. And when I first pulled this out of the package, I thought three and three quarter inch, what do I need that for? But I do now have an idea 
that may work for a Christmas top thing. Mm. Next up, I picked up the Jax Pacific Apex Legends Bloodhound. When they first announced them, I thought, oh, I may have to pick up a couple of those. But when I saw them in the store, I thought, no, nope, I'm just picking up this one because I do have a use for this, but that's it. The other two didn't seem as interesting. And it's a valiant effort, and I'm glad I picked it up just to see what was going on because I would have just wondered forever if I didn't give one a try. But getting it in hand, there are some things that are, oh, why? Not a lot of head movement, not a lot of waist movement, but there's a lot of sculpt there getting in the way, so I can understand that. The legs look like they have some movement to them, but they traffic coned it with this bottom coat piece, so you're just left with that's it. The knees aren't bad, but there's not a lot of hinge to the ankle and absolutely no rocker. In this day and age, it doesn't matter how much articulation you put in the whole figure, if it can't stand flat-footed on a solid base, it's useless. Also, the elbows, it's like they thought ahead and did a little cutout so it would bend further, but then they took the whole joint piece and made it too wide so it gets in the way of itself. The sculpted parts don't even hit that groove. But I do like the overall look because I'm going to use this in my Star Wars display. He can hang out as one of the Infus Nest gang guys or something. May need some washes for some dust, some dirt, some grunginess, which is another thing about the figure. The colors and paints are nice, it just looks clean. And I'm also okay with the weapon looking Star Warsy too. Basically, pay the full price now if you are a super fan of Apex Legends or you really, really like extra stuff in your Star Wars display. Otherwise, I figure these are going on clearance at some point. So just wait till then if you're just half ass interested in it. I got the Target exclusive Thunderbird and Storm 2 pack. I didn't review it because I was so excited that I just ripped right into it and started changing the things that I found kind of odd with Thunderbird. First up, he came with grip hands for absolutely no reason. Nothing to grip. He didn't have the knives like his brother did, so I had to find some fists, which I think these came from Iron Fist, at least one of the versions. They may be slightly small, but I feel like the bracers kind of help with the transition between arm and hand. But doing that, the skin tones between the hand and the arm didn't match, so I had to break out the paints. I did the arms, and I did the face, and I actually added a little neck, which is more comic accurate. Out of the package, it was blue all the way up. And while it looked okay, I feel like this just gives it a little bit more oomph. I also thought about painting all the reds, and I may still do that because the paints don't match from here, or at least the reds don't match from the chest to the abs. But at the same time, I'm not trying to make the perfect war pass, so that helps it kind of blend in with other Marvel Legends, or am I just making excuses because I don't want to paint all those straight lines? But the big thing here is dropping the head just a bit. Out of the package, it sat this high, and it makes the head look like it's not meant for this body, which it's kind of not, but just dremeling it out a bit and being able to drop it down, it feels a little bit more natural. It's just a little thing, but hey, I'm happy. I've been waiting years and years and years and years for Thunderbird. I want that John size X-Men team, and we almost have it now. I always love when somebody sends me a Mandalorian cape because it's just more options and more excuses for me to buy more Mandalorians. But Mudhorn Customs on Instagram sent me another Mandalorian cape for the Beskar armor, and it's got some wire running through it. But the biggie for me, it looks tattered on the end, but it also has like some dust or something through there. Just enough dirtiness to make you think, oh, there's that grunginess that he was kind of missing with that Beskar armor. He also sent along a cape that doesn't have any wire in it, so it drapes naturally. And whatever material he used here is so much better than we see from a lot of the big companies. It's heavy enough to just fall, to lay. And again, it has some tatter on the end, has a little dirtiness there. And this is my play Mandalorian. This is the one that I always swap parts and pieces out that I do all my experimenting on. Oh, yeah. There's the rain. Mudhorn Customs suggested that this is the cape to use if you want a jetpack on your Beskar. But even with the wired cape on there, I can put the jetpack in and it still drapes okay. I mean, it still looks like there's a backpack under there. It's, it's a backpack under there. But it definitely doesn't look bad. You can take the cape and just go wherever you want with it. I also recently got the GameStop exclusive Hasbro Star Wars Black Series Darth Nihilus. I have no attachment to Darth Nihilus. I didn't play that game, so I could only look at it purely from an action figure standpoint and the reuse of the Darth Maul body, that didn't work for me. One, he was as short as the Darth Maul, and two, those original Darth Maul legs, they didn't go together. He was constantly spread out. The hips loosen up, you try to stand it up, it just kind of whoop. So I took them out of Darth Nihilus. Because again, I'm not too attached to Darth Nihilus, so I don't 
care if, if the legs were accurate or not. When you use the Kylo Ren legs, they're still black. They still have high boots, still works. But I get to keep these tattered robes hanging and this tunic up here and the new arms they did give to this figure. It adds some height. It adds much more articulation, better neutral stances, just better overall, I feel like. What I ended up doing was popping the Kylo Ren at the torso joint, which brought the whole leg assembly out. But you can see I screwed the whole Darth Nihilus lower body up trying to get those out. I ended up having to cut the peg even. So I had to dremel a little bit to get the Kylo Ren peg to fit into the Darth Nihilus torso. It's not sealed, you know what I mean? But it's tight enough to hold together as I mess with it and play with it. It's not just falling off. Just a much more imposing figure now. And it stands. I think the next thing I'll do is replace the cape because the head just pops off. And it's kind of cool because while you can see through this hood part, it doesn't really matter because everything's black. Then the cape separate, swap that out. That'll probably be another play day. Jumping into some of my Marvel Legends Deadpool tweaks, Steven Hansen posted this one on my Facebook wall and I had to do it. Hasbro gave Negasonic Teenage Warhead a unique head, unique arms, unique upper torso, got the belt on there. But then when they got from the hips down, it was just generic legs. And in the movie, she has some leather boots. They're not this design, but this adds a lot to this figure. I think these boots also came on an X-23, but I took them off my Nico figure and they add no height whatsoever. Same size, same proportions, doesn't affect anything body-wise. It just adds some extra detail to a movie-type figure. I swapped the original legs off Negasonic Teenage Warhead back onto Nico. That was just some ball and pop, and away you go. For the Deadpool 2 movie Cable, he came with this hard candy shell cape type. Well, it's more like a poncho, I guess, but it's just a solid piece that doesn't really do anything. So as always, it's Rebel 10 Customs to the rescue. We all know her, we all love her, and she is awesome when it comes to putting cloth on action figures. Got some wires running through where I can have it down over the arms or I can push it back or wherever I want to put this thing. I do need to dirty it up a bit, but <sighs> so much better. So much more action figure oriented. And then for Deadpool himself, I've been holding on to this shirt from GPS Lot forever. Back in the day when we thought we wouldn't even get a movie Deadpool figure. Nope, Hasbro finally came through. So of course my first thing was to switch this shirt over to here. Well, my first thing was to get two Deadpools and make one like this. But in the movie, the sword sheaths were on his back. On the figure, they are glued in. So I cut those off, put a magnet inside there, embedded a magnet into the back. All I gotta do now is just bloop, it goes right on. I can adjust it and it stays. Now to get that embedded that deep, I did lose this sword. I cut the sword off, just put it in there. Like I said, I have two of these. If I need a sword, I can just steal them from the other figure or something. But as is on the shelf, that's staying just like that. They're a good looking crew before the tweaks, but I like to spruce it up a bit. Speaking of GPS lot on eBay, I had to get a custom cloth. Well, is it cloth? It's some kind of leathery substance. Anyway, I replaced the cape on my hobgoblin. Look at the tatters and tears. I love it. The neck doesn't quite do what the original cape does, which is kind of a wrap around and then the cape hangs down, but that's all it did. It was a hard plastic shell that just laid there. With this, I can bring it up and have it flying out when I have them on the goblin glider or something. I have thought about cutting that collar piece off the original cape, slipping it between the head and here, but we'll see how that goes. As is, the colors match really nice between the plastic orange and the cape orange, and the tatters help blend it in. What else can I say? I just really, really like it. One of my favorite things is surprise packages in the P.O. box. And this is from my buddy Mike Lorenzo Art on Instagram. We've hung out at many a show, and when he said, oh, I sent you something, and I said, what is it? And he said, just wait. I, oh, it's like a kid at Christmas. Ugh. This is the World War II Captain America body, but he's taken some Wolverine parts from the new Fox X-Men figures, kind of blended them in. Got the bone claws because, well, this is back in the day. It's Hugh Jackman, so it's okay that it is a little tall. But my favorite thing, and I don't know if he wanted me to show this, is his sculpted kind of mohawk. That's not supposed to be a hair sculpt or anything. That's actually to keep the helmet in the correct position. So I'm not supposed to take that off. I'm not supposed to ruin the illusion, but I, I just had to because it's awesome. But overall, it's a nice, easy, but very effective custom a Wolverine display or my X-Men display. Gene! Sliding over to the G.I. Joe realm, here is another hooded Cobra Commander head. This is from Metal Inquisitor on eBay, and he did the paint job and the eyes. 
I did the water slide decal for the Cobra symbol. I didn't realize the red would really fade away because of the transparency of the water slide. It doesn't match the rest of the Cobra symbols here. And neither does the blue, but I've had this head since before Cobra Commander came out. I'll eventually have to do some paint matching and redo the Cobra symbol, but I just love how this lays on here. It's an at ease feel. Don't get me wrong, I love the hooded Cobra Commander heads that I've gotten in the past with a little flow to them, a little more wrinklage, but this is also good. No matter your preference, there's options out there. Natural laying or dynamic, whatever. And then keeping with G.I. Joe, here's a couple of Snake Eyes heads from Toy Box Custom Store on eBay. I haven't even opened this one up, but I also got this one. It's more of a commando look, and I have it on this body because I eventually plan on doing some kind of sunbow inspired Snake Eyes. It has a clean look with some straps around it, or, well, no, that's supposed to be on the clean body. This is supposed to be on the baggy pants and stuff. Either way, I'm a long way from finishing this custom, but these heads give me a good start. Oh, there's Toy Box customs on Instagram too if you want to look that up. Hey look we're unboxing on a play day. Will this one fit the Marvel Legends headball too? Oh yep fits right on there perfectly. Nice smooth cast and some clean paintwork too. I think the Sumbo look had some purple to it though didn't it? For the Hasbro Star Wars Black Series Plo Koon again little kit bashing just wanted to spruce it up a bit give it some Clone Wars flavor. These are actually the forearms out of a first order Stormtrooper which had the same hinge and swivel setup at the elbows so all we had to do was heat it up plug these in and then take the hands out put in Plo Koons and you have that armored look. It is not clone trooper armor accurate but it gets the point across. It's close enough on a shelf kind of you know wherever. The cool thing about this you can just pop this back off put the forearms back in switch it all back and you have an unaltered Hasbro Star Wars Black Series Plo Koon. Did he actually use this on the cartoon? I think it was just concept art right? I'm still working my way through Clone Wars but I was always enamored with the three and three quarter inch figure having this double wrist gauntlet lightsaber thing. So what I did there was actually get on eBay and order a cheap three and three quarter inch figure. I know. <gasps> Snipped off the pieces that made it clamp around a smaller scaled arm and just, well, I have blue tack in there, but if I like this, I'm gonna glue it down. Of course, the lightsaber blades here, being three and three quarter inch, aren't as long as the six inch scaled lightsaber, but I'm okay with that. It's a whole concept thing. Like I said, not super accurate, but the more I mess with this, the more I look at it, the more I think it's gonna stay like this. Again, another name you hear in most play days is Casting Cave, because, oh, such good heads. Is that where I'm going with that? Is that how I'm gonna leave that in the video? Probably. I think I've actually had this Luke Skywalker head for a long time, but I didn't have a place for it until I finally decided that the original model kit Luke head is just, it's just not there. So again, my new best friend, Blue Tack, I mounted that up on top. I'll have to match the skin tones a bit, but I don't have the Hasbro Star Wars Black Series Luke Skywalker in Stormtrooper gear. This will work on my shelf. Tilt the head down just a bit. Yeah, he doesn't have the wet hair look and stuff, but again, <laughs> that gets the point across. Everybody knows I love the Bandai Star Wars model kit Astromechs because they're perfect size, perfect detail. They fit right into a 112th scale collection. And I love them even more when they're customized up to give me even more variation. I have featured custom Astromechs from Greedo737 on Instagram before. His page is always a joy to go through, just looking, wish listing. Oh, I'd like that. The choices I made this time around is R5M2 to go along with my Hoth characters, R3T2 for Moss Eisley dioramas or just characters from that part of Tatooine. R2A5 for that same reason, even though this one was replaced in the special editions by the Ronto walking across. And then finally R5P8 because we got Hondo he needs his droid, right? And I know in the early days in Clone Wars that this droid had a blaster up on its head, but since we got Hondo from Galaxy's Edge, the version of that droid in that doesn't have the blaster. So I, it may stay like this, or I may eventually put the blaster on, who knows? But I love that I can just plug these into a display and just break things up. And when you look at it, you think, oh, that's not R2-D2. The red dome just pops. Same for the white and the green parts here. And then you're left with R5s. You've got to do something with them. Again, like I said, Greedo737 on Instagram. He does commissions. If you want some 
custom droids, hit them up. And then finally, I got a surprise box from FanPlastic4 on Instagram, and the first thing I pulled out was this Han head. I'm gonna have to get a new Han body for this because all of mine <laughs> already have custom heads on it, but this is very nice work. Then I got to these two figures in the box, and I thought, oh, now that's crazy. For the Winter Robo head, it was originally on the Range Trooper, and I thought, Oh, don't want to share bodies with Gus, so I found this, which helps match with the gray of the beanie. I just love the look of this. I want a jacket like this now, because I already know I look good in it. But the rosiness of the cheeks and the nose and the gray in the beard and just everything here. And that goes double for Robo Solo here, or Han Robo, whatever you want to call it. Again, with the details on the head and the hat, the, the gray of the beard, the rosiness, and he even cut the, the darker color back here where I shaved my head. It's kind of, it's kind of weird. I love these and even better, I can take these off, put them anywhere I want on some Fortnite figures, Star Wars, maybe a little small for Marvel Legends. Yeah, anywhere Robo wants to go, he can now go. No matter what the season. Bounty hunters, we don't need their scum. Yes, sir. Hey now. Who you calling scum, mother First up, just to show that even the best laid plans don't always work. I've been talking about making Beckett in his Kessel disguise forever. And when I finally got around to doing it, I thought, oh, maybe I can just pop the Lando on top of the Beckett lower and it doesn't work. <laughs> the Lando figure is just skinnier than the Beckett. So what I'm gonna have to end up doing is finding a place to cut across here that I can hide easily. And then the Lando body has a nice straight line that I can go by just to cut. Cause in the movie, Beckett essentially just puts the top gear on. But other than that, I only had to drill a new hole and I need to drill some more to get the bigger ball joint of this neck to fit down in that hole. But that should work out well. And then the mask, which is warped out of the package, I'll have to heat that up a bit, but yeah, not bad. So yeah, the ongoing saga of Disguise Beckett. Next up, I got this from a local collector slash friend that I met recently at Target when I was looking for the G.I. Joe Classified Series Cobra Trooper. I turned the corner, somebody was already there, already holding a couple, but when I walked up, there was still one on the shelf. He was just you know, grabbing a couple. And I thought, oh yeah. And so we started talking and Ken Hill, thank you very much for leaving me a Cobra Trooper and sending me a Beef Boss. Now this is three and three quarter inch. I don't do three and three quarter inch, but it being Beef Boss and everybody somehow associating me with Beef Boss for some reason, I don't know why they'd get that idea. So when Ken found one and offered it to me, I thought, yeah, why not? It's been a long time since I've messed with a fully blistered shut action figure. Toy Biz Marvel Legends, that brings back some memories. There was always a suspense to opening these, a danger. Sometimes you sliced yourself, sometimes you didn't. Huh, the little one doesn't come with guns, just a spatula. And I've actually messed with a couple of these before. The articulation isn't as nice as the big ones, but it's a bit smoother. Maybe the size of the arms is the reason they have to put a hinge and swivel at the elbow. Oh, a lot more range in the head though. Oh, I got a Burger Jr. You ready to go, little guy? Your mom didn't think I was a little guy. That is your grandmother. Didn't consider that. Oh, so much fun. Something else I just randomly picked up is the Mattel Masters of the Universe Origins Orco. I did Masters of the Universe Classics for a long, long time, but then when they switched to Filmation, I thought, oh, that's more my jam. I gotta get those. But the Classics Orco never really fit there. With Origins, they went back to the style of the original toy line, but for some reason they made Orco more Filmation-y. So I had to pick it up. This will stay with my Classics, and then this can go with my Filmation style figures whenever I finally open those up and get those displayed. The the problem is, I actually received it from Walmart.com, which is a miracle in itself, but this is how it came. The package was essentially opened. It felt like somebody had messed with it. The booklet was out and then shoved back in and it was completely missing the stand. It has the bottom half, but no stick. Nothing to have Orco floating. But it being Walmart, I ain't taking my damn chances. I'm just gonna fabricate something or steal from an, one of the other thousand stands I've gotten over the years. Plus I may try to come up with something more like this because this takes up a lot of real estate. It's nice, it's pretty, but, and no, this doesn't fit this because that would be too easy, right Mattel? Despite all that, I am pretty happy with Orco. There's a lot of movement to the eyes, head, hat, whatever. And then the arms have a couple of hinges and, oh, the wrist does too. We've all seen the uproar over the Hasbro Star Wars Black series holiday editions of the Troopers, but I love them. And with this one, you know I had to pick up an extra 
to do this. It makes too much sense. Gus has been hanging around the review booth for years now, and then there was the Christmas movie with Kurt Russell as Santa Claus, and then Hasbro gives us a Santa Claus inspired trooper. I had to. So Gus is gonna be around for the holidays and uh, I may be spreading some cheer, if you know what I mean. <laughs> but I don't know why they changed the collar piece to a hard plastic instead of the soft goods. I don't mind really. In fact, it lays down kind of nice and <laughs> they spread it apart to get it out of the way of the beard. Almost like they did it on purpose. But they also made the neck hole in the helmet smaller. With the first one you could just pull, it popped right off. This one had to heat up quite a bit to get it to come off the neck peg. And I've heard horror stories online of people breaking the peg or the whole assembly coming out with it. So now that I have this off, probably never go back on. This may need some shading or some paint touch-ups, but I really love what they did with the boots. It's a holly jolly gussy kind of Christmas. I already showed this on the last play day where I replaced Darth Nihilus's crotch and legs with a Kylo Ren. It just gives him a more natural stance and more height, which is what he needed as compared to the Darth Maul who was way too short. But since then I have found this cape in the fodder box, which I think maybe a Darth Vader cape? It just lays more natural. It doesn't have those points sticking up. It drapes and it gives him, I don't know, his silhouette is a lot better now. It's much more mysterious the way this can come around and cover and it lays on his shoulders. Darth Nihilus is just one of those characters, now that I have it in figure form, it's such a cool look after I modded it that I'm wanting to know more about Darth Nihilus, and that's always the sign of a good action figure. Earlier this week, I did a review of the Walmart exclusive Hasbro Star Wars Black Series Clone Wars wave, and in it, I complained about the Mandalorian figures. I said I didn't like the proportions, and some of the comments I got was, what, they can't be shorter or thicker? And I'm like, no, I'm talking about the proportions themselves. I feel like the torso is too short, making the arms too long, they hang down too far down the legs, and then that makes the crotch seem high. It just throws everything out of proportion. So I came along and did this to the Mandalorian Loyalist. Essentially, I popped these apart, which just takes some heat. I drilled it out a bit, just enough to where I can sit this on top and it goes snug. That brings the top of the torso up a bit where you can see some of the abs or well, the costume over the abs, but that's not a bad thing because in the show, it's shown like that a lot. Also doing that, it brings the shoulders up it brings the arms up, and then I also want to come in and mod it so the head sits a bit higher. There's probably a better way of doing that too, where you actually fabricate a new socket or something, but for now, this will work. I just wanted to see what it looked like. Doing that to Django though, where you can see more of his abs, it doesn't quite work for his design. Again, you can see he's taller, it fixes the arm problem, it fixes the leg problem, but Django's costume doesn't actually show that part. In most pictures, he is a bit thicker and the armor's down on the belt. So as much as I like this, I'll probably take it, pop it back together, make it more accurate, but then leave the Manda Loyalist standing tall, and I may go back, do some mods for the Maldalorian. Also, the good thing about this, if you don't like the abs showing, you can raise the belt just a bit, and it helps hide it, or at least balance it out. Here's a Doom Cape I picked up from Daredevil19 Customs on Instagram. Daredevil19 does reviews on YouTube, and he's, well, he's been doing it for quite a while, making soft goods for action figures. On my first Marvel Legends Doctor Doom, I had messed with the cape and broke the chain a bit, so getting this, plus the ability to do all kinds of crazy stuff with the wires and flowing out and making it look awesome, I had to get this. I mean, <laughs> It just finishes out the figure. Have him holding it in his hand. And the way he designed this is kind of genius because the head comes off. Well, you go between the neck hole and this, but there's an extra piece of fabric right there to hold it in position. So no matter where you have it, you have it flowing out or back or whatever, these two discs and the chains will be always hanging like that. They won't fly back and look like they're choking doom or something. It's just a good cut, a good design. You could bunch it up and have it more in a neutral position. I just love how it hangs down over the shoulders. It just makes doom feel more regal in general. Oh, well, hell, let's just have this out.
earlier in the year, or well, it was earlier in the summer, at some time in the past, I ordered some heads from Old Boy CTTS. And at this point, most people know Old Boy. I'm not sure if I like this Sith Anakin head on the Black Series figure yet. I, I'll have to do some swapping. I'll have to pop the head off the SH figure art to see what's going on there. The original photo real head isn't bad, but there's just something to this one. <laughs> like most custom heads and older Black Series figures, the skin tones do not match. Some angles I like it, but some angles like this, where you can see the neck is too thick on the Black Series figure, mm, yeah, I'll have to do some swapping. But I also got this head at the same time, and it had been a minute since I'd ordered it. I'd forgotten that it was actually meant for Boba Fett. I tried it out on some clone troopers, and it just wasn't working for me for some reason. But then I remembered and I put it on the right body or well, the one that old boy meant for it to go on. And the wacky thing here is that I ordered this before we found out about events in the Mandalorian TV show. So this will work out great if that does end up being Boba Fett. But if it does end up not being Boba Fett or, you know, some kind of twist or something, I have enough of these Boba Fett bodies that I can just use this as a what if. Hey, what if he did look like Tamir Morrison with a shaved head? Old Boy always does such a great job with the detailing though. The eyes, the stubble, it looks like his head has been recently shaved and that just works down into a five o'clock shadow. He's no good to me, dead. We've all seen the SH Figure Arts Winter Soldier head and it's not the greatest likeness. So when Manipple? Manipple? Or whatever advertised a replacement head for that, I had to jump on it. Always does a great job with likenesses, but for me, it's the eyes. There's a lifelike quality to them. The reflection of the light is just fantastic. It almost looks like you're taking a picture of an actual person. And this finishes off the figure for me. Bandai has been flaunting around a new SH Figure Arts Winter Soldier at different shows here and there, but who knows when that'll ever come out. It does look better, but now that I have this, I don't need that. I got this from VC Toy Box. It looks like they're sold out now, but if you search Manipple, Manipple, well, other sites pop up and even eBay. The hair does get in the way a bit, especially with the high collar coming up and locking it in place, but it looks this good. I'm okay with that. And then there is Corey over at Casting Cave. And oh my God, this dude is awesome. I always love when there's new painted heads on Casting Cave because I'm a kid in a candy store. It's just going down. Oh, I need this one, this one, this one, this one. First up, he sent me some lightsaber blades. They are translucent and <laughs> we've all been looking for a yellow one. Well, some of us have been looking for a yellow one, but then there's the clear and the blue. And the thing about these, it's almost like a concept art or an animated look to the bottom, the way it flares out and Awesome thing about these, you can take a Hasbro Black Series lightsaber, pop the blade out, and these just plug right in. There's not a pop, but it's nice and snug. And hell, I like these better because it, it, there's a little flair to it. They are just slightly shorter, but I don't know, more personality, I think. And then of course, there's the custom heads. It's always a clean cast. It's a great paint job. It is definitely upgrades to a lot of the Star Wars Black Series figures because we all remember the first release of the, what, Revenge of the Sith Obi-Wan? That was before Photo Real on top of Hasbro making the head too small. I think this is a shrunk down Hot Toys head, but so much better. So much better. There's even a hint of gray right there above the ears. Of course, the skin tone doesn't match. I'll have to do some of that, but man. That's completely worth it. The same goes for Qui-Gon. That original head was a, an experiment of sorts, I think, by Hasbro. The eyes were underneath a flesh mask of some kind or something. I don't know. It just looked odd. But I think this is another shrunk down head. And then, of course, the paint job on top of it. Because of the size here and now how good that looks. Well, I still have to match some skin tones again. But... I don't know. This may replace the SH figure arts on my display. He also did a replacement head for the Snowspeeder Luke because on the original figure, it came with that skull cap that's supposed to go under the helmet. But if you want to display Luke like getting ready, sacking himself up to get in that Snowspeeder and go out there and kick some mad ad ass, Corey's got you covered. I just love the look of this. I also had to snag a Dooku head from him because while the Black Series Dooku looks pretty good, the original head for the SH figure arts... Bouncing away. It's passable from a distance, I guess, or it's Lee's stunt double or something. The Casting Cave version is just so much better. And yeah, a long time ago, I painted the top for the SH Figure Arts black. It gives them a different look. I still hate this cape though. It's too thick. 
it just sticks out. That's the last thing I'll replace on here, and then I'll be happy with my figure arts Dooku. And then just for shits and giggles, I had to grab his Clint Eastwood head. Right now I've got it on the Marvel Legends Peter Parker body, which it seems to fit really well, but I need new hands, especially hands with trigger fingers on them. You have to ask yourself one question. Where do I buy sensible shoes? It's such a good likeness. It may be a bit large for Star Wars characters, which I thought yeah, I could make them an Imperial officer or some kind of smuggler, but the more I look at this, the more I like it. It's just leisure Eastwood. And then finally, there is this. And I had already started recording the play day and I got a notification that I needed to go check my mail. So I went to the post office and this was there. This is from Asus Film Models. You can look them up on Instagram or go to, I think they have the site listed, asusfilmmodels.com. Lothcat that appeared in The Mandalorian. And that even gives the whole bio back here. Lothal, Outer Rim Planet, Small Temperamental. Now most of the stuff on their site is three and three quarter inch, but every now and then, they'll offer up a six inch scale figure. And this is just beautiful presentation. It even has a 25 of 100 on the back. It's signed, it has a UPC, this is not a toy. The backer actually feels like cardstock. All it's missing is a hole for me to display it. I guess I'll have to find some kind of case or something. But the coolest thing, especially for me, somebody who likes getting stuff out and messing with it, there's Velcro that you can peel away and that opens up. There's even a custom tray that holds the Lothcat in place when the bubble's on so it won't bounce around. But the Lothcat itself, I don't know what this material is and I don't wanna go cranking on it too much because these are a bit expensive, but the quality, holy moly, that is very, very, damn it. It is very, very nice. Even the eyes, if I didn't know any better, I would say those are glass eyes embedded in whatever this is made of. And then the paint job, the faded from lighter to darker fur, the spots, it is just great all around. There's actually a hole, so it's hollow? I guess so. And the scale is about perfect. This adding to the shelf, if you didn't know better, if you're just looking at it, you're thinking, oh, there's Baby Yoda and the Lothcat and Mandalorian and this and that, it blends right in. I'm actually gonna have a hard time deciding if I wanna keep this on card or on the shelf with the rest of my figures. I mean, this is definitely where I want it, but they went through all this trouble of making a nice bubble and everything. Decisions, decisions. It's Christmas, I'm in the mood, and I got my buddy Pete some new workout equipment. Holy moly. First up here is a blast effect from Boart Takeover on Instagram. When I opened this package, it was wrapped in a way that made me think, I, I, I didn't order a sex toy. It's that shape, you know? And when it's wrapped in newspaper with newspaper inside too, mm -hmm. But this, of course, is made out of hot glue, and I have always admired people that can do this. My brain is too technical. I need specs. I need uniformity. I spent 20 years looking at blueprints and then producing that in metal form. When it comes to artistic things like this, I can't do it. That's why I enjoy painting the most. I can just look at something. This color goes here. This color goes here. Not, not, not. Battle damage. And even that, I have to... Okay, is that on that corner? And that's two little kickouts and this. I don't work that creative side. And when I do, it's by accident. In his letter, Bo said that I could paint this in several different colors, but like this, it automatically makes me think Iceman. Or if it's some kind of blast, give it to Cannonball or something. I will figure out something to do here. <laughs> Next up, some mossy stone steps from Would You Kindly Studios. This was another open it up and I, what is going on here? It's made out of several layers of foam and this is yet another thing that I can't wrap my brain around. The randomness, the asymmetry of the rocks. If I were to do this, it would end up bricks because I need straight lines and I need straight edges. So this is absolutely fascinating to me. Plus getting such clean cuts into the foam, these little pebbles are a nice, nice touch. And then there's this green mossy surface that is still flat. If you're putting action figures on this, it's still a stable base. I've linked to Andy's Instagram in the comics, but from there you can go to wouldyoukindlystudios.com. It seems that this is made to fit a detolf, but I don't have one of those, so I haven't fit it to that, but I'm sure the dimensions here fit perfectly. For me, I'll probably bring this in for pictures and stuff, but I do have like cheap 
Walmart shelving units that are deep that I can put that on too and I need some lighting around it. Maybe a forest background. Ooh. One of my never ending battles is the head size and neck length for the SH Figure Arts Mandalorians. Right out of the box, their helmets are almost sitting right on their shoulders. They look scrunched up, the bodies look too big, the proportions look messed up. But John Walker Customs has started printing up new neck pegs. This is the neck peg out of <laughs> one of these Mandalorians and you can definitely see the difference in the two. What that does is bring the head up just enough to make it look like it's a human under there. I still have a bit of a problem with the size itself. It should be slightly larger, I think, but with it higher up, I don't know. I'm pretty happy with this now. And it seems to work a little bit better on the Beskar. It is a bit tight and you have to heat it up to get the neck peg in there. But once you do, it's been solid. You get all the range of movement that you had originally. You can even shift it back a little bit to get it higher up or shift it forward to bring it slightly down. There's still some adjustment to it. The feet still seem a bit big. And, but yeah, this is passable. This will go on the shelf now. But all this head raising got me thinking about the SH Figure Arts Django Fett, which I never really liked. The torso is just floppy and I never fixed it because this wasn't my shelf Django. And then again, the helmet here always felt like it was sitting on the shoulders, just like Mandalorian. I've always said SH Figure Arts has a bit of a problem with armored characters and they ain't proving me wrong. But I thought, hey, Let's try to pull the helmet up a bit and see what happens. I couldn't use the John Walker extension because this is actually a hinge going up to a ball joint. So for now, I got some blue tack up in there. I've just stuck it on, but I really like the results. You can see a little bit of neck under there, but it gives it a more human quality. Like a dude is actually wearing a bucket on his head. The torso stays in place if you push it down onto the belt, but as soon as you go to extend it or articulate it, I think with the proportion change here, I may start working on the torso, see what I can do there. And uh, I don't know. Oddly enough, another SH Figure Arts figure I've been fighting with since I got it out of the box is the Count Dooku. Painted the tunic black because the whole thing was this color and I didn't like it too much. This gives it a kind of an animated feel. But then last play day, Corey over at Casting Cave sent me this head and I thought, you know what? I'm putting it on here. It's just better than the original figure arts. That just left me with this, the original Bandai cape. Flat and lifeless. And I guess I could have tried the water trick, get it into a pose, but it wouldn't have ever, I'd, had, I'd have to do that every time, you know what I mean? Last play day, somebody directed me to a good old GPS lot on eBay, and I found this cape. All you have to do is pop these clasps out of the chest, the cape comes off, I will admit, it's kind of a pain in the ass. But now that I have this on here, oh, so much more dynamic. There's wire running through it. I can put it wherever I want. I can make it curl around. I have it folded over a bit. It is bigger than this, so you can get a lot of swoosh. I am afraid to get too rowdy with it and pull these out because I don't want that to happen. I don't want to fight with those again. But I think this is now the cape that is gonna stay on this figure. So I might as well glue those in, right? At some point? Yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. But it's even double layered. It has that orangey color on the inside, that darker brown on the outside. I mean, let's even put it down in a neutral position and it looks fantastic. Yeah, it only took changing out the head, the cape, and then painting most of the body to make me like the SH Figure Arts Count Dooku. But well, there you go. I really seriously need to apologize to Mogan or Mojin01 Customs on Instagram. He sent me these a while back and they somehow ended up in the wrong stack. And he reminded me on Instagram. I was like, oh yeah, I need to get to that. This is an old man version of Luke and Han in the First Order Stormtrooper gear. And I like that Luke is actually shorter than Han on this. That's a nice little attention to detail. But more than that, I dig the blaster effects and damage on the armors here. Or the blue markings. There's some hatch marks. There's some stripes that's coming around the leg. Even if it wasn't Han and Luke, this would be a couple of kick-ass troopers because he also sent these helmets to go on each to, to match the effect. I just love troopers. And I, as much as people hate the sequels, I dig First Order Stormtrooper armors too. Not as much as the original trilogy, but we all have to have our babies, right? Push right off. I can put the Han head back on. And even though this didn't happen in the movies, it's a nice homage to A New Hope. I like the, you know, here's the young ones, here's the old ones. I didn't even realize there's a blaster hole through the eye, and I guess that would be blood. And this guy's dead. The timing is weird on this one because I think the Target exclusive Remnant Stormtrooper has just shipped. So when I got this, I thought, 
Ooh, I don't have to go buy a second one now. I've got a custom Remnant Stormtrooper. This little baby is from Figure Freak 616. And the good thing about this, besides the sculpt being a little bit different, the damage, or well, the wear and tear will also be different from the official Hasbro figure. Plus Hasbro's dirt and blast effects always come out looking a bit mechanical. You know a machine did it. For a custom job like this, to get all that grime into the grooves and, and make it so asymmetrical and random, ooh, I love it. Plus, as much as I love the new Stormtrooper mold, there's not a lot wrong with this old Stormtrooper mold. And messing with something like this, I can't mess it up. Right off the bat, I thought, oh, it's a custom paint job. If I move it around, I'm gonna scratch it up. And then I thought, oh, <laughs> am I gonna damage it even more than it looks? He's got some cracks going on. Well, I think that's in the sculpt itself, but he made it look like a bit of ceramic. I don't know if that's the dirt or the finish, but it looks a bit more armory than Hasbro straight out of the package. So good. And look at this crazy thing. Seriously, I need the other angle to show you that this thing is huge. I was just messing around on eBay one day, as I do, looking for customs, looking for, well, just anything interesting, and I ran across this. I absolutely love the Tauntaun head here, and it wasn't until now that I realized that this was on the other side. In the movie, it's dark, you can't hardly see a lot, but I didn't know the sheepdog from the Coyote cartoon was here. There's some torn details showing some like metal underlaying the sheetrock or whatever. The facade. Have some grill plates across the bottom underneath. The controls to bring it up and down or whatever. And then the texture all over it. It's just, <laughs> it feels like Jabba's Palace. And it is solid. I don't want to go throwing it off my balcony or anything. I don't have a balcony. I just thought of something high and that's what came to mind. But if somebody tries to break into my house, I want you notice this faint circle right here. It also came with this plug. It's a bit shaped has this metal on this end, that's to plug into the back of your Han Solo in carbonite. There's a ledge right here, you can set that there, it just magnetizes in, which is the main reason I got this. <sighs> or at least that's the excuse I'm using that I got this. I love me some diorama, but at the same time, I, I needed a place to put my Han and carbonite block, right? I couldn't just hang it on the wall. So with the magnet, I can take it right off, or I can leave it right there, I can have it like, Leia just dropped it on the ground. It doesn't want to, there you go. It's just one of those nifty things that works fantastically. Now, I have to figure out where I'm gonna put this big bastard. I'm also a part of a couple of customizing groups on Facebook, and most of the time I just browse. I'm just looking, I'm like, oh, that's amazing. Someday I will do that too. So when I came across a cell post for an unfinished Darth Talon, I had to jump on it, you know? Most of the sculpt work is done. All I have to do is come along, fit this head on, because the neck ball hasn't been drilled out yet, and then put a paint job on it. Granted, the design for Darth Talon is small, little, black tattoos, much like Darth Maul, so I have to get out the peepers. I'll have to get out the magnifiers and <laughs> whew, not caffeine up that day. But as it turns out, when I contacted the seller, it ended up being Grin Mankey Customs from Instagram. We worked out a deal, he sent me this, and now I'm happy. I just have to finish it. There's even a lightsaber in here with this organic looking hilt, and then, of course, a red blade. It's a Darth. But after we chatted a bit, realizing that we've been on the forums forever and on Instagram and everything, I got the package and this was in it. He says this is an older custom. He's been looking to get rid of it and thought, hey, and it's already sending a package my way. How about a play day item? It is Sidon Athano. I think I'm saying that right. The Crimson Corsair, the Blood Buccaneer, the Red Raider, the Scarlet Swashbuckler, the Vermilion Vagabond, the Cherry Captain. <laughs> I, I, I made half of those up. Shut up. I've seen this recipe for years and I've always wanted to try it, but now I don't have to because somebody way more talented than I am just you know, sent me one out of the kindness of his heart. I think some of this is Kylo Ren and he sculpted this on and <laughs> I can't recognize some of these parts, but all together, I have a kick-ass side on a Thano on the shelf now. Got the blaster and a holster on the side. Now I'm glad I didn't start one because I wouldn't have been able to do this. Grin Man has a lot more customs on his Instagram page, so go check him out. But this is what pushed me into doing a play day so soon. If you were watching the Unparalleled Universe live stream Friday night, I was opening some mail and then I got to this box and I thought, oh, lunchbox and a couple of SH Figure Arts BB units, cool. But when I got into them, I realized, oh, 
there's a lot of stuff here. This comes from Slacker Hacker on YouTube. Now he doesn't have a channel, he just comments on YouTube. He doesn't have Instagram, doesn't have any socials, but he even put Foosh Star Wars Play Day on here. The note says open the lunchbox before these, which made me realize, oh, these aren't BB units. These are something else. What's in the box? There is a metric ton of custom model kits put together in here. And there are notes for each one. <laughs> and it says, made gun arm for BB-8 can be used for R2. Try to make arm with flame, not the best. Well, hell, there is an arm right there with a blaster on it. And the crazy thing about all this, oh, I'm trying to get it out of here without tearing it up. They're all in foosh colors, which is just insane. Oh, look at the nicks and dings and damage on it. What is here? A K2SO. Needs new name. Tried to paint skull face. Put gun holsters on back and leg. Cut finger to make trigger fingers. And oh, shit. again, because of the battle damage and the nicks and dings, you can move it around. I'm not afraid of scraping paint or anything like that. There's a raffle strapped to the back. And look at the skull type paint job on the face. That is amazing. We need to come up with a name for this. Something fooshy like... <laughs> <laughs> I nearly went with some kind of F-U-C. Is this the Black Series? This isn't the model kit, which is okay with me. I like the Black Series, I think, more than the model kit. It definitely stands easier from what I remember. Oh, do we have an R2 unit? We do. Needs a name, glued Iron Man blast to rocket boosters, didn't put together because didn't know how you display. Oh, this is crazy. Is this the deluxe R2-D2 with all the weapons and tools and covers and gears and there's the rocket blast he put the <laughs> damn it why didn't the original come with that that is just brilliant and look at that another foosh blue dirty r2 unit r2 fu <laughs> why do i keep going to that foosh just because it starts with an f it's so stupid and did you replace and did you replace the foot wires with actual wires because that looks copper and silver what's going on there that is cool. Now again, if you watch the live stream, I only went halfway through this. So I know some of this already. I haven't been through these boxes. And then I don't know what's at the bottom of this. There is a flag with the foosh skull and crossbones along with a foosh blue stormtrooper. Oh my God, it's on both sides. Flag holder, drilled holes in hands for flagpole. Tried to take your logo and paint the flag. Tried? <laughs> You succeeded. Oh, there's a smaller version too. What? He's even got the flag holder piece around the neck. Everybody knows I love the model kit stormtroopers and to have them looking like this, all uniform with the rest of this crew, I've got a whole foosh crew. That's amazing. Oh, plus there's an extra flag holder if I wanted to give this to somebody else. And it being a stormtrooper, when I articulated, the black undersuit isn't painted. There's no scrapage. There's nothing to rub off. And he has the metal bar already in the hands. So all I gotta do is plug in. That is some craziness. That is something I didn't even know I needed. I didn't know I wanted this. But as soon as I opened it up, as soon as I got it all in his hand, I I'm gonna have to mess with it to get the right pose for the flag to be seen. But <laughs> it's a Foosh Stormtrooper Regiment. What is this crazy looking stormtrooper? Skull Trooper took Halloween decoration to make bone armor. Be careful moving joints. The chest kept wanting to pop off. Oh shit. The chest has a skeleton rib cage on it. There's a bone crotch piece, a leg, shin, and then the whole arm. Oh, it's hands. I thought those were feathers when I first looked in the package. He even has like a mouth painted on the, well, mouthpiece of the helmet. Same paint job as the others, but a darker blue. That's insane. That's crazy. And what's all the other, oh my God, what is that? He's got the alternate helmet top in here, just in case I didn't like the hand mohawk on it. But this, what is this? It has a loop on bottom. I don't know if that's supposed to go on something. But look at the paint job on the top of it. Hopefully Slacker Hacker comments on this video and what does that go to? Cause I want to put it on somewhere. And yeah, I'm still pulling out crazy stuff. Oh, and it's already in a stormtrooper hand. There's a, God, there's another stormtrooper. Robo S stormtrooper. This whole box started with this one. Made beard out of green stuff, two part putties. Skirt is just foam. Try to take parts of your logo and put on helmet and shoulders. And it's covered by the paper. So I haven't actually seen what the figure looks like. And that's what I would look like as, well, if I had a longer beard, 
that would be sticking out of the bottom of the helmet. There's some Fouche logo right there, some Fouche logo right there. The skirt piece is foam, but that looks fantastic. Double blasters, you had to pull from two sets for this. Do I have a new mascot? Is that what just happened here? What else we got? Just some extra little things I had. Thought you might like your intros or... Oh, well, it's a bunch of bottles and skulls and bigger skulls. There is some more add-ons. Oh, the belt pieces for the model kit stormtroopers. There is, oh, extra hands and guns. Shield is black series with two-part putty. Big gun is black series that I cut out trigger and put in model kit gun. All others are just model kit. And they're all in foosh blue. What's the shield? Oh, and the shield is bone. It's crazy. Here's the decals or the decals from the sets. It's umbrellas. It's little umbrellas. These hats fit great on helmeted figures. These are felt. I don't know if these are bought or made. Oh, the hijinks we can get into now, partner. This is all amazing. Hell, I thought, yay, Mandalorian lunchbox. And now I'm thinking, I need a foosh blue trooper shelf. So what are we gonna have in here? Extra BB-8 head. And I think I saw just a hint of Yep, got some bone sculpt on it. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be broke, but I like how it looks broken like that. Oh, 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 what is that? Red jewel on the back? Oh, is this what I think it is? Now here's an R2 head with some bone on it. First needs bottom ring from other R2 head. Skull face was made from Halloween decoration, small cat head. Looks like Jabba skull to me. Tried to make gun turrets on top of head. Meh. If you don't like, pull toothpick out. <laughs> it does kind of look like a Java skull. I don't know. That's a tough decision. Oh, and then there is another art. Good grief. It never ends. Oh, look at that. I forgot about that deluxe set having that extension up on top. And there's a crystal skull under the R2 head. Look at that craziness. There is so much stuff. There's another box. Oh. I know this head. Oh, if I had this a week ago, because I had to buy a second Beef Boss to make Beef Bosk, and that would have worked perfect it went on there. Am I gonna grab about more Beef Boss heads? Hell no. What's next? Oh, what is that? Fooshberry. <laughs> it's crazy. Oh, 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 yeah, and I know this head too. What do we got here? A young Gus head? Made to fit model kit, tried to make look younger, darker beard. Won't be mad if you repaint a suck at hair. <laughs> it's a young, dashing, debonair Gus. Oh, and I can go on a model kit. It's the, oh, what? It's old man Gus, he's been around. Well, it looks like there's two of them. Gus head, standard head socket, made beard out of, oh yeah, that one goes on just the regular range trooper. And he angled the beards in a way that this works better on the model kits, but this juts out for the range trooper. Right, I'm looking at my screen and because of the blue on all the troopers right here, it just kind of blends in. I'm looking and trying to figure out, can you see those? But man, above and beyond, I will be going through this stuff for the rest of the week. I can take you in hot or I can take you in cold. Cold it is, mother Who oh, play day? God dang, I love these things. Starting off with a bit of randomness that may help out if you're needing female bodies for customizing. This is the Power Rangers Lightning Collection Rita Repulsa. I don't collect Power Rangers, so I didn't need that set, especially since I already had a Lord Zed. When I saw this on eBay exactly like this for about seven bucks, I thought, well, that could be interesting. Let's see what happens. And I just got it in this week. There's a ball joint up at the top. There's a hinge at the abs. Butterfly shoulders. Essentially all the articulation <laughs> that we would want in a Star Wars or a Marvel Legends figure. I love that the boot tops are sculpted in for a high boot, especially since my first thought when I saw this was, hey, do I need to make an Aura Sing? But with the rumor mill going that Hasbro's gonna make one in the Black series, I'm gonna hold off for a bit. Hopefully they make the red costume and I can make the Clone Wars black costume out of this. You know, when I finally finish a custom. It's pretty good size. Well, Leia's terrible comparison, isn't she? That'll work for a bounty hunter type in the Star Wars universe. But then it's not bad compared to an MCU Marvel Legends figure either. Hopefully someday this body will be somebody. I finally got off my butt and ordered one of these things. This is the Damn Toys Freeze Man. And they've done several different versions of this body. The the crash test dummy, uh, other things. Can't remember off the top of my head. They're all based on this body though. And while I usually don't care for the translucent material look where you can see the joints underneath, for some reason, 
I don't know if it's the sheen of it, the reflectiveness, but it doesn't bother me as much here. And I'll be damned, nah, damn toys, if there isn't some range of movement to this thing. I mean, full on elbows, so much torso, so much tilt. The hips kind of throw me how it's engineered, but it works really well. I mean, I can't complain when it's functional. When you come up, there's some bulginess, but yeah. Full on knees too. Boop, 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 boop. Kicks his eyes, yeah. Toe joints. It was all smooth right out of the package too. I thought maybe I would have some stuck joints or something, but everything is just fluid. Frozen fluid. Are you getting sick of these jokes? Yeah. Half of me thought I could maybe do another Iceman for the display but this is a bit small for Marvel Legends. Although it may work for early X-Men teenage Bobby with that kind of snowman look when he went from snow to ice, I don't know, it's useful. There's also a ghost-like quality to it because of the soft facial features. <laughs> I kind of freaked myself out. <laughs> I'm a couple of years late with this Hasbro Into the Spider-Verse splitter, but after the recent Marvel Legends Into the Spider-Verse wave where we got most of the characters from the movie, I had to get this. Plus it didn't hurt that it's down to $17 on Amazon. 17, 18, something like that. Penny that comes with it is way too small, but as a background character, even with, well, I was gonna say limited articulation, it's essentially just hip and shoulder. Even then, as a background piece, just to be hanging out behind these other characters, it's well worth the $18 that I paid for it. Getting into some custom stuff, Oh, my favorite. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Last play day, I showed off this custom Bandai model kit R5P8 from Greedo737. Since then, I got the blaster to go on the head. This is a cast from Pit817 on eBay. It came in a resin color, so I actually painted it up. Did a silver dry brush just real quick and dirty and then glued it to the top of the head. But now that I have it glued, I kind of wish I went a different route with it, especially when I look right down here on my desk and I have this peg top thing. I could have cut a slot in it, drilled a hole in the head, and then I could have had it rotate on top of there. A little bit more posability to it. But as is, it adds a lot to the figure because I don't have any other R5 units running around with a blaster strapped to the top of his head. And we should have more R5 units running around with blasters strapped to the top of their heads. Right? Pew, 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 pew. Jaden Mendiola on Facebook hit me up one day and said, hey, would you be interested in taking a look at my Cosmic Demon upgrade kit for Doc Knock? And I said what I always say. Hell yeah. He's taken one of the Mesco skulls, made it a bit more scary, purple paint job, cross on the forehead, some deep burning eyes down there it's looking into your soul then he also has this retro 90s looking blaster he actually sent two still a great look but i like the little missile things here on top or the scope or whatever the hell those things are it changes up the look of my doc nocturnal just enough makes it a bit more sinister the head is big but like i've always said about this character it looks like he's wearing some kind of helmet with a skull face on it plus it's a smaller body and while we don't have a robin from 112th collective yet on this body that's just silly mezco I'll save your soul. Last play day, I showed off the Jabba trophy wall I got from Spaceport 77 Studios on eBay. This play day, I got a gonk droid from them, and I love the sculpt of this. It's not articulated, which is okay because it's gonna be standing on my shelf just gonk, gonk gonk gonk. I was going more for the details and the paint job and something I could just buy on eBay without having to put any work into it because I'm a lazy ass. The dryer duct look to the legs, the feet down here. There's even some paint right there with the colors. Cables running up to the body and uh, this is just a fantastic shelf piece. But that's not all because he also added in an at ease Jawa. Just relaxing after a hard day of scavenging or stealing or you know what Jawas do. I love the torn edges of the robe. It's got the wrench, he has his pouches, even silver buttons painted. You guys know that's my big thing. You gotta have those buttons painted. And then the yellow eyes peering out from under the hood. And it works perfectly with the Star Wars Black series Jawa. And there's the gonk in there. They're just, hey, about to sell some stuff. Is it our stuff? Hell no, we stole this stuff. I mean, what? We, it's totally ours. Houdini! 
great. Here's a complete surprise piece that showed up from FedEx like 10 minutes before I started shooting. You may know Matt O'Toole. He does a lot of Mythic Legions customs. He did the Castle of Power back in the day with the, the bigger version of Castle Grayskull to go behind your Masters of the Universe classics. And he's still chugging along on the customs. Just a great look to this. It's damn accurate to what we saw in the show. The side looks to be reused from the Black Series Haunting Carbonite. Same controls, but he's come in, did some paint work, silvered it up, green. Same thing on the other side, nice detail just all around. Get around to the bottom, there it is again, and it still has the two indents for a stand from Black Series. Even though the back is hollow, you can see that's not touching. The grooves go in there far enough to where it holds and stands without much problem. I never realized how Enterprise that looks, well, kinda. But to have something else to add to my Mandalorian shelf, yeah. I take that all day, every day, so I appreciate it, Matt. Another surprise I got in the P.O. box is this custom Christopher Reeves Superman. And this comes from John with Geek Summit. His site hasn't been updated in a while, but it looks like he's been doing updates on his YouTube channel. And he says, once the world went into lockdown, I found myself quickly overcoming my intimidation of working with fabric because he doesn't sew. And this figure still came to be with no sewing. and. I, I, I don't know how that works. The shape of this is so accurate, and I'm not sure what body is underneath because I don't know what a Mezco figure looks like without the clothing on, but there almost seems to be, well, at least in the chest, he's added some padding to give it that Christopher Reeve look, and it retains full articulation. I watched the video on the boots, and somehow he puts this material down and then irons it out, and it forms to the foot or the leg. Have the yellow S on the back. There is wire running into the cape. You can pose it and that's some stiff wire. It holds the weight really well. But also when I get the wire put down, there's still some flow to the cape with this other material sticking out. And this is how he's gonna be on the shelf doing that looking up in the air, that hopeful look that you get when you look at Christopher Reeve Superman. Plus, he drew a Robo logo for me <laughs> and me as a superhero in silhouette. I get some crazy stuff in the P.O. box and I, I cannot express my appreciation whenever somebody just sends a package and I open it up and yeah, so good. One of the mainstays of Playday is Casting Cave. I hit Corey's site several times a week and when something pops up, I order it because I know it's good. I, I know what to expect. So recently I snagged this replacement Marvel Legends Psylocke head and we all know what the original head looked like. It's okay, but it's not this. This is just an overall better look for Betsy. And while the ninja look may not be my favorite, this makes me happy to have this on the shelf. But not only that, you know I had to sneak some Star Wars in too, and <laughs> this is what I mostly look for, is replacement heads for Star Wars figures, or heads for new characters. I love the look of this Duro's head, the dry brush, to bring out the details of the sculpt, the reflective candy red in the eyes, the line going across it, it's just so good. But I haven't found a permanent place for this head yet. I'm eventually gonna do a Shriv from Battlefront 2, but for now, he can be displayed as just a random Battlefront 2 soldier. There was a Duros option for Battlefront 2, wasn't there? It's been a while. So yeah, huge upgrade here and another character for the Star Wars shelf. <laughs> Once again, Casting Cave, I couldn't be happier. It's been a while since I've featured Jay Custom Figures on Instagram. He does a lot of Trooper Customs. A lot of Trooper Customs. But I guess he had some leftover stuff, some extras, and he sent me a big old box starting with this Battlefront 2 First Order Squad. Have an officer and a jet trooper, and that actually has a jet on the back. I have a sniper with the black pauldron. There's a flame trooper, a normal trooper, and a heavy trooper. Now he calls this a jungle swamp squad, and you can see the dirtiness and the damage. That's what I love about Jay. He just goes all out with that damage and it ends up looking great. But you'll also notice the mud caked onto the legs like they've been going through the swamps. And it's not just paint. That's an actual texture. I, well, I'm almost afraid to ask what that is. But all said and done, a whole squad in one fell swoop. My yard has been wet for a while. Perfect picture taking opportunity here. Oh, but it doesn't stop there. Jay also sent this custom made symbiote Spider-Man design that he came up with himself. It's close to the original design, but 
damn, the paintwork here, that is some crisp lines. And then the straps running up and down the side, I am jealous because it's been years. Well, hell, even in my prime, I don't think I could paint lines that straight. And while I already love the black and white color scheme of any of the symbiotes, this beefier design this really works for me. I hadn't even flipped it over. I didn't realize there was white lines running on the inside of the arms. And then another very, very nicely painted spider symbol on the back. It's just a cool tweak to a classic design. He also sent along this custom painted R2 unit. Now this is the Black Series version. It's smaller. It's not my favorite sculpt, but as badass looking as this is, I can put this somewhere. And he says it's a knockoff, so the leg doesn't really and the head doesn't turn. Then it's Star Wars. I'll find use for it. He also sent a clone communication officer has that, well, that clone look to the face. I think this is a first order officer, but he's added some seam lines coming across the old Imperial cog. It looks easy, or Jay makes it look easy, but it's very effective. It's gonna stick out on the shelf. He also put in a custom Mandalorian Remnant Stormtrooper. This is off the new Stormtrooper body. And in his note, he says, I know one's coming, but did it anyway. And I love it because it is so different from the Target exclusive Remnant Trooper we got. In fact, I much prefer the custom paint job. I still like this, but you get a couple of these, they're all gonna look the same. You get a custom paint job and it's just, oh, so good, so good. Plus I love that new Stormtrooper body. I know some people have their problems with it, but nah. I love the silhouetted cuts. Still working through Jay's box, here is a custom injured Obi-Wan. Got some blood on the knuckles, some dirtiness to his robes and tunic. There's even a slash right there. And even though this uses that Black Series head, which is a bit tiny, I like the bruising and the blood he added to it. But I think the injured Obi-Wan goes with his custom dirge. And I'll be honest, I'm not really familiar with dirge. I didn't see those original Clone Wars episodes, but I've seen pictures and this being a big armored guy with some kind of underneath, uh, yeah, this totally works for me. I can't even tell you what body he used. But again, Jay with the battle damage, always a treat to look at. Oh, and that hole goes all the way through. In fact, is that big enough for, oh, yep. That's big enough for a lightsaber to go through. But the paintwork on the skull and the design on the shoulder pads, <laughs> this makes me want to go find out more about Dirge because that's what good action figures do. And good customs do that even more because somebody liked the design or the character enough to put some elbow grease into it. So it makes me think, oh, then it's worth it. I need to find out more. And then to finish off Jay's box, there is this. His note said to open this last and I messaged him and he was like, <laughs> he bought a lot off eBay and this was included. So he's passing along this evil looking thing. And now my house is full of demons. <laughs> Sometimes when a toy company won't give you what you want, you just gotta go out and make it yourself, sculpt it yourself, 3D print it. And that's what JB Customs on Instagram did. So when he hit me up and offered me one, I thought I'm gonna need that for my display because Look at this big Hulk and monster. I mean, it's not huge, but it's intimidating. Now this is completely 3D printed, so there is some looseness here and there, but at the same time, there is more posability than I thought there would be. That's probably more ball joint than Hasbro would give us. Some knee and some ankle, or some elbow too some shoulder to come up for some shooting action. All the details and then the rugged paint job on top of that, it just, this totally works for me. And like I said, there may be a little looseness, but I haven't had a problem whatsoever of getting them to stand up. But not only that, I got a commando droid from them too. Same thing here. It's completely 3D printed. He put a paint job on top of that and it just works for what I was wanting. More droid army that's not just battle droids. I included some alternate hands, some open hands, some grip hands, but this right here, this is what I want. One knife holding hand and one blaster holding hand. Again, there is some articulation. You can get some poses out of it. I don't wanna go tweaking on it too hard because it's completely fabricated. But bottom line for me is getting new characters on the shelf. And in that aspect, this is, complete win. There's even some head movement. Huh. I didn't, I'm finding new stuff as I go. And then finally, I made this Darth Maul a long time ago. It's a superior Spider-Man upper torso with, uh, oh, what's that Hasbro line where the things all plug in? Mashers. Is that what it was called? But I took the robot legs off that, matched it up with that body, 
and Jay sent along a new head for that. I was using a Black Series mall head, but this one seems to fit the, the anger a bit more, the animated feel. Plus it's got pointy spikes. The red is a little darker, but that just pushes me to finally repaint this body. I never felt like I did a great job at it, and then I never actually finished. That hand is unpainted. I don't know why I painted this one and didn't paint that one. And then finally, I got a surprise package from my buddy, Mike Lorenzo. Back when conventions used to be a thing, I met Mike, it was several years ago, and then we ran into each other at cons all across the country. We'd hang out, we'd talk toys, and recently he double-checked my address and said, I have a package in the mail. And again, not having a clue what it is, when I opened this up, oh man, I have wanted one of these forever, or a month somewhere in there, you know, since it was revealed at, on The Mandalorian Season 2. This is Boba Fett after he got his armor back, cleaned it up a bit, and it's the cleanest we've seen Boba in a while. And from looking at it, what it essentially is, is a Darth Nihilus from the waist down with the model kit knee pads on it, and then a model kit Boba Fett up top. And Mike even added some sculpt on the sides just to add a little more girth to it. I'd been on the edge of taking my extra Boba Fett model kit and doing something like this, but... <laughs> I couldn't match Mike's work here. Just a nice clean paint job. That look from the show, I, I couldn't be happier. Plus it's Boba Fett, plus it's Mandalorian. I get to add to that shelf again? <laughs> That's kind of wrong, now that I think about it. Oh, it's play day. To start things off, here is a figure using a, a body that's not really easy to get at the moment. In fact, it's a complete pain in the ass, but my good buddy Dis Thunder out in Salt Lake City was able to find one for him. And what he does is make customs that are Mezco-ish. So from his Cobra Viper, he took the head, the neck, the hands, the overlays, and the vest. But if you remember back to my Viper review, I had two left legs, or at least two left upper boots. So he had this body just laying, he sent it to me, I can swap that out, fix my Cobra Viper, and then just throw some parts on here for a background character. This extra head came with an older Marvel Legends Nick Fury, and because the neck was missing, I had to change that out with a Star Wars Black Series Sith Trooper. Had to do some dremeling to fit the ball joint and then deepen the socket on the head. And then for the hands, you recognize those. Those are the extra trigger finger hands from the Marvel Legends movie Deadpool. Those are just kind of placeholders for now. They're small, the wrists don't quite match up, and I don't know, they, I don't like them. So what I'll eventually do is find some better hands and then paint the red padding on the legs black. While this works as kind of a Cobra Trooper, I also like this as a random shield agent or something. It obviously fits in the G.I. Joe display, but it's not a bad size next to Marvel Legends either. Yeah, see how there's too much cut in at the wrist? I need a bigger hand. Locked and loaded, sir. Another custom I threw together recently, the X-Men Reavers Reese head came with the Marvel Legends <laughs> Skullbuster. I always forget, Skullbreaker, Skullbuster, eh. And we've been looking for a good base body for a long time. Somebody ran across the fact that you can stick it on the G.I. Joe Classified Series Gung Ho body and it looks good, but I wanted to change it up just a little bit more. I've seen people add the Skullbuster arm to this body, and it looks good. It adds some robotic elements, some cybernetics. But I was messing around the other day looking for fodder for something else, and I ran across the McFarlane Toys Fortnite AIM figure in one of the boxes, and I thought, hmm, that's awful robotic looking. What if those arms will fit over there? And because of the butterfly joints, you can heat and pop the gung-ho arms out of the socket. While the Fortnite figure's arm just pops out, I don't think it required a lot of heat, but it wasn't compatible. There was a big ball on the end of that joint. So I just snipped that off, shoved it in, and it's a nice tight fit. It's not popped on. As you move it around, it will work itself out for my purposes. Gung-Ho's shoulder pad won't allow for the Fortnite figure's shoulder pad to stay on, but I like the asymmetry here. The peg is sticking out still, but I don't even care. And then after that, it was a simple matter of just sanding the tattoo off Gung-Ho's chest. But the AIM torso and the Gung-Ho arms are not going to go to waste. Here's a little work in progress. Hopefully, I'll finish that sometime within the next few years within my lifetime. Hopefully. One of my favorite Star Wars comic book arcs has always been Outlander. There was just something that grabbed me about that story. Maybe it's 
Kiati Mundy running around trying to not be embarrassed about his head, kids making fun of him and stuff, and then fighting his way through the deserts. Or maybe it's just the striking visual of a Tusken Raider Jedi. And that's what this is, a Star Wars Black Series Tusken Raider. I cut the bottom of the robes off, made it kind of jagged. I went back and reread Outlander recently, and the first few issues of that arc He's got a longer robe and it's more of a gray, but then it shortens up and it becomes more blue, which is less realistic for a dude running around in the desert for 18 years, but I like the color contrast. All I did was paint this blue and then do a dry brush of lighter blue on top. And I've forgotten how fun dry brushing is, just throwing it on there, just being as messy as you want. And yeah, I even painted the back. It's crazy, I'm a whole new man. Then the lightsaber is from Darth Revan, I think? I could have changed the pouches out or painted the bandoliers darker to be slightly more accurate, but this works for me completely. I now have Sherrod Head on the shelf and that makes me happy. Here's a black cloak I got from QWSS 2003 on eBay. I was just looking for something to spruce up a, one of the mini Jedi Luke Skywalker figures we have now. Try to give it more of a Mandalorian feel. I like how the hood lays here. It looks huge like it was on the show, but then the cape itself doesn't drape down onto the floor. So it's a little bit short and a little bit flat. Maybe I can wet it down, try to get some wrinkles into it or something. Because that's what I did for the hood. It was sticking up, it was sticking out, so I wet it down and tried to form it, let it dry, and yeah, it may stick up just a little bit. It needs a bit more, but much better. Here's some random goodies that I found in my, well, I say found in my P.O. box. They sent it. It was a surprise. I opened the P.O. box. There it was. So I, I technically found it, but yeah. This is Super Action Stuff. You can find it at superactionstuff.com or Amazon. We have the Firepower set, the Bag of Violence, then the Foodie Stuff. What do we have here? Hot dog, big old pizza box. I'll be taking that, thank you very much. Pizza slice and bottle of alcohol. Ice cream cone and there's paints. There's yellow and a lighter yellow and brown. The donut even has chocolate on top and some purple swirl. Another bottle and a turkey leg. Oh, with a bite out of it. There's a taco, chimichanga, with a lot of detail on top. And that would be mine. An apple with a bite out of it too. Burrito of some kind with the wrapper down around it. Even some silver, some green, some red. Pop schnees. Another bottle of some kind. Good looking banana. There's a bite out of the top. I like how the peel lays down. And then while it's not food, there's a cell phone too, and it has more paint than I've seen from a lot of the big companies. Do, 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 do. Hello. Then let's open this bag of violence. It's not opening. Ah, right, there we go. Oh, and they're plasticky. They're very solid. The blasts and the bigger blasts, the splatter, spray and spray. <laughs> and more spray. A nice looking aluminum baseball bat. So I kissed him upside his cranium. A spiked wooden bat, again with the paint apps. Same thing for the axe. There's silver, there's red, there's even some wood grain. And there's a wash to bring out that detail. Some punching effects or kicking effects. And then of course, crowbar. And then for the firepower, we have two of those punching, kicking, swiping effects again, but in red. Oh, it's a ball joint in there. You can put it on the ground and I guess have some ground effects shooting in from anywhere. Same thing for the big one. Some small muzzle effects, some larger ones. These remind me of Christmas lights. You know what I'm talking about. Electricity of some kind. <laughs> some white over the translucent orange. Bullet at the end. Two of them. One small, one big. But I think my favorite may be this rocket. It's crazy cartoony. This can be a beef boss missile. Oh, and it comes off. They even put little blaster details underneath. So if you just want a rocket sitting, and then it works into the a hell of a lot of effects and stuff. Here's another cool little P.O. box get from King Arthur Customs on Instagram. You see the resemblance? It's me as a rebel pilot. The chin strap has to hang because of the beard underneath, but check out the Foosh logo on the helmet. Now I feel like I need to get one of those Black Series prop helmets and do a paint job on it. Taking the helmet off, it looks like he's <laughs> appropriately bald. The beard's turning gray in the front. With the helmet on though, yeah, I need to be, well, this isn't the Snowspeeder costume, is it? I need an X-Wing. Or what would I fly in the Star Wars universe? Probably something old and beat up and breaking down all the time. <laughs> he dirtied up the body too, and there's some weathering on the boots and gloves. So I don't know where I've been. Have I been stranded somewhere for a little while? But you know what display this is going on? It's going with the foosh blue droids and just hanging out. The ship would be awesome in the blue with the 
skull and stuff. Yeah. From Photonic Figures, 2797 Studios, and Nova Empire on Instagram, I got... Boba Fett's throne or Bib Fortuna's throne, whatever you want to call it. And this is the way it came out of the box. I haven't had a chance yet to put some TLC on it. It does say may require minor sanding and priming before painting. And me being so out of the customizing game, I had to order some primer on Amazon and it hasn't come in yet. You can see print lines, but it's very small. It's mostly up here and that's easy enough to just psh, 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 psh. But after I do that, throw some paint on it, see what I can do here. I may need another job is thrown for it to sit on. It never ends, does it? Just all the sharp detail, how straight the lines are, the Rancor heads, and even the lines you can see, it feels like part of the design itself. Super nice sculpt, super nice print. I can't wait to get started on it. Then there's this nightmare inducing bastard. This is from my buddy Dave Wheeler up north. He does comics, he does toys. There's a Twitch channel. You can see him customizing every Tuesday night. I sat in on that channel a couple of weeks ago or a month ago, somewhere in there, and he did the custom kit of ALF where you take a Tebow body, it's got some slippers for the feet, different head, and it looks awesome, but he had the extra head left over and this is what he sent me. It's just awesome. I don't know what these tubes do. Does it keep the head alive? Or is it like Die Hard and they mix together and it's a bomb and he drives it off into the Imperials and <laughs> got a cybernetic eye type thing going on. A yub yub gun, some wear and tear on the blue. And then of course, gotta foosh it up a bit. Just a crazy little thing that I never would have guessed. I would never would have put together myself. But now that it's shown up, and it is Star Wars-y. It's going on the shelf, right? I mean, it's got to go in the display somewhere. Indoor. The next piece is a dial from Would You Kindly Studios. I featured him on the channel before, and I'm starting it like this because I love how when I open this, it's so unassuming. You're just like, oh, some foam. Cool. But once you start pulling it out, oh. The first display dial he hit me up with was made for a DTOF, but when he found out I didn't have a DTOF, which doesn't stop me from using this for pictures or a display somewhere else, but he hit me up, asked me if I had any dimensions for some shelving I do have, and that's where this came along. It's a longer piece. I can fit this all the way from end to end on the cheaper Walmart display unit I have. And when he asked me what I may display on it, I said G.I. Joe, and this is very, uh, templish feeling, you know? And I like how flat it is because I can fit, well, there's not a lot of G.I. Joes at the moment, but once that collection grows and grows, maybe I can double stack them on each shelf, move down, and then it's a very nice display piece for one collection. And look at that, he made it fit to where it's almost seamless. I'll eventually have an impressive display. Again, that's up to Hasbro, but we shall see. Also, if you go to woodyoukindlystudios.com, and use the promo code RoboDon'tKnow, you'll get 15% off. So yeah, go get you a dial piece. Go get you a shelf enhancer. Is <laughs> the technical term, a shelf enhancer. Because he's got all kinds of different sizes, different lengths, different widths, different heights, you get background stuff, and it always amazes me. Again, looking at this, I couldn't look at a piece of foam and go, hmm, you know what? That could be some shelving, some steps. Let's turn it into something very natural and very, Mm, that's awesome. At this point, most of us are familiar with the McFarlane Toys Mortal Kombat 11 Spawn figure. This is the head that came with that. And when Soul Reaver Customs hit me up and asked, would you like something to spruce your Spawn figure up a bit? You know what I always say. I say it every time. Sure. He sent along this unmasked Spawn head. I'm not familiar with Mortal Kombat 11, so I don't know if he has an unmasked look there. But for me, just as... Uh, you know, an older school spawn reader. This really sets it off. The paintwork to the teeth and then the slight green fire to the eyes. But not only that, <laughs> do they call it football head or something? The one with the big stitching up the middle. And even that has a like a darker green ectoplasm kind of leaking through. But how did he get that damage? How about taking some batarangs to the head? And this may be how I display them because that's just awesome. Where I have this figure standing is right next to a Batman figure. It completely works. And just like the stitched up head, there is just a bit of green goo working its way up around the batarangs. Even from a ways back, you can tell Batman uh, wasn't playing around that day. I grabbed this citizen armor from Marcelo David Customs on Etsy. What it is is armor pieces for the knees, the shins, the feet, and the forearms 
for the Hasbro Star Wars Black Series Season 7 Ahsoka. With that release, Hasbro gave us a new head, a new torso, and a new skirt piece, but then left the older forearm armor and then the leggings, or the boots, I guess. When I saw this kit, I knew I had to have it because it just puts it over the top. It's kind of what we should have gotten from Hasbro in the first place. I ordered this painted so it came silver and I love the metallic details up here at the forearm. But there is some trial and error. I use JB Weld Super Weld and I found this to be stronger than most super glues but it is really super strong when it comes to softer materials. And that's what these armor pieces were made of. Very, very flexible, which meant as soon as I touched the figure, it was like glued, done, that's there forever. I feel like I did really good on the left side, covering up the armor that was already there or lining it up all the way down the leg. But for some reason, I just screwballed the hell out of the right. The knee pad doesn't seem to line up. I think I got it crooked this way. And then I definitely missed the foot. See it? it's kind of leaning over to the inside. But that is completely on me. Again, if you line it up correctly, it looks beautiful. I kind of did the same with the right forearm, missed the armor just slightly. So in my display, she'll be looking to the left a bit. Here's my good side, here's my not so good side. But even with me kind of messing it up a bit, it's so much better, it's so much more accurate. And I'm not usually a huge stickler for that. If it gets the point across, it works for me, but if I can improve that a bit by just grabbing a kit, having some fun, sticking some pieces on, I, yeah, I'm gonna go for it. Also from Etsy, and it's weird. I've never considered going to Etsy. I don't know why. I, I just never looked, but there's a lot of cool stuff there. It's a whole new world. Oh, I'm gonna have to look some more. But from Mark II Designs, I got some G.I. Joe classified series upgrades or downgrades, depending on whether you like realism or not. For me, this laser rifle is very G.I. Joe-ish because it just reminds me of my childhood. And it's the same thing for this jetpack. Just a very nice crisp sculpt and there's a little bit of wash, bring out the details, some silver up here and down here, sets off the whole thing. And what I didn't expect is it being hollow, which when you first feel it, you're like, oh, this is really super light, that's not good. Then you realize, oh no, that's a good thing because Boom. You're not adding extra weight to the figure. It's not gonna drag it back. It's not gonna fall over. Shelf dive. You can't get better than that. If that was a big hunk of resin or plastic, it'd be boop, boop. As is, nope, Duke stands tall. But I can't get an upgrade for Duke without getting an upgrade for Cobra Commander. And while his Etsy page does show a backpack design thing you can plug in and then the hairdryer type gun mounts on top of it, I had to go for this, at least for now. And you know what this is? It's one 80s evil leader holding another 80s evil leader or misunderstood leaders. The silver, the black, the shape, the size, the detail it has everything but the Decepticon symbol on the side. And this just works so beautifully. Like a lot of other stuff I showed today, this is how my Cobra Commander is going to be displayed. Cobra! One time Odious planned a week-long vacation, but I stuck into his house that morning and stole his car keys. Not only that, later in the day I returned to his house and offered the help to find them. When it got dark and too late for him to leave for vacation, that's when I told him I had stolen his car keys. Because I'm evil. What'd you say? Nothing. <laughs> oh yeah, that's play day. It's my favorite day of the, the month, year, week? Not week, I wish I had them weekly. Starting things off, I talked about this during the weekly, uh, I don't even remember how far back that was. But it's the Hot Wheels, Star Wars, Mandalorian, the Child Hover Pram. And I, at the time, I thought, well, maybe that will scale with our six inch stuff. I got it in the mail and even looking at it in the package, it's, it's gonna be small. And hell, at this point, I consider the Black Series grow to be a little bit small. Let's get this open. Ooh, it's heavy. Am I missing something? I haven't messed with a Hot Wheel in some years. Oh, okay. There's a snap. There's a sense of motion to it with the robes flowing back into the pram, but again, like I said, this will be too small for us six inch collectors. But I remembered I had this. Of course I've got a three and three quarter inch Gus Jr. And looking at that, that may work. That's pretty close, right? It's nice quality. So, I mean, if you dabble in three and three quarter inch, or if you do three and three quarter inch and just happen to stumble across this video, that may be worth the $4.99 or however much it is now. 
Huh? Oh, Hasbro Star Wars Black Series Deluxe Boba Fett. I just reviewed this earlier this week and lots of mixed opinions. Some people thought that since I went into nitpicky detail about color maybe off or, or this is wrong or maybe the feet are too small that I hated the figure, but I love it. It is a nice representation of Return of the Jedi Boba Fett. I mean, who's not going to point out the lemony yellow goodness on the jetpack that just seems so out of place? But another big gripe was how clean and how shiny the jumpsuit was under the armor. So I broke out my Tamiya Weathering Masters oil stain and just kind of hit it a bit. I laid down some dull coat to give it some tooth so this would stick to it. Just rubbed and then wiped with a paper towel. It, it seems a bit heavy but I was going for well a dirty look. Overall it seems more worn which to me just screams original trilogy Star Wars. Perfect world it would come well perfect. Now this is unique and I had fun doing it so I can't complain too much. Also, for those asking, the Jet Blast from the Deluxe Boba Fett does fit into the Star Wars Black Series Beskar Mandalorian's jetpack. It's not perfect. You can still see a bit of the peg sticking out, but it does pop. So it's going to stay in there. It looks nice. If you don't want to use it on Boba Fett, you can use it over here. For a bit of paintless, easy to do customizing, here is what I'm calling <laughs> leisure day grifter, or oop, finally got a day off grifter. I can't take credit for the head. Norm over on the Foosh forums, he took the original, was it Playmates grifter head? Popped the hair off, which is a separate piece with a peg that goes into the top of the head. Then he took the Marvel Legends boomer, or meltdown, boom boom? What was it called on the package? He took her hair, put it on top, and it gives it more of a 90s feel. Norm took it further than that with an actual trench coat, the bandoliers, some different hands. I took the same base body he used, which was the Old Man Hawkeye from the Old Man Logan 2-pack. And then I put on the Rebel 10 custom shirt that I already had from a while back because, well, I like the look of it and it's green. This gun really fits Grifter 2, and I think it's from uh, Marvel Legends Silver Sable? I think it was last play day I talked about getting older and getting to the point where all my customs don't have to be 100% right off the comic page accurate. So to have some kind of grifter representation in my display now, yeah, I'm perfectly happy. When it comes to the NECA Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon line, I only get main characters, and I definitely consider Rocksteady a main character. One day I was browsing Instagram and I ran across this. The Rhino Guy Helmet by Does Machines 84 I haven't even tried this out yet because I like the package so much, but I'm, I'm going to have to open it up, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Sit along instructions that you may have to heat it a bit to get it to fit on, but it seems to... Well, it just sits on top. Is it supposed to snap? I don't think it is because it's not conformed to the shape right there, but it just adds something extra to the figure. And it blends right in because he matched that black line work for that cartoon aesthetic. The colors, the sculpt, the look... Yeah! And if I understand correctly, he didn't have this a lot in the cartoon, but the figure did, and that's what my brain always goes to. So adding this to it, <laughs> my buddy Dis Thunder actually pointed me in the direction of JRC Design. It's for something else, but we'll get to that. While I was browsing around, I noticed he also had some covers for various Transformers to fill in the empty spots after you transform them into either robot mode or vehicle mode. This is just a cover that pops right into the hole. Bit snug, you have to line it up just right, but it fills it out. The color doesn't match 100% exact because it's just a 3D printed piece, but it's on the inside of the arm, it's in the shadow, <laughs> just glancing at it, you don't even notice it. But it does make it seem a bit more solid, a bit more full. And the nifty thing here, if you want to use it in the transformation too, you can just plug it into the hand and boom, it even fills in there too. Not that I transform my transformers. But the whole purpose of going to his eBay page was for Grimlock's missing front teeth. It's one of those things you don't even notice until it's pointed out and then you think, oh, why doesn't he have teeth on the front? Now mine does, at least on the top. It's a fairly simple piece with two teeth sticking out of it with a hole for these two screws on the side of the head. You simply take those out, which allows you to split the dinosaur head in half. It reveals the hollow inside. You plug this teeth piece in and then close it back up, put the screws back in, and you're good to go. And yeah, talking about that perfect world again, there should be teeth down here too, but I don't know. That adds a little bit something to it. And I don't know why those were left out unless they're afraid somebody's going to 
get their finger caught in it or something. No, Grimlock, stop. Also going back to the review that I did of Grimlock, I had trouble trying to figure out how to put Wheelie on his neck. There's obviously these two pegs right here and you think, oh, they're supposed to go in these round holes here. Nope, they go down here in these grooves. So you gotta go really far apart, snap them on there. Yeah, that's where he sits. And that's where he stays. Anyone remember Alf? Even if you weren't alive at that time, you've probably seen Alf. Although I haven't seen any references to Alf in a while. But when this kit by Rebo Bleedo started making the rounds, I thought, I may need that. Especially with how beautifully simple it is. The body is the Star Wars Black Series Tebow with the hands removed, the head removed, and then everything else that goes along with that. And then the feet just pop on over the Ewok feet. You do have to dremel out a bigger hole for the hand pegs to plug in because, ooh, those Ewok hands have tiny, tiny pegs. But once you pop it all together and give it a paint job, throw some dark brown, throw some golden brown on top of it, dry brush a little for the skin, and then paint the eyes in. It took about an hour and a half, maybe? Which is quick in Robo Tom when it comes to customs. I mean, I'm still sitting on some that are this close to being done years later. <laughs> so to finish something, ooh, oh, and I painted the bag too. Just a fun little afternoon project. At this point, you know who Wade over at Unparalleled Universe is. I jump over on his live streams the last Friday of every month. We have some fun. He also has some custom heads going on. I was finally able to get a hold of his Odious and his Rubio head. It's just a fun Sasquatch-like design and Honestly, now that I have these in hand, Wade is a hell of a painter. I mean, he even came around, painted the red on the ponytail, and then all the metalwork on the side of Rubio's head, even the different colored wires poking out. Oh, so nice. But because I was painting Alf and doing the Boba Fett stuff, I haven't had a chance to put proper bodies to these heads yet. So I, I'm improvising for this video. That seems about right, doesn't it? Has anybody seen Robio? Down here, dickwad. Ooh, mail call box. Hey, Robo at the Fush, I'd like you to meet Sith Fisto and the Misfits. This is from Jedi Hunter 83 on Instagram. And what do we have here? Oh, a trooper dirtied up. He's got some scorch marks. Yeah, he's been in the trenches, hasn't he? I dig the finish on this. It's dirty, but it's still a bit armory. There's a sheen to it. It's almost like soot. Has he been in a fire? Is that what's going on there? Oh, we going old school with some sand trooper. And just like the other one, instead of being in fire, this one's been in one hell of a sandstorm. And as I touch it, I feel like it should scrape off, but it's, it's, it's part of the it sealed it really, really well. I can't see anything out here. Where are we going? Oh, there's a range trooper helmet on a stormtrooper body with the thing. Some dirtiness, some uniqueness. Uh, oh, some random gear. A sugar man's hammer? Is that what that is? I never built him, so <laughs> that's a start. Here's a death trooper. Oh, wait, with a Kylo Ren helmet. This would be Sith Fisto, right? I mean, it's Kit Fisto in Sith gear. Well, royal armor gear, but at this point, when it's red armor, we think Sith, right? Kind of an undercover Kit Fisto. I like how that looks. It fits his body top, I think. What else we got in here? Lightsaber blades. Oh, I can always use some red blades. A Coca-Cola bottle. Uh, <laughs> package of bacon. And then Stilt Man's head. There's a blaster that goes with one of them. I'm sure that goes right here, right? It's got the same sheen. Stilt Man's backpack and chess piece. Maxwell House. Does it open? Oh, no. It's just a little prop. You know what this needs? Musical instruments. Singer, lead guitar, rhythm, bass, drums. Yeah. Another little care package from Clone Custom Troopers on Instagram. He hit me up a while back and said, hey, I'd like to make you a clone custom, and I'm always down. <laughs> I love other people's work. It just adds a uniqueness to my display. And when he asked me what I would like, I, I, I went, surprise me. And this is what he sent me. I am always down for a camo paint job. It just looks so nice. And then the custom helmet, cherry on top. It just makes this thing look badass. I like how there's some extra color to the black undersuit, just to change it up a bit. But not only that, he sent along some weapons. There's our clone blaster, our rifle, little grenade. Oh, nice silver dry brush on it, bring out some detail. Rocket launcher, another grenade. Binoculars, another grenade, yeah. Oh, did this handle come off? So oh yeah. 
It looks like this broke in transit or something. Just have to get some glue, put it back together. And then there is a, oh, yep, there's a backpack. I dig the decal. It's very nicely done. Or decal, depending on where you are. Oh, but that's not all. It's a different rocket launcher. This one's heavy. This one's lighter. Oh, it looks like a, another rotary gun. Is that the same? Cool. There's a second one that made it unbroken. There's a couple more grenades. Two pistols. Awesome looking with some... What the heck? There's two scopes on it. A rifle with some beautiful silver work on it. I love it when the little buttons and stuff are painted in. And is this a... Oh, whoa! It almost feels like separate pieces on the side. It's just a lot of nice detail. And then there's a Mandalorian... Is this still called a Mythosaur? I don't know if they've changed it up recently, but... There's a skull for it, and a smaller one, and a baby one. A hell of an assortment of weapons for clones and troopers and, and whatever else I want to fit in there. Plus, one very nice looking clone. Much appreciated. Go check out Clone Custom Troopers on Instagram. Here is another fantastic wired cape from Mudhorn Customs. And you know what this is. This is Luke Skywalker from the end of season two of The Mandalorian. There's wires running down the front of the cloak, running around the back so you can put any amount of wrinkles you want into it. Best of all, that big engulfing hood that Luke wore, there's wire running into the front Nothing in the back, but it does a fantastic job of laying down. I put it on, pulled it down over his shoulders, pushed the hood, and boom. And yeah, Luke has a blaster. This is actually the, which one is this? The Return of the Jedi Jabba's Palace Luke. And look at that. I can even just push it back and it lays down. Yeah, the material, the wire used, everything just works. It's not as long as what we saw in the show, but what we saw in the show is a little bit, uh, yeah, yeah. But it does flare out further than you think it would. If your Luke has problems standing, you can even use it to help stabilize them. Yeah. Finally, a Magneto worthy of the shelf. This is the Magneto kit from Super Tom Customs. It was a collaboration with Canna Beams for the effect piece, Rebel 10 Customs for the cape, and then Tom did the helmet. It upgrades the Amazon exclusive Family Matters Magneto body. Did I do that? It gets rid of this huge candy shell cape that does nothing, weighs it down, pops up, floats around. Get out of here. There's still the purple neck piece that is plastic, plugs in the back, stays nice and firm, but then this cape coming out and around, it is just... It's Rebel 10 Customs. Of course it's gonna be fantastic. And you know can of beams effects. In fact, there's two that comes with it. I like the bigger one better. And then the helmet seems better proportioned. The Family Matters set had an unmasked head and then it had, was it this one? With the kind of gritting teeth, but I wanted a head that was more menacing while showing a little bit of power, so I popped the head off this one, along with the purple power effect hand. So while it's still a bit scary, there's also a calm to it. There's a magnetoness to it. I actually haven't extended it as far as it'll go. Yeah, that looks neato. I've featured John Walker Customs on here several, several times, but when I noticed that he had a Mandalorian Boba Fett blaster, I thought, I need that. And just awesome details here. The silver tips, the dry brush, the brown, and again, little button paint always goes the extra distance. The reason I got it is because several, was it last play day? It, it was one of the recent play days. Mike Lorenzo on Instagram sent me this repainted, cleaned up Boba Fett from the Mandalorian. And while he had two fists, it's a model kit, so I popped it off painted one of my model kit Boba Fett trigger finger hands. And let's see if this works. Doesn't quite squeeze together, but you know what? In the display, in the hand, that'll work. He's no good to me dead. But John also sent along these nifty shields. Have handles on the back for your figures to hold them. And then there's the blank, there's that. I say that because I recognize it, but I can't place it right off the bat. There's two versions of the Mandalorian. I'm not sure about this one. I know this is the classic. And then, there you go. Just cool little things to go along with all the weapons I just got too. That's some offense, here's some defense. And then also from John Walker Customs, this RA7 droid. It is a 3D printed head, but check out the shine on it. It matches the rest of the sheen of the body. Just a cool thing to put in the display, another droid for the collection. I love it. Another mainstay of Play Day is Casting Cave. I just love browsing his site, both the unpainted, but mostly the painted heads, because, well, I'm lazy, I'm half blind, 
and he does a way better job of painting them. So yeah, straight for the painted heads. Here is a Jim Lee Wolverine head. I think the sculpt is by Fan Plastic 4. Check him out on Instagram. Tons of great, great work there. But then Corey came along, punched in the eyes, the hair. It's a very clean, classic feeling look. It just finishes this off. Yeah, the skin tones don't quite match. I'll either match them up or find the body this was intended for because this is just the first Wolverine I grabbed off the shelf. And it doesn't stop there. If you got the Hasbro Star Wars Black Series wave that had the indoor Han, Luke, and Leia, but then you also got their what was it, Hascon, not San Diego Comic-Con exclusive last year of the indoor trio too, then you ended up with extras. So getting an alternate Luke head, yeah, that's just way better. Like I always say, Mark Hamill is almost impossible to recreate in 112th scale plastic form, but the casting cave head definitely gives it more of a heroic feel. The wind whipping in the hair, he's just standing at the edge of the woods looking out, or he had just got off the speeder bike, one or the other, something. But more than that, Look at this damn lay ahead. The paintwork on the face and especially the hair, how it brings out the brown. Because on the Hasbro figure, it's a really dark color with not a lot going on there. And the face isn't as bad as Luke with the photo reel and everything, but that's staying right there. Especially that hair. Look at that. Heavy is the head that wears the hamburger. It's gonna be the king. The most wonderful day of the year. I love play days. To get them out of the way, some of my tweaks and customs and things I've been putting together recently. I got a second flint and my first thought was, let's try to do something with the vest thing. So what I did was heat it up, pop the arms, and then pulled the vest off, which is very, very tight around the waist here, but it does come off. And then what I did was cut out all the little armor plate parts. This was coming up over the chest. There was pieces over here and then on the back, they were sticking out and coming around and it made it very stiff all the way around. And you can see that it's still kind of rough in places. That's because I walked out to my porch 30 minutes ago and it had been delivered and I thought, you know what? Let's get this in the play day. But the shells on the straps coming down are, they're not their own separate piece. They're part of the sculpt, but they were separated from the straps on the ends. They do a nice job of hiding the rough spots because you can get under them a bit and cut there. Not so much on the back. I gotta get in there and clean that up because it's just wham right in your face. And I like this a lot better. It exposes more of the uniform underneath. It's more of a classic look because he just had the straps and it's not so bulky. It thins them out a bit. The best thing, you can ab crunch now. That was half ab crunch, half finger popping. I'm getting old, shut up. It feels more free. You can get into more poses. Flint, you lost your head. It's more action-y. That's way better than it was before. And really all I did was take a pair of snips. Next up, I had done a custom like this with a Spider-Man body, the original Darth Maul head, but my paint job was kind of rough. So as soon as they announced the shirtless Darth Maul in the 50th anniversary Lucasfilm line, I thought, oh, that'll go on the hero masher's legs nicely. Now it's not completely accurate. The legs are big. He doesn't have the collar piece and the gloves. For me, as a placeholder for right now, I cut across that Darth Maul body merged it with this. Now it is kind of thick front to back and I've tried to fill it in a little bit, but it's very rough. I had to do a little bit more dremeling behind this piece right here, try to get the torso forward. But for my purposes, that's not bad at all. It's essentially what I had, but looks way better because this Black Series Darth Maul head they put on this new figure, ooh, 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 that is pretty. And yeah, he's missing the black on the hands. I'll have to paint that eventually, but I figure by the time I actually do that, Hasbro will announce an official one. So again, this is just placeholder. This is just having fun. Plus that gave me an excuse to mess around with the legs of that figure, which is the original Darth Maul legs. This figure, that figure, any figure that uses these legs has always had the problem of not being able to get the legs very close together. They're usually about right here. So I got to take it apart, do some dremeling, do some grinding, very, very rough, but I wanted to see where it could go. And I got them to about right here where you could stand them straight up. So I may take my second mall. Yes, I already replaced that shirtless mall because I gotta have that in the collection too. So I may mess with that 
where he can stand straight up and down, more in a neutral pose. And while I was customizing that mall, I might as well customize the Kyrkanos in the same wave, right? There's nothing super wrong with the Kyrkanos that we got, and yes, again, I've already replaced this one too, damn it. But the big thing is that the sleeves weren't black like the original comic design, and it didn't have gauntlets. So I took one of the episode nine, I guess, Sith Troopers, popped the arms on both figures, swapped them, and then swap the hands back. The Sith Trooper has butterfly joints, so they soften up. You can pull those arms out. On Kyrkanos, the Royal Guard, you gotta heat the ever-living hell out of the torso to get those arms to pop, but they eventually will. And while this isn't super comic accurate, well, the whole figure's not really super comic accurate, this definitely works. It gives me some black sleeve, it gives me a little bit of extra armor, the shoulder pads are back, but the big thing is the gauntlets. If you get up super close, the Sith Trooper armor has that texture to it, those lines that don't really match up with the Kyrkanos armor, but you get back, it's standing on the shelf. I don't know, it makes it feel a bit more tactical. Yeah, I like this look overall better. Again, not super accurate, but I don't know, I feel like it looks better, or it makes me happier. How's that? That's that's the biggie here. I featured my custom Marvel Legends X-Men Reavers Reese in a previous play day. It's essentially gung-ho from the G.I. Joe classified series line with the Reese head that came with Skullbuster, and then the arms from a McFarlane Toys Fortnite figure that I can never remember the name of. Again, not 100% comic accurate, but... I like the look of it. It adds some cybernetics, some robot to it, while definitely fitting in with my X-Men display. But that left me with the rest of that Fortnite figure and then the G.I. Joe gung-ho arms. And I think I've teased this before, but there's progress. I gotta have a bone breaker, right? This is still very much work in progress, but I can't help myself. I got this far, I, I wanted to show it. It's a play day, I'm playing. I want something to go back here, I maybe a huge weapon, some kind of launcher or an engine block that covers up uh, or something. Also here, I need something to stand up or some kind of weapon thing. But there's the McFarlane Fortnite torso, the arms from Gung Ho. The shoulder sockets were way too deep for the pegs on these arms, so I had to build a new socket out of <laughs> good old OD epoxy. If you did any customizing in the late 90s, early 2000s, you used OD. And it's been 20 years since I've used it. I've forgotten how much it smells like Fritos. I've also forgot how quick it dries. If you want something that sets up in like 10, 15, 20 minutes, go to Lowe's or hardware store. I just packed the sockets, put some oil on the pegs of this, stuck them in, and then it, you're left with an arm socket. The head is a magneto with the hair pulled off or the helmet, I can't remember. The hair is from Punk Storm. The sunglasses are Mezco Blade, I think. Body with the treads and everything is an old G.I. Joe tank of some kind. I don't know, I got it on eBay. It didn't have anything but this. And then there's brackets from Lowe's just to get the body up off the tank. That also brought up the problem of this. I'm trying to figure out the best way to hide this emptiness here and then seal this down. But yeah, like I said, work in progress, but really, I could put this on the shelf now, and I probably will, and then forget completely about it for years, and then come back, finish it, and that's when Marvel Legends Bonebreaker comes out. I think it was a live stream a couple of months ago that somebody mentioned that AliExpress had a maskless Mandalorian Din Djarin, and I went and looked, and I had to order it. I'll be damned if this thing doesn't look fantastic. It's almost not a Studios or Noda Studios or some of those other import companies. I don't know if the AliExpress seller has a connection there or something, but this looks good. It's not perfect, of course, but it is better than the <laughs> maskless version we got from Hasbro. There's a neck piece to it, and it doesn't articulate between the neck piece and the head. It's sealed together somehow. And this is the Black Series Target Mandalorian with the mud horn on here, the removable helmet. I heated it up, the whole neck came off with the head on it, which is good. This just popped right on the ball. Then you're left with that head. You can stick that on a mud trooper body and you kind of get Din Djarin in disguise. Comparing these two heads, which one looks closer? I loved you in Conan the Barbarian! And even though the custom head looks smaller, I've been afraid to actually push the head down onto it. It's wider, I think. I had, I don't want to scratch across it. <laughs> that looks too good. I ain't messing it up. And now I need a Mayfeld head. Or Hasbro just needs to release this body with the tank driver helmet in this color. Or was it more green in the Mandalorian? Either way, release this. Helmet head. Din Djarin head. Mayfeld head. I'd buy three, or four, or five. 
I was tagged in an Instagram post recently, and when I went to look, it was D Blake Makes on Instagram, D Blake Makes at gmail.com. And the post had said, I'm sending a package to Robo for a play day. And I thought, hell yeah, I get to play this something on play day. What caught my eye at first, it was the signs. They are just so bright and colorful. They're 3D printed. And then he paints them with enamel paint, clear coats them. You can see the print marks there, but ooh, that's smooth. There's a thickness to it, and I can put this up on the shelf or on the wall, something. X-Men, Spider-Man, just look how bright the yellow is. The Marvel logo, and the way these were packed was awesome too. There was no chance it was gonna break. It was taped to the cardboard. It's in these baggies that's apparently childproof and I'll open it someday. Fatality. But you knew what was gonna catch my eye, the older Foosh logo, all in white. And then this fade from blue to silver. That looks cool. I'm definitely gonna have to hang this up somewhere. Catch you on the Foosh. But there's also these tendrils that I'm interested in seeing. Some venom goo, can't call it that. Oh, what am I seeing here? There's a metal loop on the end. Is it flexy? It is flexy. It says the loop goes around the hand pegs. Oh yeah, look at that. That's nifty. I want to eat your brain. Definitely not a turd in the wind. And then we've got, oh, some chain going on. Silver chain has a wire running through it. It's locked on right there. It's twisted around. It's not just going to unravel. But you can put this any direction you want. I'm going to have to get a Ghost Rider. Do I have a Ghost Rider open? Oh, I do. Spirit of Vengeance. My Ghost Rider voice is the same as Venom. <laughs> that is damn spiffy. Here is a wooden training dummy. I've seen these in movies before. I, I don't know what they're called. They're always practicing their fighting on it. This is from Critically Honest on Instagram. It's nicely weathered for this scale. The ends are burnt, the age coming down, but especially the rope tied around the top. In 112 scale, that would seem like a big heavy rope. Because you can see it scales perfectly and this is a, a, a gi from GPS lot, again, older play day. This makes me want to set up a whole diorama type situation, but I also want a lot of different diorama situations that I haven't got to, but this is a good start. Ah, the never ending improvements to the Hasbro Star Wars Black Series Deluxe Return of the Jedi Boba Fett. I don't know if I showed it on the last play day where I weathered and dirtied up the undersuit a little bit. It's not so bright and clean. It feels more Boba Fettish. Boba fetish. But today is about the new cloth cape that I got from Josh's Custom Capes on Etsy. The little cape that came on it was a plastic piece. It was rubbery and it hung nice, but it didn't really do anything. So I cut that off. I kind of hollowed it out and then glued this one on. Josh actually says to pop the neck off and then stuff this a little under the rubber overlay, put the neck back on and it'll hold itself on. But I'm impatient. I just went gloop. And with this, I can have some flow to it. It can go out and around, or I can stuff it all under the arm, make it look natural like the uh, the plastic one that came with it, get it under the jetpack a little bit. There's options here. And when it comes to my figures, I always want options. For the price of this figure, it should have been a lot closer than it was. But for me, it's just fun tweaking things like this. You gotta heat up the helmet, get it flattened back out, dirty it up a bit, cloth cape. I just have too much fun doing stuff like this. I don't know, that's part of the hobby for me. One of the out of the blue boxes I got recently was from TGC Customs. What we have is the G.I. Joe cartoon laser rifle. There's Beachhead's uh, MRO XF7A Wasp laser pistol, which is my jam. This is right up my alley. Cobra Vipers RDT7, Duke's M32, and then the biggie that we were all looking for for a while is Roadblocks 50 Cal. And not only are these nicely printed, I also dig the paint on them. The ammo, the wear and tear, well not really wear and tear, but some dry brushing. Give it kind of a aged, used look. G.I. Joe hands are kind of tight. Oh, look at that. Let's see what Duke's gun. Try not to get too crazy with it because that trigger guard, oh well, <laughs> there you go. It goes on his finger. Yeah, that's not bad. Very vintage feeling. There, there, I got it in. And I keep talking about breaking stuff. This seems very flexible. It doesn't seem like it's gonna break if I get too crazy with it. Yeah, blasphemy. The Viper rifle even has a Cobra logo in the stock. And I'm one of those guys that really don't mind the classified series nerfy space guns type situation, but it, if somebody's, well, there's quite a few people out there making more modern or more classic type G.I. Joe weapons. 
I don't mind those either. I'll give my figures anything and everything as long as it looks cool. And this looks cool. Another surprise box at the post office was this couch from Creeper 13 Creations. And it's kind of crazy. I can't decide if the cushions look better here or here though. I think they go here because yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's damn perfect for 112. Deadpool's snug as a bug. It's some kind of softer foam wrapped in fabric. There's even feet down on the bottom. Then I dug deeper in the box and there was this. It is a beef boss throne. You have your mustard, you have your ketchup, stacks of stone, bow tie, the different colors, the design etched in. But the biggie for me is how this looks like a fry thing, or it's made to look like a bunch of fries where it actually looks like lumber or planks sticking up from the back of the throne. It's just a nifty, nifty design and it's beef boss. You know what this means, right? You bow down before me because I am the king of everything, mother Here is a custom pirate Deadpool from Don Sawyer. Da -da -da -da. I haven't actually opened the official Marvel Legends Pirate Deadpool, but looking at it in the package or in pictures, it seems a bit restricted with the plastic robe and inner tunic and then the cape. So what Don did was make a fabric cape and a fabric tunic it stays the hell out of the way of your leg articulation or wherever you want to go. And then he changed out the feet. There were no pirate boots, but he's got, he called them Crocs in the note. Deadpool Crocs. The cape even has the frilly white in the front. The tunic's kind of torn at the sleeves. Comes around, gets out of the way. Is this a different Deadpool body? Yeah, it doesn't have that sculpted tunic on it. So he took a different Deadpool body, swapped out this hand because I think this is from the pirate Deadpool. And then so is the head because of the, well, you know, the Jolly Roger, the pirate hat, the bandana underneath. There's also the white wrap around the waist under the belt with the, the pirate buckle and the old school flint locks. Just a cool looking figure that again, <laughs> the benefits of cloth allows for all kinds of wacky posing. He also included the weapons, the cutlass and well, <laughs> the good old Deadpool sword and then another flint lock. Pinky out, we have to stay proper. And now I have another Deadpool for the Deadpool shelf. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I didn't even realize that. There we go. Swords can go on there too. I've covered non-F before. He does tweaks and add-ons and covers and just little things for your Transformers figures. And I received a box recently. There is so much stuff. I'm going through it and I'm adding it to the figures as I open them up because I have a lot of Transformers still in the box. But it made me open up Starscream when I saw these rocket add-ons. I didn't realize how cool Starscream's jet mode is in Earthrise and adding these rockets instead of the big Cybertron blaster underneath, it adds just a little bit more realism. Of course, you turn it over, you see half the robot, but here, Ooh. I don't know why mine has this discolored plastic part right here though. But they just have a pin on them for the five millimeter ports. Is that what they're called? And you can leave it on even in robot mode and it adds just a little pizzazz to it. But that's not all. There's also the add-ons for uh, Blue Streak and Smoke Screen. I can't be the only person that's ever thought that should be Blue Streak. That should be Smoke Screen, right? Smoke color, blue, but it's not. Just better launchers for the shoulders, which in the package was this. Kind of puny, kind of open, kind of empty. This evokes what I think of when I think of smokescreen. Also a different blaster. Same basic design, just bigger and chunkier, more <laughs> intimidating, I guess. Same thing for Blue Streak, except there are rocket launchers up on the shoulders. And this feels more G1 box art to me. Because like smokescreen, Blue Streak had these little blaster cannons that went on the shoulders. These Oh, yeah, he's ready for war now. A war for Cybertron. No. And then the same updated, bigger, better blaster. But the biggie for me in the box was the upgrade parts for Grimlock. Very nice looking sword. It's very smooth and you kind of put it together with the hilt being red, the blade being red, but there's also the option for an orange blade and a black hilt. And if you get both, you can swap this back and forth. There's also the less dark piece of clear plastic for the chest. The one that came on the figure, very, very dark. This one's just a little bit smoky, but if you don't like that either, there's also an option for 
just translucent clear, but I like just a little tint to it. There's the crown for the head. It just sits on top. It doesn't fit both ways because I guess this is thicker somewhere or something, but once you find that right direction, boom. Me Grimlock King. He also included these covers for the gap that's caused because of the transformation. You just unscrew that screw, screw this piece on. Works very, very nicely. Plastic is just slightly darker than the rest, but it being under the arm, it's not that noticeable. And the cool thing here is that it's fits so nicely that you gotta kind of pop it off, slide it up, and then you can pop the hand in. Bring this down and there's a snap to it. It stays in place right there. And I'm not gonna transform this, but the biggie is he offers a set of teeth for the dyno mode that is both top and bottom. I nearly said bottom and top because it's upside down. Again, slightly darker plastic, but it doesn't stand out much. You can close it up. He doesn't have that big open gap in the front. Like I said, more non-F stuff to look at as I figure out which figures they go to and open some more Transformers and yeah, so much cool stuff. The Hasbro Star Wars Black Series Jar Jar. I didn't, well, I still don't have any problem with this figure or character. I love it, it goes up on my shelf. But then Seething Customs on Instagram sent me a repainted Jar Jar. It's subtle, but the differences are definitely noticeable. And when I started looking, I was like, oh, well, this is more screen accurate. There's nothing wrong with the stock one with the oranges and the design work on the skin. Seething just kind of amped that up made it feel more natural. Mesa looking so much better. I still wish there was a wackier face or with a tongue hanging out, but man, seeing this, this will still go on my other shelf. This will go on my main display. It's fantastic how he took Hasbro's design work and worked on top of it, allowing that to show through and making it almost more skin-like, making the orange tones more fleshy looking. Okay, I don't need your comments. It also feels like he slightly darkened the clothing too. It's just one of those nice, nice paint jobs that makes you think if you see it by yourself, yeah, that's what I got from Hasbro. That's what I have on my shelf at home. Oh wait, no, it's not. And then finally, well, you can already see, <laughs> it's crazy. Bionic Kasai is a regular in the live streams. And when I got a box from him and opened it up, I thought, well, look at this. First, I built this Lego range trooper and it's crazy and I, it it wasn't intended for this. He actually painted up an Obi-Wan head that fit this body. And then there was the cloth up top, but I couldn't pass up the chance to make a bionic Gus, right? What the hell have I gotten myself into this time? You got yourself into a mech suit. That's what it is. Hey, he also included this and it took me a second to realize this is a Power Ranger head and then the Ant-Man body looks not completely different, but it throws your eye seeing it in green. And it looks like just a random Star Wars character that I could put over with Jackson. And I know some people hate the weird wackiness of the comic books like Jackson, but I'm just gonna keep adding to that display until there's a whole crew. There's a dirtiness to it too that fits perfectly in my Star Wars display. And then I saw this in the box, a very nice drawing of Captain Foosh and Kasai, which is Bionic Kasai's original character that he's made a custom of. But then there was this, and you guys have figured out how to get my attention. You put the Foosh logo on something, or Foosh blue on something, or the, the bearded skull logo. Yeah, I'm gonna be like, holy shit, look at this. It is mostly the Gamerverse cap with the repainted shield and a red guardian head with some gray in the beard and then foosh blue, white, silver all over it. I like this design. It's something I didn't even consider until I got this figure. I think I'm seeing a Halloween costume. I'm not wearing hockey pads. But I will be, maybe. <laughs> we'll see. I need this shield though. Oh, I live. I always say this during the play days, there are so many talented people out there. Seems like every time I turn around, I'll scroll Instagram, run into somebody new that I hadn't seen their work and it's just amazing, blowing my mind. Starting out with a couple of official releases, is this Hasbro? Yeah, there it is. The Bounty Collection, the Child Grogu. Uh, it's a statue line that Hasbro puts out as kind of a, you like Grogu and all these cute little poses? Well, here you go. The figures themselves are definitely not 112 scale, but I saw somebody take this little fish tank thing from season two out of this and put it with their collection, and I had to give it a shot. It's supposed to stay all as one piece, but is this a separate? Yeah, there's a peg or glue or something right 
there. Tried heating it up, it didn't break loose. What we're gonna do, we're just gonna cut the damn thing off. I mean, it was gonna be left with a pin anyway. I was gonna have to cut off. Might as well cut it off at the source and save my fingers because whew, you're left with the tank. Getting it beside a Black Series Mando, that's not bad at all. That'll work as a dial piece or to carry around or whatever. And may need to paint some of the details. The sculpt is there. Just need some wear and tear on the metal parts, but what's inside is the interesting part. It actually looks like the eggs are floating. There's some down on bottom, like there's a liquid, but it's just a clear plastic with some orange balls in it. Here's the Black Series Grogu beside it. That's so... I'm good with that. I'm completely happy. Speaking of Grogu, I saw this on the peg several times and passed on by. I'm not a vintage collection collector. I go after the Black Series, but then I finally stopped and looked. I haven't compared yet. So this is <laughs> happening as I go, but that looks about the same size as the Black Series with better proportions, I feel like. Plus the pram and a stand and the frog. Avert your eyes, those who do not open your packages. Does this come? Oh yeah, look at that. I just happen to have the Black Series frog laying right here. This is the vintage collection. This is the Black Series. Uh, better paint on the Black Series but about the same size, they fit together. Swivel at the head looks like no up and down, just swivel at the shoulder too. Here's the vintage collection, here's the Black Series. Uh, <laughs> at least the first release of the Black Series. The, I think later releases had the white painted on, but I like the proportions of the vintage collection better and the slight increase in size. Because again, bringing Mando in, this feels more appropriate. New Grogu for my shelf, I guess. I just fought the urge to say, here's a little badass diorama, but it's it's not that little because it doesn't even fit on my camera. Would you kind of like studios saw me talking in, <laughs> as I do on live streams about the upcoming Marvel Legends shirtless Wolverine and how I want it to be crucified up on an X and right, he whipped this up real quick. Now it is slightly large, but at the same time, I feel like it needs to be that big in order to be prominent on the shelf. It's got these footholds, but I think when I get that Wolverine, I'm gonna get some toy chain or something to tie his arms and legs to the posts. But being this large, I can put it up on a shelf and then have figures in front of it without the Reavers or whoever I put up here blocking the scene and have my Outback X-Men hanging around to the sides, have Wolverine in the middle. I have a use for that shirtless Wolverine it all works out. So I truly, truly appreciate it, would you kindly. Plus I love a good wood pattern. Look at that, just the stone on bottom, the dry brush making it look like granite. Oh yeah, I love it. I got another package from Gage or King Arthur Customs 95 on Instagram. If you remember back, he did those blue troopers, the foosh troopers and the logos and the flags and all kinds of craziness. And here's something to add to that. If you've ever wanted to picture Robo angry, I think, Gage just nailed it. This is me when I've read too many, um, actually, you got that wrong. In 1984, this one appearance over here had Robo-Med. I just love that it is a blue Hulk, but he's got the bald head, he's got the beard, he's got the gray in the middle, have the foosh skull down here on the pants, and he's even included a couple of grip hands, or uh, grrr, hands. So this is Robo on a rampage, or this is one mean Papa Smurf. He's even painted some darkness under the eyes just to give it a little bit more depth to the face. Or that's me after editing videos for five, six hours. Robo hungry and tired. Got this package from Action Jack on Instagram and he says that this is necklace wire covered in colored hot glue to match. And then some were made just with wire and hot glue. All, all kinds of symbiote action features to add to it. And it always amazes me how hot glue can bend like this. I, I try to use hot glue and it just comes out a mess and it's all over me. And there's those little stringies all over the place. Not these, these are pretty solid. Well, I say solid, they bend. Watch, Whoop. you can put them in all directions. And then of course you got your venom goo and that's, oh, there's weapons or well, kind of blades on the end. Am I blowing the focus because of that box right there? It kind of shoots out and does the carnage thing a bit. White for, uh, oh, anti-venom? Or what's the white one that we got? Was it a symbiotype? Was it Peter Parker? Oh, nifty, that one's got a well, Of course we got some carnage going on, look at that. I love that the red and the black is intertwined through there. The twist right here, I'm gonna leave that in. My first instinct was to strain it out, but I'm leaving it there, that looks awesome. And then there is this, which specifically says open on camera. What could it be? I, I, and I haven't opened this yet, so 
it is a surprise. Actually, it may be childproof because I can't get that damn thing open. Hope you have a spare beef boss body laying around. Oh, always, always have a spare beef boss. I probably have more beef bosses than any one person should. Robo meat rancid or beef rot. I made this head by hand, especially for you. Oh, what? Look at that. It's kind of a, a crazy zombie symbiote type situation happening. Made from epoxy sculpt, eyes and teeth are procreate, and everything else is made of hot glue and wire. You're crazy hot. Like I said, hot glue is so difficult to work with. Damn, you've got pickles in here and crazy teeth, and the eyes are going up. The color of the bun with sesame seeds. We are beef rot. We are rancid. I can't decide which name to use. Uh, crazy enough, this actually works into the storyline that I just started with the G.I. Joe stuff. That kind of works with the yellow tendril, doesn't it? It's staying like this. He's a symbiote of mustard and ketchup. Oh shit. I'm good with the black and red being carnage, but the red itself is now going to be beef rot. <laughs> You're in trouble now, mother of Rebel 10 Customs loves to spoil me, and I'm okay with that because she does fantastic work. But I'm used to cloth in the packages. This time around, she sent a 3D printed Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles manhole cover. Not only that, but the manhole cover actually comes off this ring, so I can sync this into a diorama, something else, and just have it to where I pop down, pop out, boop. But this is what I'm used to when I see a Rebel 10 Customs package. Here is God Doom with a replaced cape and hood. Now she did send along a couple of other pieces, but it's gonna be a little bit more work, like the skirt piece. I'll have to cut this one away from the belt. I haven't had time to do that, but just having the hood and this dynamic cape where I can put this anywhere, it makes me like this figure a lot more. What I'm probably gonna do here you see it kind of bunching up and trying to hit him in the face. I may glue this down in the front to where it stays in position and I can do things like this and this and this. And honestly, I, <laughs> I don't know what this is. I, I know it goes somewhere, but I'm, I'm missing it. Maybe that's the belt above the skirt and maybe I need to, I don't know, I'll keep playing. She also sent this replacement cape and hood for the loose collector lady death the one that came with it is just a hard candy shell it fits between the neck and the body this again i may have to do a little bit of glue just to tack it down slightly but she added a skull to the front right there and then look at the inside fabric with the red it's so shiny and then on the back is a, a sheen on the black but again you can get dynamic poses. The wire in it is beautiful, works perfectly. I was actually displaying this without the cape because of the stiffness there, but now that I have this, this is how she's displayed. But then of course there's something Star Wars. There's always something Star Wars. Moff Gideon from The Mandalorian. Again, the Black Series had this just plastic cape, kind of rubbery, hanging off the back. Rebel 10 Customs sent me this custom cloth one with wire in it. And the way it's designed in the show, it's an odd attachment. I actually have this just sitting on the shoulders. I don't have it attached, but it has stayed on through me carrying it from here to there, in here, out there. Again, you can add some dynamic to it. I may end up tacking it down right here. I haven't really had a problem with it as is. In fact, when I bring it down and wrap it around, it just adds so much to the figure itself. Now I need to put some dull coat on the face. I've been doing that here and there. That may be another play day. I have featured Mark II Designs Etsy store a couple of times on play days with the G.I. Joe weapons. They just come out looking awesome. They're realistic. Well, I got another package from him and look at this laser tag helmet. Okay, it may not fit Duke as well as it should because Duke has hair sticking up there. How about a rogue? Cobra Trooper, will that fit all the way down? Oh, look at that. The print, the, the design of the logo and the red. Yeah, that's some memories. That's some nostalgia kicking. But what's the laser tag helmet without the laser tag gun? And he also sent that along. Look at the red stripe down the side. You guys ready for a game of laser tag? Also this, a Nintendo Zapper. Was that what it was called? The Nintendo gun that came with the original system? All I remember of this is Duck Hunt for hours. Pew, pew. But like I said, it always comes back around to Star Wars and Mark designed this kick-ass e-web. There is some movement to pieces, but hell, just sitting here looking badass, I love it. The matte black really, really works, but there's also some silver that he threw on there just to bring out the details, like there's a little bit of wear and tear. And then the power source, the box, just a beautiful print. It's so clean. And then for the wire, I've got to do some gluing. This one stays in. I haven't been able to... 
unless I'm putting this in the wrong spot, it should go there, right? I apologize, Mark, if I'm doing that wrong, but even that's a nylon cord, so I can put this anywhere I want, wrap it around, put it up in there. Just a great looking piece. I love the little holes and the details and the barrel and... Mm -mm -mm. It also seems to be appropriately scaled with stormtroopers. <laughs> I also got a package from Rebo Bleedo on Instagram, or if you're on the Foosh forums, it's Rob Lowe. But he's also sent me a bunch of prints that need painted. And like I said at the first, I'm, I'm slow as hell. So I'm going to show what he painted and something I did get finished. And then in a future play day, we'll look at the rest of it. There's the this and there is this. Wait a second. That's not 3D print. That's... What is that? How the hell did you get the Here Lies Spider-Man slain by the hunter in here? That's why it was heavier than I was expecting. But, and now I need a Spider-Man to come up out of the ground. That's got me wondering now. But I was able to get Beak painted this week. He sculpted and printed the Beak head, the arms that plug right into the Jazzwares Fortnite Legendary Series abstract. My abstract also has these paint splotches on them here and there. You can see it just barely around the shoes. I was able to acetone most of it off. And I have a beak for my shelf. When I saw this on his Instagram, I just had to ask if I could grab one. This was what I originally wanted and I just love those wacky X-Men. I figure it's going to be a while before Hasbro gets around to beak. I'm not completely happy with the paint job. I think I'm going to go back and give it a, either a dark wash or repaint it with a dark base and then hit it with the lighter for just a little bit more contrast. Right now it's a bit bright and the details don't stand out. But beak on the shelf. I couldn't be happier. <laughs> it's awesome. Always fun getting some casts and paint jobs from Corey at Casting Cave. I don't know how many Star Wars figures I have upgraded because I've, I see them on his page and think, well, maybe Kylo needs a new head too. The SH Figure Arts Kylo head wasn't terrible, but I don't, Corey's just adds a little bit of extra oomph to it. The hair's a little bit more accurate. There's a bit more angst there. And then I like the eyes better. Just the overall shape and how it fits on this body. Yeah, it, this is how this is going to stay. He also sent along this unmasked Boba Fett. And it actually took me a minute to realize that it fits on the new deluxe Return of the Jedi Boba Fett. I had the original Empire Strikes Back out with the huge neck ball on it, thinking, how the hell do I fit this on here? And then, uh, yeah, okay, so I went back to this. It takes me a minute to realize things sometimes. But he also sent this angry Boba Fett. I can either have him as cool, calm, collected, or give me back my armor. Then there's also this Mythos Obi-Wan head and cloak set that he should have on sale soon. The head kind of looks like that in-between age from Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope. Just somewhere in there where he's in the desert watching over Luke. His Jedi robe has torn and tattered. He's lost the sleeves. And I've seen the pictures of where he has a big backpack and other things, but this is all I got at the moment. And this head was fit for the SH Figure Arts, but I may use the Black Series body, do a little dremeling and fit it on there since I have many of those and only one Revenge of the Sith Obi-Wan. Harker Customs did the soft goods on this and I love the wires. It's a heavy wire that lays down if you want the deep hood look, but if you want it back, kind of more Obi-Wan-ish, you can also do that. This is actually one of those things that I never knew I needed until I got it, and then I wondered why I never felt the need to need it in the first place. Does that make any sense? Bottom line, I, I, I've got another Obi-Wan for the shelf, and that's amazing. And then finally, the box that tipped the scales on whether or not I was going to do a play day today. When I first opened the box, this is what was staring me in the face. And there for a second, I thought some crazy bastard sent me a 112th scale, or at least close to a 112th scale at at. But it's just the leg for diorama use. Not that I'm gropping because look at this big hunk of resin. This is from Landspeeder Luke on Instagram. And he says, started collecting two years ago. And then at the beginning of quarantine, bought a cheap 3D printer on Amazon and started messing around. This ain't messing around, buddy. This is impressive work. The sculpt itself, both sides, shading on it, bring out the detail work. Oh, actual articulation. This rotates down here and then the knee joint. It's insane. I cannot wait for it to snow again. <laughs> So I gotta have some snow pictures. And if you have a figure here and you're taking the picture and there's one leg, it completely works. It, it gives you the effect that there's more at at out of frame. But that's not all. I gotta go get the rest of it. There's the Hoth computer station and you can already see it. It's reflective. That's clear. Well, it's double layered and the details on one side and then kind of a screen on front. But look at all the buttons and the toggles. It makes me wanna sit here. 
He says to put a light behind it for full effect. Let's kill this, let's kill this, let's kill this. I need a wider light, but oh, I can imagine LEDs or something behind it just more Hoth stuff. I can't complain. There's a set of Bad Batch chairs with different wear on them. I gotta think this is somebody who's really rough on their chair. This is Tech. This is Wrecker. Speaking of Wrecker, here's the gonk droid that he presses in some of the episodes, just lifting him up. Look at that. That's perfect. How about a big old throne of Mandalore? And I love the fade paint work. How it goes from bright out to orange, the paint jobs on these. It kind of got warped in shipping. I may have to heat it up or something, kind of straighten it out. But there's a piece behind that's painted and then this is an overlay to make the detail sharp. The orange stands out nicely, bunch of sculpted detail, these dots and these lines that look very Star Wars-y. And once again, Hunter is gonna sit, since he's already in a sitting position, he's gonna sit on the throne. Look at that! Yeah, I need to get my Darth Maul situated, or Bo-Katan, somebody. Finally, there is this. Crazy! This is actually modular. There's the sides, there's the top, there's this floor in the middle, and then the door pieces. And I don't have it quite together. I need to do a little bit of sand work right there. It's holding it up, so there's a gap. But still, look at the detail work on the inside of the doors, or over here, where you have R2 or Leia working to get them open. And speaking of that, there's tabs to pull the actual doors open. They're on tracks. Get in there, there we go. Then he's also weathered it a bit with the lighter gray. Show some paint chipping. With this being in pieces like it was in the box, you can see how I thought there was a whole at at because <laughs> seeing the leg first, I thought this may have been the side. But once I got everything out and everything together, and I also read the note saying <laughs> it was all these different things, I was kind of sad that it wasn't a full ad at, but at the same time, where the hell am I gonna put a full ad at? One leg completely works. I can bring it in, take it out, store it, pictures, dios, whatever. Not that I'm gonna grab if we ever get a full size ad at or something. All right, y'all, before we go kick Cobra's tail, let's have ourselves a play day. Yeah! Oh, play day. A lot of you have probably seen this. In fact, I made a whole video about this, but I figured I'm playing today and it's a day. This is the Bandai Mandalorian model kit. Well, part of it. The Mandalorian kit was actually a modified version of the Boba Fett model kit. And instead of just leaving empty space and all that, they left a lot of the Boba Fett parts in different colors on the new sprues. So I thought, what happens if I mix and match? The undersuit is brown because Mandalorian's suit is brown underneath. And then some of the armor parts come out silver or well, gray, I guess. But then I happen to have an extra Boba Fett kit for the chest, the shirt, the shoulder pads, the crotch piece, the knee pads, and to complete the helmet that's green on the back there and red on the front. I don't know, I just wanted to throw something together, see what happens, and I, I thought maybe it would look like an alternate Mandalorian or some background character, but it's unmistakably Boba Fett. The design is just there, but then a lot of people pointed out that it kind of matches the color scheme of the cutscene from Clone Wars where he fought Cad Bane, and that's how he got the dent in the helmet when Cad Bane shot him or whatever. Yeah, I guess it works. I may go back and put the belt pouches on too, because my thought was leave them off, I can get full leg movement, but he looks a little bit little in the middle. Just a neat little one-off thing, something for the the Boba Fett shelf. Okay, I know that the Marvel Legends tombstone was nice and classic-y, but for me, tombstone was always in a suit. So when I saw people using the Diamond Select Pulp Fiction Marcellus Wallace and modifying it, I thought, hey, I can do that. But they were putting a tie-in and a regular shirt underneath. I am not that skilled. So <laughs> I just put a black paint job on the suit, did some silver here and there, primered it. You can still see the orange color through a little bit, but I figured, well, one, I'm lazy. <laughs> I got to this point and I thought, oh God, do I really want to put white up in there? But two, it gives it just a slight bit of color on a color palette that would be grays and whites and blacks, that's it. And yeah, it's still rough. I hit the collar with the black paint while I was trying to do this and I didn't get the black all the way under the suit jacket, but all in all, I, I don't know, I kind of like this. This was kind of one of those throwaway customs, you know, one you work on and your heart's not completely into it, but then you get almost finished and you think, oh, yeah, might as well, huh? Oh, that button's rough right there. I, buttons are all probably rough. I did that right before I walked in here. I had a gray that I used, and it's still rough around the hands too, but I had a gray 
that didn't quite match the skin tone they had on Tombstone, they as in Hasbro. So I came in and kind of put that gray on here to make it match up because I suck at matching colors. This kitty though, I was wanting to pour my whole heart and soul into it and I'm kind of proud of it. Don't get me wrong, there's some roughness still, especially around the eyes, but man, I'm getting old, I'm getting shaky. I, I, I'm doing the best I can here. But like I said, I'm, I'm kind of proud of this with the lines and everything. This was sculpted and printed by Fanplastic4 on Instagram, and he did it in a way, well, okay, first, this is just a statue. There's no movement here, but he sculpted in articulation points that kind of match Marvel Legends. That way, if I have this on the shelf, looking like she's phasing up through the shelf itself, it still matches the aesthetic of the rest of my figures. Just a brilliant little piece in a costume that, well, at first I thought, mm, Hasbro's probably not gonna give us this version, but then I realized if they give us new mutants, this is just an easy head swap, really. But for now, this will work. And then here's a little tease of an alternate version he did for me. Same pose, different phasing effect. And I haven't got to the body on that one, but look at the little details. I already broke this once. I dropped it on hardwood and I broke the wing off. And then Lockheed is the one that actually mounts to the wall. The arm is attached to Lockheed by two little itty bitty legs. Got it glued back together and I wanted to paint it while I was messing with it. And then future play day, we'll show off the rest of her. And yeah, Todd stands, they're all over the place. I uh, will probably come up with something smaller and well, less poster tacky. Coming back around to something I actually missed last play day, TGC Customs on Etsy and then TGC underscore underscore customs on Instagram. Somehow this box got stuck in a different pile. I missed it. We're gonna come back around and look at his 3D printed like gears for GI Joe, backpacks, weapons. Let's see what all he has in here. Tactical shotgun, that is a flint upgrade. Ooh, that looks nice. The other grip hand that comes with GI Joe yeah, this grip coming down will work great. Cobra Officers AK-47. Oh, now I need more Cobra Officers. There is Flint Shotgun, a different than the tactical one, but still, oh yeah, that uh, that's different, but still matches the overall design. Ripper's Rifle. Oh no, do I need some Dreadnoughts? Come on, Hasbro, hit us with some Dreadnoughts. I, I have some weapons to go with them. Look at that, that's nifty. Cobra M3A-1 from the cartoon. Oh yeah, that is recognizable. Buzzer's Chainsaw, dang it! We got Zartan. You think we're gonna get more Dreadnoughts? Hopefully sooner rather than later. Oh, that is badass. Whoa. Monkey wrenches, harpoon gun. Look at the weird, the wacky, the wild. It, it's just an awesome design and it translated into 3D form perfectly. Oh, he sells snake eyes Uzis because <laughs> snake eyes. Well, we have a couple of snake eyes that don't have a Uzi, right? Uh, yep. That's snake eyes approved. Firefly's backpack and it opens up. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh, so many tools down in there. Is that just a snug thing that goes back to... Oh, yeah, that's not falling off. Buzzer gets a chainsaw and Buzzer gets a backpack. Oh, and the fuel jug even comes out. I'm gonna have to make a Buzzer. I you know, start gathering parts now. And then there's Spirit's arrow gun and backpack. <laughs> I'd forgotten what an arrow gun was, but hey, it's a gun and there's arrows. We need a spirit too, don't we? Oh, all kinds of extra arrows up in there. Look at the little details on the buckles and then a couple of grenades on the side. That looks fantastic. There is Flint with his shotgun. That looks good. And then Snake Eyes with his Uzi. Coming back around to Foosh Hulks. This is from Luke Figure Me Out. And he says that uh, I actually started this custom before you got the other blue Robo Hulk. You guys think of me as such an angry guy. No, 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 I get it. Look, it's Roboverse. And down here on bottom is small parts. Do not put them in your mouth. Yeah, I get to do an unboxing on play day. That's kind of cool. Uh-oh. Oh, there's hats for Hulk and some, I, I don't know what this is. Oh, you know what this is? This is my background. You put it up on a, a scale table going up a scale wall to do scale reviews. I'm just realizing what Hulk you use. This is the Gamerverse Hulk that was originally gray and you painted all the skin green, didn't you? That and this is appropriate because it captures my actual muscle mass. 
sculpted some beer, the gray streak in the middle. <laughs> you guys nail that. I guess that's my trademark now. <laughs> it's got a magnet in it. It sticks to the head. Is it on both of them? It is. And I really, really dig that it seems just slightly small for me hulking out. I grow, but my hat doesn't. It's not made of unstable molecules. It's just a regular old hat. Wearing a foo shirt, ready to do some weekly, some reviews, but the, the camera. Oh, here's, this is me when I forget to hit record on the camera. Welcome back to another Foosh Weekly. Or maybe the hat's kind of small because you guys sending me customs of myself. Kind of giving me the big head. Is that, what, is that what you're saying? Oh, but I love it. I love it. Look at this perfect melding of best turtle and best bad guy trooper in the Star Wars universe. This is Imperial Sewer Trooper DT1983 from Yoda Fett on Instagram. I, 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 I opened this box and it was just kind of, oh, where have you been all my life? It's a Black Series Stormtrooper, green armor, purple undersuit, brilliant design to the headband. See more undersuit down here at the knees. And then the, well, the brownish turtle shell color for the chest and the crotch. He even added a backpack, same colors, has a nice little cloth flap up on top on a Velcro strip. And I thought he glued it on. So when I turned it, I thought I broke it, but it's actually a magnet. But that's not all. What would a Donny Trooper be without an Electro Staff? It has the wrap in the middle, and I think this is actual metal. But then on the ends has kind of an electric effect, you know, to make it a little bit more Star Warsy. Oh, <laughs> now I feel I need to, you know, add three more to the squad. I didn't even notice even the holsters painted purple. Teenage Imperial Ninja Troopers. Next up here is the non-F Productions Cobra Throne. And there is just some magic going on here. Look how smooth the finish is. I, well, it has a texture to it, but for this being a print of some kind, I, this is just excellent quality. It's not overdone. You see the surface coming around in here, but there are some scales stuck in places. There on the side, oops, we'll get to that. <laughs> That's not wrong. The scales on the other side have the cobra itself coming up in a seat bag. Beautiful detail to the cobra head. The fangs were separate pieces. I plugged them in, didn't have to use glue, nothing. They're just in there. Then there's scales on the back and an open spot. That has a hatch of some kind. And he sent along magnets to glue in here that you can just snap right there. But I'm gonna have to get more because there's four places for it here, but you have to have the opposite side. And then it's the same thing for this back piece. On top of that, I need to do some cleaning on this, but this is an actual rubbery seat cushion for the bottom. And at first I was like, they're toys. They don't need to be comfortable. But then I realized that this material, you're putting a toy on top of painted resin and it may cause scratches or may rub off on the figure this way you're not doing any damage to either or but pulling the cushion you notice that it's hollow going through and if you want to seat cobra commander on it he has the sword scabbard he has this little cape thing hanging down further than his ass in the seat and even if you take that stuff off he still has the coattails for that non-f included a piece that has a cutout in the back you put that there and all of that feeds right down into the back of the throne and when he's sitting you can't see it i mean if you go looking really really hard oh no there's a hole in there but you're also posing action figures <laughs> there's some things that this scale can't do that we can do in real life either way very well thought out i also like the size of this it's not too large you can put it on the shelf and it's not going to bump up the one thing it doesn't spread out and have figures standing way away from cobra commander it's it's a smaller footprint than i've seen with other thrones or well diorama pieces in general yes you guys have watched Play Days enough to know that I love Casting Cave. Corey does some excellent, excellent work. This is his Mandalorian helmet that is scaled down from Hot Toys. I've shown this several times on the Black Series Beskar armor, but I also wanted to replace the one on my first episode of the first season Mandalorian. It's just better details, better shape than the Black Series. It's not quite as big but I feel that's appropriate. And yeah, there's the whole Mandalorian, big helmet, small helmet, figure, 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 company, company, company. But once I find that sweet spot, I like to stick with it. Plus I have a soft spot for this look. It's just so 
kind of thrown together. But I also grabbed this replacement head for the Black Series Clone Wars Anakin Skywalker. This is the head that came on it, and as always Hasbro kind of mixed a Clone Wars aesthetic with realism to make it fit into the overall Black Series display, which I am good with, but I kind of wanted more of a dynamic look. I think this is a Kota Bukaya statue scaled down and repainted. It looks it kind of closer to the series and skews a little further away from the realistic look, but once you zoom out and put them in the display, I think this may be my favorite costume for Anakin. So to put this head on it and kind of get a better overall look, plus it does something for the overall proportions. It makes them feel lankier, taller, more Darth Vader-esque. And then finally from Left Hook Customs, there is Robo Backwoods Killer. What I say to you guys about the big head? It's essentially me as a G.I. Joe character. There's my beard and my hat and appropriate musculature and foosh blue gear. Two unboxings in one play day. Crazy. Uh oh. What? There's a big ass gun. It's Fortnite, isn't it? The McFarlane, one of the big characters. And look at that. <laughs> Damn near match the blue. Not quite as blendy as this, but. It's still fushy blue. Looks like everything on the head is glued down or sculpted too, which is fine. Look how low that hat is sitting and then the sunglasses help with the lightness a bit, but it's the beard. Damn you guys with your brown beard, gray streak in the middle. So inaccurate to my young looking looks. Blue on the back side. And yeah, <laughs> I've got me on the Star Wars shelf. I have me on the Marvel shelf. I can now have me on the G.I. Joe shelf. Look at those abs, like I'm looking in a mirror. Comes with this big ass weapon. Backwoods can uh, lay down the law when he needs to, but most of the time he's just annoying the enemy by talking from across the battlefield, just incessantly talking about the same thing over and over and 